PKA 641 with our guest, Ed Bullion from Vinwiki. Taylor? This episode of PKA brought to you by Lock and Load, RealDBG.com, and of course, Blue Chew. Ed, thank you so much for joining us. So great. It's always a blast. Thank you all. Appreciate it. I I can tell I, I enjoy having you on because they'll be like, when they mention a car guy, sometimes I'm like, oh no. Like, <laughs> like because I'll like try to come up with questions in my head and I'll be like, what <laughs> engines? What are they about? Like that, <laughs> like, that, that level of, of complexity. You no, you're a great Honda guy to Civic? chat with. That's so uh, I'm excited to have you on. Thank you for joining us again. Y'all are too kind. It's good to be here. What's your personal car right now? I just got the uh, the four seat Ferrari, so it's called the GTC Four Lusso. So it's actually got an adult sized back seat. I didn't really mean to get it, but I I had an Audi R eight, and yeah. and those those everything under two hundred grand in the exotic car world has gotten pretty sale proof lately. It was really <laughs> so true. Know, uh, you know, it was everything was propped <laughs> up by crypto money and crazy stock market returns and easy financing and stuff like that. And as that starts to slow. You know, it's, it gets a lot, you know, tougher to move that that kind of stuff. So I had one that we'd used for exactly that's what it is, and so it's kind of goofy looking, but it's an extremely comfortable car, even at six and a half feet tall. And I uh, I'm enjoying it. I mean, my favorite cars are still my Lamborghini Murcielago, goes the V12 Lambos from the 2000s, and so uh, always usually in one of those unless it's broken, which it usually is. Can you fit in those comfortably though, like the Lambos? And with motivation. You know, that's kind of the, the name come on, of it. it's a Lamborghini cram. That's right. That's right. So I, uh, I actually fitted them pretty well. It's, it's not what I'd call comfortable, but I, it's what I would call worth it. So I've been watching Formula One a bunch lately. Uh, in yeah. my, lately is like the last couple of years when I'm still pretty casual. Does much of the tech from Formula One make it into the cars, the supercars? You know, not really, to be quite honest. I mean, you know, the engines are radically different in both the way they produce power. There has been a new trend towards some ultra high level Formula One derived technology and like the the Mercedes AMG one, the Aston Martin Valkyrie. And these are going to be, you know, three to four million dollar cars that they can only manage to build, you know, 100 to 300 of with massive, massive like 10 year lead time. Your and- next daily driver. Well, and and they're you know they're inherently very compromised, so they, they might rev to fourteen thousand RPM, but they have thirty thousand mile rebuild intervals and things like that. And so you know th- things like paddle shift technology for shifting certainly did. Uh, mm-hmm. I think it would have come anyway, just as as we automate more. But uh, true Formula One technology on the road, or it really even true race car technology on the road, isn't that much of a thing. I want that thing from uh, Demolition Man. You know, the Sylvester Stallone movie, they had a car accident at one point. I believe, I believe Sandra Bullock may have been driving and the uh, entire interior of the vehicle filled with a with a soft foam that was at first liquidish and then turned so- solid. But then they were quickly able to, like, tear it off of themselves after the crash was over. That one of those non-Newtonian solids, right? That uh, something like that. Style thing. That's exactly. Yeah. Is that, that a safety world. mechanism? Yeah, of course. The whole car filled with a foam that you were now inside of and encased in, and then when it came to a rest, you know, on the side, they all just <sighs> tore themselves out of the foam. On a, it reminded me of that thing that motorcyclists have. You can wear like a kind of oh, a yeah. backpack rig, and it. <laughs> like inflates an airbag all the way around you in key spots. If you have an accident, you just sort it of sounds bounce like down the like, highway. It sounds like you like this movie, but it sounds really bad. Oh, it's a, it, it won four Oscars, I think. Okay. <laughs> I really don't. Dude, I, I want the you, thing from the Saturday Night Live with shit skit. like that so easy. Mostly <laughs> <laughs> Snipes won Best Supporting Actor. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know enough to dispute it. <laughs> <laughs> accepting the award with the blonde hair. Come on. Garbage turns oh. into stars. I don't know enough. Uh, <laughs> That's um, yeah, Saturday Night Live did the thing where the airbag filled with Jiffy Pop, and then they could just eat it until help arrived. Mm-hmm. That's the move. Exactly. exactly. You know, I'm really thankful that I live in a world where those airbags were all just designed and uh, and keyed in for men, for men, for mm-hmm. us. You know, there, there there's plenty of people who aren't shaped like us and built like us, but they don't get airbags. But we do. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really a bad men, design men. as I think about it because men aren't the one crashing their cars. That's a woman thing. You're so right. <laughs> <laughs> so true. <You're> so right. <laughs> so true. Women now, who, who's here? Which of you's been hit in the face with an airbag? Anybody got one out? I have. No. You yeah. have? Yeah. 
I it's it's it's, it's a fault. shocking thing. Yes, it is. It, it, it hurt. my neck hurt, but the accident was my fault. And the officers like I'm like you know around the accident scene doing <laughs> one of these things, and the officers are like, "Are you okay? Like, should we get an ambulance for you?" And I'm like, "No, it's, it's totally nothing, nothing at all. <laughs> there's, there's no one to sue here but me. Yeah. <laughs> I'll walk it off." I've seen a lot of injuries from those, like not just the impact of them, you know, the burns because you've oh, got yeah. this this thick bag of like. It's like a woven material, like um, that that the bag's made out of. It's real, real tough stuff. You like you've never tear it apart. But anyway, when it pops, like it's rubbing against inside of your. If you're holding the wheel, like oh, it yeah. can just burn your uh, the inside of your forearms real severely. Not yeah, with like not the rub the fire, scenario. but with friction. Yeah, the air escapes. Right, it's not airtight. Exactly. Air. Yeah, so to make it just like it, real, real hot air squeezes out really quickly, and that's what can burn you. And it smells like gunpowder. So yes. I, me, not very accustomed to gunpowder at the time. Like it, I don't. I didn't expect the airbags to go off. I didn't see that coming. It was yeah. it was an accident. What happened was I was cresting a hill. There was a red light, and I didn't anticipate that there'd be a line of cars parked mm. just mm. on the other side of the hill. And there was some sunset issues and uh, tension span issues that played into it as well. Sure. So uh, just a as woman. I come over the hill. I hit my brakes really hard. Uh, the guy in front of me hit his brakes really hard, but he was better at braking. And uh, I hit the back of him. Airbag goes off. It's pretty minor. That dude's fine. My car might... I think my car was totaled, but it didn't look super bad. Sure. But once the airbag busts the front and the windshield, and like, it, and it's a Ford Focus maybe or a Ford Escort. like It's a shitty car. So... <laughs> The airbags uh, ruin the ent- the airbags blow up a car like the whole interior is like for you my lord and it all explodes. <laughs> the attention span was tight. I was going on vacation. This was like Friday after work. I'm about to go on some vacation for a week, and I'm just like on <laughs> walking on clouds. You know, I'm just so excited to be leaving the office, headed back home. I'm like newly married at this point in my life, and we're about to go on vacation, and it's just. Everything is coming up, Woody. And then I totaled my car. And it was like, oh. that was supposed to be the summer of Woody. <laughs> <laughs> the summer. Yeah. Was it one of yeah. those like like when you got hit in the face with the, the airbag and the cop was like, Are you okay? Was it one of those times where like you were embarrassed to be hurt almost? And so you felt like, oh no, I'm I'm good. Like totally. <laughs> I do that like if I accidentally like maybe a year and a half ago, I fell down almost all my stairs towards i was going to work out with my little fucking blender bottle and i just just fell yeah. down the stairs where like i hit my cut my my tailbone on like nine straight ones and it was one of those things where i was in like concerning pain at the bottom but like i just stood up and like ah, and just like walked into the gym to keep working out because i was like if i don't address this it's as if it didn't happen yeah, and yeah. so then it, later i'm like man i'm so sore from that workout like i'm <laughs> so sore i really got my no need to go to the doctor my, though because yeah. it's muscle soreness yeah thank god it was lower spine day <laughs> Dude, I, so these, when wait, i go to wait, these pe- are, are they carpeted the stairs? They're going down into the basement. They're right? carpeted stairs, so it wasn't severe. <sighs> like it, it could have been worse. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I don't want to cut Woody off too hard, but like I've always the worst kind of stairs to fall down is the escalator because not only are they metal and sharp, they're they toothed. Imagine. There's never you're never done falling down them. <laughs> <laughs> the escalator fall down like, four oh. flights of stairs. Yeah. It's like, but wait, there's more, and then you <laughs> thought a leading three cause of death in China. Eight. The yeah, Mitch Hedberg nightmare death. Yes. What is it about Chinese escalators? Why are they so hungry? And what makes us think so good? <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I just keep. It's like they just collapse in the middle, and it turned out the Chinese escalators are just a big hollow box full of gears and metal. <laughs> <laughs> China men are made out of Chinese food, and the escalators they're hungry, but then they get hungry again a minute later. They keep <laughs> eating. Yeah. I mean, here in America, we've got escalators down. I pretty much never see an escalator issue. Like our whole society, pretty tuned in on mm. escalators. I was afraid to see the fool like hold the handrail from the outside and get pulled into the sky. Oh, but I that, saw a kid. That's put his someone. Head. That's someone who underestimates Is... their own grip strength. Not someone who like, like they thought they were going to ride it to the top. Plan ahead. Yeah, they're, uh, imagine they're this. not smart. Yeah. <laughs> I imagine this escalators going up, and it's got that rubbery handrail on the uh, rail mm-hmm, on the side mm-hmm. that moves along with you, and the kid sticks his head over the rail like with his neck 
like on the rubbery rail and his head gets stuck between the wall and the rubbery thing. So he's just at the top with his head stuck in there and it's just pinching him in there for he's just like ah and the mom is like not as concerned as she should be. You know what I mean? Like like there's levels to shit. And yeah. she didn't immediately go to like an eight, nine, or ten. She was still at like a four. There was a little bit of annoyance. Ah, oh, <laughs> don't stick your head in there. Come on. Oh, you're doing it again. He's goof. <laughs> and he's just dying. <laughs> As, I was afraid of escalators from a very young young age. Like like my really? grandmother was like, it'll suck you in. Like, like and, and you know, at the at the top, it has that thing where the teeth meet. And it was like, yeah, but yes. if my shoelace go, I grew up on the farm. So important like, for how it works. <laughs> your shoelace goes in an auger. You're going in. I just I just assumed that the escalator would eat me if I weren't careful on it. I always tied my shoes. For that, I'm still a little remember, afraid. Do you remember? I remember being a little kid and like me and my brothers or like brother or younger brothers like standing there like doing that thing where you keep your feet totally flat. Because like I remember my oh, yeah. mom would tell me the same thing where she'd be like, be careful. You'll get sucked in. And I'd be like, mom, watch. And I'd be like trying to almost yeah. get it stuck. Like demonstrably letting, untrue. Mom. Letting it like push me onto the top barely yeah. of the platform. And you know what? I have both my legs. It's, it's totally to- fake news. If you're not trying, if you don't live in China, this isn't a threat. Because <laughs> Taylor's not made of Chinese food. No, 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 that no. That was it. American. Saving grace. <laughs> Is there aren't there, as many uh, escalators in life. I feel like they were a big part of the mall environment and the airport, and that was like it. Like no one else had it, had any any use for the escalator. No. Well, the yeah. elevator's better, dude. I was at the hospital the other day. Three flights of fucking stairs. What do you wh- throw an escalator in there? You got crippled people everywhere. There's elevators all over the hospital. I'm not getting an there's elevator a- on a hospital. That's like a hot box of disease and pain. Escalators, like if this you want to do a little my immune system. Escalators, like a viewing thing. Like a high volume viewing thing. You're going through the mall. You're kind of, oh, I'm going up. There's the KB toys. There's the fucking candle store. You're taking a look. Elevator is practicality. You're at the hospital. You're going to you're going to surgery, sir. You go to to stat. You know, Kyle medicine missed terms. his chance at a free inoculation. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> you get those I, I, as far as you know. I still mask up. I go in the hospital. Them people look ill. It's, it's almost like there's sick people in there. I yeah. mask up and, and like it's... Jason. I do too. <laughs> I grab People the werewolf made, Halloween and I say, too. trust the science. <laughs> and, they, and then I get kicked out of Home Depot. <laughs> They're putting the shetty down. <laughs> oh, all right. All right. So, you know, I love police activity. I got to tell you about the video I saw the other day. All right. So, what police, are, police officers responding to a call. This woman. He arrives on the scene to this real trashy neighborhood, white people, um, white trash, trashy people. Um, mama's the big mama's on the porch. Yeah, my daughter broke the glass table and and it's my table. Now, I deal with her money and that's why she broke it. But but she ain't got and it ain't no good. The table, but she ain't got no business breaking it. And he's mm-hmm. like, yeah, she don't have no business breaking your table. And, you know, as long as she's a minor. She don't know you nothing. You know, you her mother. There's a cop's telling her all this. And it's like, all right, this is fairly reasonable, even though, like, the cop and the mom seem like pieces of shit already. And, like, meanwhile, the son is, like, 16, sweeping up the glass that the mom has that, from the girl breaking the table. And he's like, y'all ain't gonna do shit anyway. Fucking bullshit police. I always come around. Don't never do shit. Don't never do shit. You ain't gonna do nothing. You ain't gonna do fucking nothing. What's your badge number? What's your? He's just being antagonistic, but not overly. The cop takes yeah. it personally. He's like, I want you to shut the fuck up. I'm here to solve some problems. You shut the fuck up, you little punk, you little bitch. Is that, you know what? Maybe I'll come over and whoop your ass. Won't you come he over and step to me, He does sound like son? a problem solver. Thank goodness we have this man on the floor. And the cop starts into, and the kid's like, clearly, all right, Mr. Police Officer, I didn't want to fight. I just wanted, I'm just mad. And he's like, nah, nah, fuck. And he goes over and like shoves the kid. Like, come on, fucking do something. Oh, y'all punks on the east side. All punks on the east side. Look at this. <laughs> and like there's people down the street going the sing song. The cop is yelling, saying this. He's yelling at the neighbors, punking the kid. He's that's, letting the neighbors no, know that the helpful. kid is a bitch. <laughs> like, and, and like he goes on and the kid's like, I, I ain't catching no charge. I'm not gonna put hands on you, catch some charge. He's like, I done told you I ain't gonna lock you up. I'm just gonna whoop your ass. I ain't gonna mace you. I ain't gonna tase you. I'm gonna give you these hands, son. And finally the cop decides, well. I'm just going to have to beat the child. He's not going <laughs> to hit me first. A man so of he walk, So he's like, you know what? You know what? Shove, shove, shove. And the kid like does something back. And the cop like puts him in a headlock and like judo throws him over his whole body. 
And now the kid's on the ground in a headlock, and the cop is delivering ground and pound blows to the face. Good. He's going, wham, Justin. wham, wham, wham. This is when the second officer third. arrives on the scene, having no idea that the cop has a, basically a, agreed for both men to a mutual combat. And so he tries to grab the kid. Come on, come on. And the cop goes, nah, don't lock him up. Looks right at him. Bam! Hits him again in the face. Don't lock him up. Bam! Hits him again in the face. And the cop's like, come on, kid, get up. And the kid goes, you didn't whoop my ass. He was holding me down the whole time. That cop, a second cop, arrived just in time to witness an ass whooping. That's all he ever did. But the kid <laughs> now wants to fight some more. He's like, this isn't over. And the cop's <laughs> like, I already whipped your ass once. And it goes on for another, like, five minutes. He got in a lot of trouble, the cop did. I, I, he, he just assaulted that minor oh, yeah. for no yeah. reason. Who I mean, was that's really so strange. For, for Usually reason. cops are well known. Oh, for a reason. The kid needed a good ass whooping. But, like, yeah. officer, give you these hands was – it was. there's a scene like that. I think it's in a movie called End of Watch, maybe Jake Gyllenhaal. And uh, uh, there's a scene where he tells the guy, he's like, all right, you whoop my ass, we'll leave with this warrant. Um, uh, or they, they said, if you whoop my ass, we'll leave. I whoop your ass. You, you put the handcuffs on yourself and come with us. Enough of this bullshit. And they had like a boxing match inside the house. Cop whips the guy's ass and he puts the <laughs> handcuffs <laughs> on and goes. And I've seen that multiple times where cops are just like, you know what? Oh, you're tough? No. Okay. And take the belt off and fight people. I saw a video last week. Cop boxing a kid in the street. Clearly, they, they, they're both circling me? each other. The internet. You're up. Huh. Was the was the, <laughs> was the cop black on that where they boxed to the street? I thought they were both white in that one, and the cop oh. was bigger than the the other guy. But I kept thinking, like, man, that cop is only going to take so much of an ass whooping. <laughs> yeah. The cop was black, and I'm like, whoa, he's talented. This guy can throw hands. He's not just tough; like he's clearly moving like a trained fighter. Yeah. And the other guy. Also looked pretty good. He was athletic. I don't know if he had as much training, but the the cop got the best of him. He was just he, his head movement was so good. He would, the other guy wasn't landing the shots. And afterwards, it turns out that the cop like trained all the time. He lives for this. Yeah. Speaking of cops who are like that, like you guys have been into UFC for much lo- or that that world of UFC much longer than me. But like sure. my introduction to it was like. 2006 Kimbo Slice on YouTube. And so in my head, I was like, Kimbo Slice is the toughest man on earth. And then I, I saw that video that got promoted where that uh, that that big white cop like Shane, Sean Gannon, Sean Gannon. and like he was like Boston. I'm gonna fight fucking Kimbo and I remember going to watch that video and being like, oh Kimbo's gonna fucking tee off on this guy and fuck him up. And it, I remember getting halfway through the video and being like, oh no, I don't I don't think Kimbo's going to win this. Actually, <laughs> he's... Oh, no, that's not even Sean's blood. Okay, shit. I thought he was better at this than he actually is. <laughs> and so, like, it's interesting how that kind of you know, shifts and everything. I wanted to track that to, like, the racing world that you're in. And I wanted to know about anti-heightism bigotry. Because you, everyone <laughs> knows, you walk into a Home Depot or a store like that, you get the credit of being 6'6". People look at you, they go, you're, he's a tall guy. That means he's probably got stuff going on. But in the world of racing, like if you're a jockey, if some five foot six guy walks in the jockey hangout and says he's good at riding horses, do you know how much those little dwarfs are going to laugh at him? They're going to mock him straight out of that room. They're going to send him right back to the normal size roller coaster so he can ride. Just like on racing, Mm -hmm. I bet that you, is there ever a time where you've been like, I'm real good at racing and some five foot seven racer who's really good is like, I bet you are champ. I bet you're like real good. Like I bet you you, kind of hunker in, huh? Yeah. I bet you're the fastest in your family. That's it. Or do you just threaten (laughs) them out of it? Oh, you're exactly right. Yeah. There's, there's no (laughs) way. I mean, when you see somebody that looks like a tall racing driver, they might be, you know, five, 10, five, eight. This is not, yeah. yeah, there, there's nothing I would fit in and that's okay. I mean, there's some, you know, sports car level stuff that are modified street cars where you put a, you know, lightweight, small bucket seat in and you could get some more room. So th- those are always possible, but, uh, a formula car open wheel. No, no, that's what about that's NASCAR. Right. Like do yeah. those guys have, those guys are like regular size grown men and stuff. They are. Yeah. And yeah. you know, the more rich guy tough, the sport right? gets the, and less qualified by racing prowess, the bigger people <clears> can fit in. I'm glad you're here I think because NASCAR I watched weighs a... you with the driver in it. Am I wrong on that? I think they might though. Oh, yeah, they do weigh you with the driver in it. Yeah. yeah. Huh. So, so it, it, there's an advantage to oh, yeah. being able to control where the weight is. Like if I weighed zero pounds and they could put that weight low and center it or maybe over the rear tires, I don't know where they want it. That would help. 
Whereas if I'm fat, it has to go where I am. But still, the advantage is muted so much. How much? How much of an advantage would say ten or fifteen pounds be? Is that nothing? Is that meaningless? Like in a NASCAR car, because we turn left in my household. NASCAR <laughs> fairly little, but you know Lewis Hamilton has done some interviews lately where he'll say that if he's you know five or ten pounds heavier for a race, it's like tenths of a second on a lap, uh, mm-hmm. which I would struggle to, especially with the unpredictability of his car the last few years, I would struggle to think mm-hmm. that's really a thing. Yeah. But it's mm-hmm. a lovely thing to blame it on. You know, you had a nice wild night of uh, mm-hmm. a Brazilian yeah. barbecue, and it, it got to be a problem. But, uh, I, yeah. I believe that I bring it I bring it up because you can cut a tremendous amount of weight if you if you if when he was going to weigh in, he drank a lot of water. He drank a mm-hmm. lot, as much as he could drink. He'd been overhydrating all day, which is, or maybe all week, which is going to be important because he needs to drop all that water weight, weight tonight. Uh, you know, like he could make a 20 pound swing. You can make a 20 pound swing without like any adverse side effects. It'd be easy. You, you know how those, uh, how occasionally there's a wrestler who doesn't have legs and he's like, oh, and his yeah. arms are just like, whoo, just huge. And so he's competing against guys whose arms are like not even in the same ballpark. He like his grip is like a Titan's grip. Are there any racers maybe who have a disablement, whatever oh. it would say, a handicap like that, where maybe they're hand racing and then I could see people getting upset, like, God damn, like that guy doesn't have legs. He's saving 40, how much do legs weigh? Like, that's a no, good bit of weight. I'm trying to think. I mean, there, there have definitely been some more gentleman racers, amateur racers that have managed to be reasonably competitive, you know, with missing appendages. So that can happen, especially with more automatic cars and things like that. But I can't think of a top level racing driver. Somebody in the comments might. But Woody, I'm glad to hear that you're watching F1. I, I mean, they've done such a brilliant job of marketing the sport through Drive to Survive. That's I mean, what it's got me. exactly it's what got most of, most people in, or or more in, or understanding a lot more of the storylines. I, I know it's predominantly funded by the FIA, but holy cow! I mean, what a successful transition from the way they've been broadcasting it for so long to a new medium and it has worked like a charm it's a little bit um i don't know like insulting or embarrassing to be a drive to survive f1 fan like i'm one of those new guys that doesn't quite understand why the mediums and hard tires were worthless last year and why they run regular tires when it's clearly raining out like i don't i don't understand these changes sometimes uh but i get it a little bit i understand why there's porpoising on the new models and what they're doing to fix it and and my wife follows it too so she'll a lot of it is quizzes with answers that i do not have it's just like (laughs) but it's it's cool Woody sent us a photo earlier and it's his wife wearing safety goggles and she's got a high powered laser that looks exactly like this because it is and <laughs> she's killing these like sea creatures in their fancy aquarium by lazing them and they're just in there <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just dying the water's because, boiling let me, let, just just that was real <laughs> oh my goodness gracious yeah because these these things don't fuck around <laughs> yeah, shine it on the wall behind you and show them how it can start fire all right I, I, I have to be careful because I'll put my own eye out. It's one of those Ralphie with the BB gun. Oh moments. yeah, you got to have a special gun. Goodness, is that my like a sponsored? God. Careful! Product? It was refracting, nah. and it was nah, almost like on fifty your bucks eye. on Amazon. <laughs> How about that? Yeah. Is it marketed Ooh. as a lightsaber. Did you see that when Kyle turned that on and pointed it at the wall? There was yes. a little dot on his his face right oh, here. Oh goodness! <laughs> oh man! No, let's not. Let's let's not oh, play. it's smoking. There we go. Man, oh, it's my. gonna be great when I'm not the blindest one on the show. <laughs> you got to get some LASIK, man. It's the best thing in the world. Yeah. I wanted it. And then my my doctor, he was like, you probably thought about LASIK for a long time. This is about four years ago. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. And he goes, ah, corneas are too thin. I wouldn't recommend it. And I was yeah. like, why would you lead in like that? You can't. Dreams crushed. Like, yeah, dreams you crushed. Oh. Like you can't. <clears throat> having glasses kind of stinks. Kyle is of the opinion. He's like, I kind of like glasses. Like it's like something you can put on your face, a little decoration. Yeah. That's something that like you can just There's wear glasses with glass in it. You can have that, you that can. style and you have great eyes. So you can capitalize Look, on both. She's and, just, that and, fucking... you, and just say that it's a reading glasses. This makes me so nervous for you and your your family. I like to hold the laser on the aquarium. Like it helps me hold it extra steady. Why she's freehanding it, I'm not sure. (laughs) But she's doing it. Do you you notice the refraction? Like it's literally changing, like like, like how it it dings down a little bit. 
Yeah. Were there any fish casualties from that exercise? Not in our tank. We haven't had one. But on the internet, people show pictures of fishes with like one cloudy eye. Oh <laughs> and they're like, goodness. it went horribly wrong. <laughs> Be careful of this product. Now, yeah. Woody, as you're taking this photo, you have eye protection on as well, right? Uh, for the sake of this conversation, yes. God damn, dude, please. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I'm wearing... Uh, <laughs> You're a friend of mine. I don't want you to go blind because <laughs> like, of some stupid bullshit. It won't get both eyes, Taylor. He can get a patch. <laughs> All of his oh, hobbies oh, are so be... sight intensive. <laughs> like, I'm going to be so much cooler if I lose one eye. Yeah. Yeah, here's oh. the thing. Here's the thing about losing one eye. Now... If you were good at anything, you're still good at it, pretty much. But now you're that guy who's good at it with one fucking eye, mm. right? Like the bar lowers for you. Everything's I a little easier when you've got one eye. So really you do that would be a cure. Oh yeah, it's probably therapeutic to do it. <laughs> yeah, you, you never, you never, Jack, you to take you an out. interesting one-eyed person. Like nobody's like, oh, I bet he was pretty boring to talk to. No. Yeah. Oh, no. even that dude who's in politics with the one eye. I yeah. want to. I'd want him to tell me the story of it. Tell me exactly what happened. Yeah. What, what's different now? From your yeah. perspective. Yeah, from your limited <laughs> d- perspective. <laughs> what it. is it The like? only thing that I miss post-LASIK was the ability to take the corrective lenses off because it mutes the world around you in such a lovely way that you mm. can't read and focus on things. Like It was very relaxing to me to be able to not see. what I, could, I wasn't going to walk into a wall, yeah. but... Yeah, you can't do it once it once it's all fixed and over perfect. No, I, I I definitely don't get that. Like I it would be fucking awesome to wake up in the morning and like just see. Like just open your eyes and see right away. Cause like you just, even like if you have contacts, like even if oh, yeah. you get the kind that are breathable, because now it's not like the fucking nineties, you get like the monthly ones that you can actually sleep in for a full month and they breathe through. Even when That's you crazy. have those, those are the ones I have when I wear contacts. There's still 15 minutes at the start of every day that I can't quite see right because they're like oh. reacclimating and everything. Yeah. So unlike normal people eyes who like I assume you just wake up and see, right? Like so human like, eyes. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> so I don't get that. Like when you like I I told you like it wasn't until like 6 years ago that I learned <laughs> that everybody doesn't see giant stars every night on the highway. <laughs> I like how you made it a blacked out lens like that character from the fucking Godfather for, <laughs> for no apparent reason. That's, That's it. pretty Is sick. It? A distant eye patch. Oh, a distant. I yeah. just bought laser goggles for the family. Just thought the world would want to send me a pair too. Good call. Good call. <laughs> yeah, the uh, I I actually waited to get LASIK because that's one of the major side effects is night haloing. So I waited until after we set the cannonball record to uh, to do it. Oh. Smart. So, yeah, we were uh, we were all on Discord doing our little hangout with our uh, with our with our Patreon people a couple of days ago, and somebody pointed out that Tony Stewart had killed a man on the track, and I was like, Yeah, I remember that. that like, no, no, no. Idea. He like. Straight up killed him on purpose. And I was like, guys, come on. They're driving race cars. These things have thousands of horsepower. You know, shit happens. People die. It's a dangerous sport. Nobody says that so-and-so killed Dale Earnhardt. I remember him going into that turn. He bumped somebody. Nobody mm-hmm. talks about that. Like, no, no, no. Watch. And then I watched Tony Stewart murder a man on the track. Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly. Who knows what <clears throat> I was watching? I couldn't tell who was who. Yeah, right. <laughs> the fact that, like, right before he gets to him, you hear the engine just roar. Like, he's going around the turn, and the engine's going, but it's like, rrr, rrr, and then he mows the guy down. And it's like, that's murder but it's hard to feel bad for someone who's like walking into an active racetrack going you you and it's like common thing is that common in racing my father has done it (laughs) my father has done that yeah the guy right i I talked about this in the hangout when you're like an amateur race car driver there's no team paying for that fucking car that's your goddamn car and he just cost you thousands maybe tens of thousands and who guess who Oh yeah, I'll have to, the guys in the garage will fix it up. No, you will. Yeah, but you he's in, in your garage, Taylor. Yeah. It's only reason. So he's like, Lamar "Fuck you, you piece of shit." He's like throwing of his. Of course, he threw his helmet. Hit the guy's car with his helmet. Oh, that, <laughs> that doesn't cost him a six hundred dollar helmet. That's exactly right. Yeah, what a life <laughs> insult to injury. <laughs> so was that was that a big story in the racing world back in the day, or was was were most people like? Ridiculous! They're trying to blame him for hitting someone who walked onto an active track. It was big. When did it didn't happen? It was. It's been a long. Looks like it was like two thousand seven, like fifteen or eight, years right? ago. Yeah, like it, fifteen years ago. Um, I I I watched it twice, and it's like, man, why does he hit the accelerator? Why does he hit the? Acce- 
why is he doing that? Is he trying to like scare him and then things went wrong or yeah. did he steer? Dude, I was, I was tell. having fun in the hangout being like, no, I don't think it doesn't seem like he tried to hit him. Like, <laughs> just, <laughs> try to Taylor, it watch. <laughs> no, I don't hear it. I don't get it. <laughs> yeah. His body, Obviously, um, he's in a race suit. <laughs> he's in a race suit, you know, so it's like overalls and they're, they're very sturdy, but you can tell his body isn't all put together. Right. But it's being held together yeah. by the race. That's backwards. His his legs he, he's much longer from tip heels. of foot to to to, to tip yeah. of finger now than he was before mm-hmm. because things are disconnected and broken. Um, yeah, Tony Stewart smoked that guy. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he did it on purpose too. Yeah. Um, well, Tony Stewart's still racing, as far as I know. He right? well, I mean, he's pretty he retired was, now, but okay, yeah. Well, then he, he continued to race many years. Taylor the racing as far as Taylor knows. <laughs> yeah. As far as I know, <laughs> yeah. as as I know all sorts of movies win Oscars, and <laughs> <laughs> like that's the real intent. Like, did Dale Earnhardt never killed anybody? They they called him the Intimidator. They called his Tony Stewart's the fucking Intimidator. Mm, true. That's Zach really says they he call quit him? that year. A few races later, he, do you stop racing? I mean, oh. They called him the Intimidator before or after he killed that guy. Long well, well, they called they called, oh, they called Earnhardt. The yes, oh, yeah. They didn't call the murderer the Intimidator. Intimidator. No. Although the murderer would really one up the other. That really would. Who, keep who's the uh, who's the biggest that. heel in the racing world? Who's the guy? Jeff if it's anything Gordon. like fighting, like that, they love to hate. They do Jeff hate Gordon? Jeff Gordon. Yeah. Back in the day, it was Jeff Gordon. Like. Why? I love the guy I know of. I love Jeff Gordon because I guess he was the rainbow warrior. He wasn't as tough as all the other good old boys. And he kicked their asses race after race after race. He was head and shoulders above all these dumb rednecks that looked down on him for not being a dumb redneck. I was all about it. I was always a uh, a Jeff Gordon fan. Uh, I like the look of the car. I love the DuPont car. Like, like everybody else's cars look look kind of plain and like I recognize them, but his had its own fucking thing going on. It makes sense. DuPont is automotive paint. And uh, I like Jeff Gordon's look. I, like he was the California guy mm-hmm. who knew how to turn right. Every time they go to a road course, he showed it. Oh, and, uh, and I liked yep. him. Yeah. Yep. I interviewed him for a bit at uh, Amelia Island a couple weeks ago and uh, super great guy. You know, he's uh, he's a proper car guy. You know, he's uh, and uh Lovely What's a proper to. car guy? Well, uh, somebody who could uh, uh, that t- that Taylor wouldn't mind talking to. That it doesn't have to be all about cars. It, you know, they oh, okay. there can be some overlap, and he can be a pleasant person to actually talk to. And he's not nerding out on stuff that nobody else cares about. Over, he's not autistically automotive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, precisely. Just a normal guy. You can talk about Magic the Gathering yeah. with, <laughs> 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 and that's where the conversation what, went. Just you know, whenever <laughs> whenever you get into a hobby, I like to like steep myself in it and like seek out the people who are good at it and the people mm-hmm. who got good at it and sort of like learn from them. And sometimes you meet those people, and it's like, oh, you didn't arrive. Uh, here at, at tennis because you were collecting talents like me you've just you're just an autistic ta- tennis man who's been doing nothing but tennis your whole life and you're obsessed yeah. with it like you there's plenty of those it. people you meet along the way and they're great to learn from because all they do is that thing all they do is that thing oh yeah that's who you want to learn from you don't want if i'm learning a sport on youtube i don't want to go to a channel called general sports knowledge <laughs> if i'm learning tennis i want to go to the tennis fiend and a That's guy it. who's like, hey, third upload of the day. We're playing fucking tennis. I love tennis. <laughs> like, Dude, this guy, this guy's going to teach me how to play tennis. Same with Pickle Magic the Gathering. Are... You, yes. you, you, you watch a video of a guy teaching you a Magic the Gathering strategy. You immediately know how good he is at the game by his inability to make eye contact with his webcam. Yep. <laughs> I yep. go, this guy cannot make eye contact with this cam right now. He knows a good blue counter strategy I can learn. All like, I'm saying is that black know. is really strong in the current meta. That's all. Definitely, definitely <laughs> the strongest. <laughs> Dustin Hoffman there. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, re- he's also Rain Man. There are 37, 37, <laughs> 37 <laughs> 20 life points. You have 18 <laughs> mana left. 18 mana, 18 mana. Got to spend it. <laughs> yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm trying to get good at that. Uh, this RTS game we've been playing right now, and and I've. Uh, I'm looking at. Now I'm not looking at the the people who are entertainers in that sphere. I'm looking at the people who are competitors in that sphere on their YouTube channels with like 30 views a video, and it's just they're terrible at making videos. But the all but they know everything there is to know about the stupid game. It's uh it's a real slog to 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 get through. We've been playing a bunch of that stupid game. What does RTS oh, stand for? 
real time strategy. So that means that we're controlling armies that are fighting each other and we're constantly clicking and like rearranging and reallocating units and moving them around because it's, while it might be machine guns and uh, like tanks and stuff, it really boils down to like a rock, paper, scissors type thing where, oh no, like, like this unit X is out that unit and this X is out that unit. So it's really about coordination. And if he's bringing tanks, we need to have anti-tank weapons over here. But if he's bringing infantry, we need solutions yeah. for that. And the it's constantly assigning things. Just more of a top down micromanagement strategy game. is turn-based. Yeah. So if Kyle can make, I'll make it up, you know, like 10 decisions a second, then he will beat someone who can only make one decision a second because yeah, it's called no your, waiting. But if it's turn based, AM. it's just who makes good you know, decisions. If it's real time, then who can make more decisions is a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. That's real yeah fun. Very true. It's, it's a blast. Kyle and I have been having a real good time getting good at that. And Kyle linked me just last night. He was like, we were playing a couple Dom games and he was like, Hey, just FYI, sent you a link to this uh noob tournament that's being hosted maybe we uh maybe we take a little peek at it maybe we <laughs> we join a noob tournament for total War warhammer 3 and i think that would be a great way for reality to come crashing down on us on how good we actually are at this game like, <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm, because I'm well I feel, when i'm playing like the group on discord and everything i'm feeling like god damn i'm like I'm, I'm decent at this i know what i'm doing but like i guarantee i go up against someone like real deal it'll be just like age of empires where it's like oh they know things i didn't know i had to know I think if and, we just played in a system where there are picks and bans, um, y'all would real, really struggle, right? Because like you have like two or three things you, races you can do well, and he has one. So like, how many do you need? I have I have four. I'm comfortable with, and that's it. And there's and there's fucking twenty five. Yeah, you know, in a, turn, in a tournament structure, they do like picks and bans. So like like I I don't understand bands. that term picks and bans. All right, so there's like five teams we can pick from. I don't want you to play pay one play one of them. So I'm gonna ban one. You're gonna ban one. I'm gonna pick one. You're gonna pick one. And we're gonna yeah. we're gonna boil down to a situation oh. where nobody's playing the overpowered yeah. faction. If, if Kyle Steve, knows from playing me that I like to play fucking <laughs> I don't know the Ogre Kingdom faction, he's gonna ban the Ogre Kingdom faction. So I can't pick that, and I'm less likely to be able to use strategies I'm comfortable with. And if it I know he's likely like to, he just pick needs elves, to be good I do at two, well, right. you can get you get three bans. Oh, then four. Out of 25. Yes, so four. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then four. And so I did the math. And then <laughs> I figured it out. But it's great. It's so much like I love RTS top down strategy games because like they're so deep. There's so much to learn about them that is so different from FPS. Where like FPS is just a different skill set, like first person shooter, like clicking on heads, being fast. Like it doesn't I think just translate. The, just the Juggling a bunch of things is is so frustrating. It's so fun. Uh, it's so difficult. So you'll have like ten things on the board that are moving around, and if you forget about one for just a little bit, you'll look up and it's dead because they like surrounded your like. If you've got a tank that you're driving over here and you forget about it, well, they'll just like surround it with anti tank shit and grind it to bones because you didn't keep it moving and you've got to babysit every unit and keep it moving around. Or otherwise, it's just a bunch of guys who stopped moving in a field, and yeah. other guys will come along and kill them. So you're just click, 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 click. And you'll see sometimes like, oh, he forgot about this. Look, it's in the corner of the map. He doesn't know. God. Yeah. <laughs> oh, go get it. Go get it. Go get it. <laughs> yeah, that's been real fun. That's been eating up a bunch of my time with playing that stupid shit. Oh, it's not stupid. It's great. It's a great well, do, do y'all put them on Twitch? Or no, do we, uh, not this one. I don't think we're I don't I don't think we're ready to to showcase <laughs> our skills in this game. RTS, <laughs> RTS like real time strategy games are so in depth and layered <laughs> that like when a fan of an RTS watches you, like they rip you to shreds for not knowing every little thing they know. Like okay. imagine someone watching you on FPS and they're like, you should have shot that guy. It's like, no, that but a million. You should have built this villager first. You should have picked this selection of this unit. I noticed at this point in the battle, you sent the wrong one this way. No, I'm going to no, wait until I'm an absolute master. Yeah, I don't know. This game <laughs> has a huge a online. It doesn't have a huge online community. It's it's from the um, borderline. I feel zero. like I feel like the whole like <laughs> Warhammer um, like universe is about to like get a little bit bigger. It seems like it's becoming more and more mainstream. With that, um, um, it's, it's Henry Cavill, right? It's got the yeah. they got the Amazon deal. Um, that's the that's the RTS that we play. We're we're playing like a okay. mythical version of that. So like dragons and goblins and yeah. ghouls and witches and warlocks. And it's monsters. a cool game for cool people. <laughs> it is. It's, it's, it's not only the cool guys, as they say. But, I'm not uh, being ironic. I think it is. <laughs> it's, it's a no virgins allowed scenario. Yeah. That's why we it play by. It's just me and Taylor. <laughs> I'm not, yeah, it's just, it's just, um, <laughs> you're the only sex havers playing that game. In the entire yeah. population. And, and like, what do you get a kick out of this? The community of Total War Warhammer 3 that came out last year 
is yeah. m- significantly smaller than the community online of Age of Empires 2, which came out in 1998. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Just to give you a, a picture of, of how much this, <laughs> this company, of how much Creative Tight-knit Assembly, group. this company is failing to promote their, their, their game. Like they have but way better graphics, all this game? stuff. And this teeny tiny little community. Did you know that there are games in 2023 you can search for beginning guides on on YouTube and they're not there? Not just that they're hard to find, they're not there. That's how fucking obscure and how like disinterested There's like many not people enough are money in and teaching people the game for there to be really good. There's like two or three guys on YouTube that are like into this game and like do it as a job. Yeah. But but like they've been doing it so long, they don't teach new people anymore. So it's it's hard to like get the the building blocks uh because the third game is essentially the first game, but with better graphics and more more variety. You know, it's the same shit just over and over, um, yeah. repackaged. It's also about a three hundred dollar game. <laughs> <laughs> they, they screw the shit out of you. They make yeah. you buy the old games to unlock DLC for the new game. So if you buy Total War Warhammer three and you want, let's say, there's thirty factions in the game, they give you four for <laughs> buying a sixty dollar game, and you have to buy. $210 or so of DLC and the old two games to get access to all the, the factions. They went all in on fuck you. Like, <laughs> we're not trying to expand. We're trying to fuck you. We're trying to get money from you, bitch. Like, <laughs> how much you have? How much you got? Run them pockets. Their new how DLC. much you got? They yeah. just added like a new race. They, Do you know how like, much it okay. takes for someone into Magic the Gathering to go, you're getting ripped off? <laughs> like, <laughs> they make three hundred dollar video games because each the piece of it, they keep adding more like races, and so like every time, like the chaos dwarves are coming out soon. Hey, you, it's like dwarves but better. It's chaos dwarves. They're like corrupted yeah, dwarves. They're cool. Goblin, I'm buying evil it. dwarves. <laughs> evil dwarves are twenty dollars. I, I already bought it. Twenty. <laughs> $25. It comes out like tomorrow, I think. It, it's Say 25. no more. I bought yeah. it early. I got five off, Taylor. That's you, you, and you, guess what? It's a new faction. Money away. It's a new faction, which means that they're gonna It'll be kind of pump up the power level to get people to buy it. Oh. And so if Kyle buys the fucking Chaos Dwarves and they're overpowered, I gotta buy the Chaos Dwarves. It's it's fight fire with fire. Fight fire with it's fire. It's a real good time. We honestly should stream it some, not because of uh, our we prowess should. at the game, but um, I think here's the the real problem with that is we both go mum when we're playing because we both get real stoned and we're uh we're clicking as fast as we can and i told you like you could, you know what being stoned is like you, yeah. you're not great at managing lots of things at once you're worse at it <laughs> and here i am being asked to control dozens of moving around it's like chariots and fucking archers and everything's j- and so we're not conversating a lot we're sitting there focused like click 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 you can hear click Sometimes we go through the whole game and like the end will get there and I'll be like, good game. Kyle will be like, good game. And that's, and that's the entire that's it. conversation. Like, it, for, and for 30 Kyle, minutes. This was like four four nights ago when we were playing. Like we, it was in the middle of a game. We were playing Domination where you try and conquer the flags and everything. And I noticed this game was going so well. Like I was rolling over Kyle in a way that was not like usually we have pretty competitive games and I was just molesting him. And like near the end of it, he goes, Oh, I took way too much of that syrup, man. And I was like, oh, so you're like barely playing and you're like, yeah, I don't think I've moved a unit in four minutes. <laughs> and I was like, all right, well, this is barely a victory. Yeah, we, that's, that's we the have intensity a, we're playing with. We have a weed sponsor and they make this syrup and it <laughs> is incredibly powerful. Yeah, it's um, it's Pink dangerous. Dirt. And I, I took like a couple sips of it. I like, like, you know, Western when they crack open the bottle and like mm-hmm. glug glug i did that basically put the cat back on sat it on my desk and went back to playing and it hits you out of nowhere and and you don't realize what's wrong with you at first you're like oh is this it <laughs> <laughs> is this it <laughs> and then is this, is this am i being this, taken home lord <laughs> the code's up oh it's down it's gone now but that, this death by gummy stuff we talk about it every week irresponsibly effective i don't like <laughs> I, I I once bit like the feet off a gummy bear and it I, I don't have the tolerance that some do. Yeah. It knocked me on my ass. I I couldn't talk. I I just the feet off a gummy bear. This is you need a magnifying glass to see the amount I took, and it made me so high. I'm really proud of Woody because when I met Woody, I didn't I wouldn't have thought that he was going to be the type of guy. To, to get into drugs a little more. Drugs and late, tattoos. Later yeah, on. Here I am now. Drugs and tattoos. Well, <laughs> the tattoos you've dipped your toes in. Um, <clears throat> I love your tattoo. It's 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 excellent. 
Very cute. Um, but but the drugs, I never would have expected because because Woody has done ketamine now. Um, he's uh, he's that done is a, cool. A, a, he's uh, <laughs> I haven't done that. <laughs> he's done a, a good bit of marijuana, not not just a bit, some vapes and stuff, and uh, mushrooms, and uh, and what else? What else have you gotten? That's into? It. that might be the heroin. <laughs> no, uh, I think it's oh. just shrooms, ketamine, and the Delta Eight. Yeah, I don't know if I've ever done actual pot. <clears throat> really? You've never just smoked weed? I huh. No. I would have I remember when we did the survival trip, um, I had weed. And uh but but I didn't want to like put you in a weird place, like like being someone who knows that the if I have illegal drugs that you don't know about, that's probably better than having illegal drugs that you do know about if we were to get into a police situation. Now if you tell them if they ask you if I have marijuana and you say no, you're not lying. You're telling the truth. You didn't know. And, yeah. and everything works. So I would have been totally cool with you having I wouldn't have smoked it. I didn't touch it at the time. That's why I didn't offer it to. I didn't think you'd like right. tell him or anything. I didn't think you'd want any. I, I wouldn't have judged you, is what I'm saying. Chiz yeah. also didn't want any weed. I went into that Longhorns wasted. <laughs> <laughs> Yet still short of patience for that poor waitress. Fuck her. Fuck her. I hope she <laughs> I, I hope she lost a, a foot to fucking diabetes. It, she's she it fucking, does seem possible. You had God, a bad I Longhorns it. experience we on a survival a, trip. We were real hungry. Um, you know, we'd done the survival trip. We've been in the week for a, in the woods for a week, and it was over. And it's like now it's time to break. We didn't our bring fast food. Kinda. Yeah, it was, so so it's time to break our fast essentially after a week. And and we go to my house, we shower up, and uh, we go into this Longhorns, and we we're getting very poor service. And it was like, come on, it's just real slow service. Like she wasn't waiting on us, and I was getting super impatient. And I was talking about making a scene. <laughs> I was going to make a scene. We it spent like a week in the beyond. woods. And instead of bringing food, we bought fishing rods and rifles, dramatically overestimating our ability to hunt and gather. <laughs> and yeah. it basically starved. Yeah. It wow. Was, uh, How much food did you hunt or gather? No, I caught two crawfish. I was the only one that ate them. And they were like insects, basically. And uh, the gathering most successful part, I think Kyle met a person in the wood giving away cookies. <laughs> That's not gathering. <laughs> that it counts. is. This isn't so gathering. He was the That's to the area. <laughs> it's important that I tell this story because what happened was I was out hunting. I was literally trying to kill us a squirrel with a fucking, <laughs> as George Costanza calls him, with my with a, with a, with a twenty two, and because uh, I I'd, I'd scouted this location for weeks prior that we were going to be camping in. And there were so many squirrels. I was thinking like, oh, oh y'all are in trouble in a couple of weeks. I've never mm -hmm. eaten squirrel, but I've, I've been watching YouTube videos on how to prepare them and skin them and stuff. And they just all disappeared as soon as we moved into the neighborhood. There were no squirrels. And uh, and so what I would do is I'd walk out of our place. I'd get in my truck and I'd drive down the road thinking maybe our like activity is running the squirrels off. I'd park, I'd get out, and I'd sit in the woods with my rifle for a couple hours every morning and see nothing. One morning I run into another truck and you're like, hey, because there's nobody out here. We're in Mount Curahee, where they did like the five miles up, five miles down, and Band of Brothers. Yeah, we're and, lost. Uh, yep. And and then this guy's like, "Hey, I'm." We're, he said he owned the store and that they took the stale cookies and muffins and gave them to campers, and asked if I wanted any, and sort of like holds up multiple boxes of M and M cookies and like mini muffins, I think. And I was like, "Yes." Yes, I would love that. <laughs> and I, I, sh I don't think I ate any. I think I showed up back with them, and I was like, what should we do with this? I technically I gathered it. It's just shocking. <laughs> this is up there with flat earth as far as believability for oh, me. Like, I that hear there you. was a muffin man. Dude, they none of us believed truck. him, but there's more. I, I, Kyle's like, yeah, you know, there was just a guy in the woods giving away boxes of cookies. Oh, funny thing, huh? And we're all like, no way. You're like destroying the integrity of this thing. <laughs> and the cameraman guy goes, I saw him too. I met him. I turned down the cookies. It's like, of course you did, you fucking dick. You're the one who has food. The cameraman was the only one not per participating in the real survival aspect of it. Yeah. He was producing the thing. You go and from he... ruining the spirit of it to you being like, what? You bitch. You had the, <laughs> the opportunity to have bran muffins and you didn't take I was it. So <laughs> I was so thankful that he had he too had seen the muffin man. Because the muffin, the muffin man? man was the muffin man. <laughs> it was such a a make believe thing to tell people, and like like I think that's how people feel. Like yeah. I don't believe in aliens, but and UFO spottings. I think they're generally seeing like yeah. weather phenomenon. I don't and, believe and in like, muffin men. What what I'm saying is like if you saw 
a craft and with your own well not you because you're fucking blind if woody saw an aircraft <laughs> let's say he's up there he's flying and he's he's like fuck there's no way that was anything but extraterrestrials that's it that there's nothing i, I was 80 feet from it he's gonna have a hard time coming back down and explaining to that that to us in a way where we're not like come on what's the punchline though what's what's the bit like mm-hmm. are you selling like what 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 is this yeah, <laughs> like why I've are you lying to happen us? to me twice twice i'm up there and i see like a blinking light zip by i'm like the fuck like what i know i just saw something and now i can't locate it again and then it happens again zoom right comes by and i'm like what is that now meanwhile i'm flying right i'm flying this lawn chair so i'm a little task saturated at like already Mm -hmm. and i can't just like not pay attention to what i'm doing entirely eventually i find it it's a remote controlled airplane that somebody is just buzzing around me, like enjoying, I guess, like they, I don't know, they probably fly all the time. And then it's a rare thing for me to come by on my lawn chair. So it's something to fly around. And sure enough, I follow the airplane back and I find like a group of overweight 46 year olds in lawn chairs, just like operating their thing with their first person goggles on as I buzz around mm. above them. And it was fun. The second time I caught on quicker. <laughs> I, the only thing close to that is uh one night this is many years ago i heard this noise across the house and it sounded like blah 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 like someone was kind of knocking pounding on a door or like prying something open i get the gun and i'm like i get close to where the noise is and it's loud and i'm like somebody's in my house fucking like beating something apart and i like announce myself i'm like i'm coming in there blah 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 I got a gun and I'm going to kill you when I get in there. You better be ready. <laughs> bub, 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 bub. <sighs> and I open the door and there's nothing in the fucking bathroom. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? And I'm like, trying. I'm, now I'm waiting for it to happen again because it must be through the floor or through the ceiling or through the walls. So it's got to be on the other side. Bub, 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 bub. And I look down. It's through the floor. So I go down to the basement and now I'm terrified. Now I'm sweeping. <laughs> the light is on. The, the light is on the AR. Officer <laughs> Michael sweeping. over here. It was a machine gun, by the way. I'm ready to go. <laughs> and, and, You're ready to ruin the guy uh, and your hot water eater. Somebody's about to get shot like 30 fucking times. Yeah, and, it's, an, and it's, like, it's an HVAC system. Yeah. <laughs> and I get to like under the bathroom and I'm sweeping that room now while like check looking by. I don't it's just me. I'm so scared. And I look up. Bub, 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 bub. It's the fucking toilet the fucking toilet had been making noise so i turned that valve on it off so now it, it's like barely getting water and the pipe is like doing the is doing this oh. do, 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 jiggly thing inside the fucking like like i don't know between the floors of the house it was so goddamn upsetting i was so convinced like i'm, I'm talking to myself in my head i'm like oh, oh you shot it anyway <laughs> <laughs> there's a point where i was like all right a hundred percent there's a bad man like like, like i was a hundred percent sure at one point mm-hmm. like 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 because i'm I, you know you're trying to like how serious is this <laughs> <laughs> it went from like let's see if anybody's here to all right let's do this <laughs> i told but, uh, you that that thing i did a scary like toilet. two years ago where like i was going like there was a, a bump in the night in my basement and i was requisitioned to go check it out and i was like goofing around and i had a bat and i was walking to my basement and i was like when i because i didn't really think there was Taylor, someone you're there. a gun owner and i was like because there wasn't someone there and I was like, when I find you, I'm going to rape you. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I said that I was going down the stairs and it made me laugh so much that I was no longer af- afraid of. <laughs> because now t- the turn tables, my friend. Now he's afraid of me. He, now mm. he's imagine he's stuck into the house. Yeah. Imagine, he, imagine him hearing that. All right, he's a homeless man who's just trying to get out of the rain. And and he hears you say that, followed by a deep belly laugh. And he looks at the dark <laughs> A dark figure coming down the stairs with a club. <laughs> I'm just chittering at him like an animal. <laughs> <laughs> the whole face is filled with weightlifting equipment. You know what? You, who's coming down? He's looking around, yeah. like like doing adding adding it all up in his head. It's like, yeah. <laughs> oh no! 
This guy has 900 pounds of plates down here. Yeah, this guy's got a lot of weights down here. <laughs> Officer, he fell into the bench press. <laughs> <laughs> he put his head selfishly under the safety and then slammed the bar down on top of it over and over and over. Aside from like a gun vault, let's if you, you break into somebody's house and you, what's the thing you see that scares you the most? Like, 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 like other than mm -hmm. evidence that this is a gun owner, because we're in America, everybody has guns. Probably here. a syringe, like a like a like a heroin mm -hmm. syringe. I've scary. got syringes laying around everywhere. Here, I right? know those aren't heroin syringes; those are getting jacked syringes. Yeah, I have to tell people when I have like repairmen in. I'm like, hey, that's uh, I'm I'm fucking juicing it, bro. It's not, it's not. Yeah, it's not. I, I, it would be easy to tell those were not heroin ones, but so, if you no, they look exactly heroin? like heroin syringes. What are the telltales? telltale signs that the homeowner is an absolute badass probably if i saw like a reef tank and a paramotor maybe oh, yeah there yeah. you go or a whole <laughs> shelf for board games and magic cards <laughs> that would tell me like whoa this guy <laughs> this guy knows how to have fun <laughs> we got some strategy to contend with yeah, this guy's gonna taylor nice robs stuff. a house that he has magic i think he has a new mission like hey bro i'll be blue, <laughs> there, I'll be blue. let's give it a go bro let's well, play I'm, for your tv i no longer <laughs> want your toaster yeah. <laughs> see i've always had better. pet reptiles so no no uh, tropical fish but i have a nine foot long boa constrictor oh and so What's i uh sunny the lamboa and uh. so she uh <laughs> about 11 year old albino snake but they i've you know you run into different people especially um uh like pest control people an exterminator comes mm -hmm. in and so i uh my first business was actually breeding albino iguanas in my parents basement in middle school and so Damn. this guy came to my parents house and uh i think i was the only one home when he was coming to spray whatever <laughs> i said don't go in the basement uh he's like why not i said don't worry about it just we don't need anything don't worry there. about it and Apparently, he was also the owner of exotic pets, and he had like an 18 foot reticulated python when he lived in some like you know condo in Florida. And he did the same thing, he had a sign on the door in the room where the snake stayed to somebody who was coming to fix an HVAC thing or something like that. And he said, Don't go in here. Of course, the first thing the guy does, it was like a left the door unlocked situation. He checks that room, guy is deathly afraid of snakes, and immediately, like, you know catatonic convulsing on the floor so oh, no. scared of this thing because it's not in a cage snake in a cage or an aquarium no. or something an 18 foot snake is going to be it's, it's going to require a, a room to, that's you know that's sunny's room that's right yeah don't go in sunny's room but the snake knew that if the door was open and left open the snake was supposed to crawl out oh. towards the front door because they would feed it outside Mm. And so this this guy is deathly afraid of snakes, and the giant snake crawls over him, not to eat him, but just on the way to the door. And I guess eventually he gets the courage to scream loud enough for the neighbors to come in. And uh, I, for some reason, they made him donate the snake to a zoo or something like. Oh, that. what a oh, pussy! No. They yeah. took his snake away. They did. They did. That's should you shame. be able to have an eighteen foot snake in your residential home? Yes. Yes, this you is should. America. You should be yes, able to have should. a tiger. No, I think you guys are wrong at, at the the perspective I was coming at it from. Oh, uh, it, which one? Do you have it? There's not enough room in a basement room for an 18 foot snake to be happy. I don't. You don't have to care about snakes the same way because it's not like it's a whale. It's pretty retarded. They're like, not capable of happiness. Forever. I don't think. But you should still be kind enough. To, like, I bet if you tested the to, brain to chemistry, and... I bet if you tested the brain chemistry of like a python who was like beloved and treated like a baby and petted and the brain chemistry of one that was kept in a, a fucking cage but fed regularly about the same you They're are right like, in this because my needs are met my lord reptiles <laughs> don't even have a forebrain or a midbrain so they only have impulses like hungry cold hot uncomfortable yeah. like pressure it's sensations like, it's like creed said uh in in the office animals don't feel pain fish don't <laughs> They say that. They say How that. How convenient that is that Creed fishermen decided fish they, don't they apparently pain. don't have the mechanism for it in the way we do. So they can feel like I am being violated, but like they don't. They don't That's feel what pain. pain is. You yeah. tell me their pain what is I'm different than ours. What I'm telling you, Woody, is it's a backwards rationalization to make us feel better. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Taylor, what I'm telling Taylor. you is there's no evidence for this either way. If, <laughs> if, if, the, if the fish instead of the apes had evolved to uh, sentiency and a technological empire. They would gut us and say, they don't feel pain the way we do. Exactly. Taylor's going to come at us on PKA 646 or something and be like, you know what? Skinny frat bros don't feel pain when you remove them from the parking spot. Oh, I've got another recounting of 
This might be the most insane police activity video I've ever seen. Okay. So Wait, hold on, but, but before we get to the police thing, I wanted to talk more about about Ed's oh. lizards oh, and, yeah. and snakes. I do too. Good. What, yeah. I, what I didn't made want to you? Away from that. Yeah. Like, what was the impetus of you doing that as your first job in middle school? Like, you a friend wanted to buy one from you, and you realized there was money, or what? What led to it? I'd had a pet uh, iguana for a long, long time, and I thought it was a really cool pet. You know, it's one of those things that you nobody know, comes in and remembers that you had a dog, but it was always a thing to talk about. You yeah. know, it's an interesting pet, and they're they're really low maintenance reptiles in general. I mean, the snake eats once a month, poops once a month. It's it's the easiest thing in the world, and it's great around children. It's there's it's a you can't be allergic to a snake. all the so, way around them. Huh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, she's a real hugger, the snake. And yeah. so I uh, I don't know. I always just enjoyed it. I thought in the same way that you like a fish, right? That it's, you know, it's something interesting to look at. And, uh, you know, it, when it's nice, I'll let her outside. She'll crawl around in the backyard for a couple of hours. Can she get uh, away from you? They don't move all that fast. I mean, they she could move fast enough for a brisk walk to catch her, I suppose. But it's... Uh, it's very easy to keep an eye on her and she just sticks around. So it's a, did you, it's a good thing. Did you ever mess with any like venomous reptiles? No, I didn't. I, uh, I got a permit to get an alligator uh, several years ago, but I was, I was renting a warehouse that I then stopped renting. That's where it was going to live. And so Do I it. Yeah. But my eight year old desperately wants uh, an alligator next. Uh, if we uh, almost got a bunch eight year old would be so cool with one arm. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and faster in a race car, as it turns out. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> um, we almost got an alligator um, um, lagoon at one point. That pond that I often would blow oh, shit yeah. up in my videos. We were going to turn that into a gator pond. Because uh, one of the things you can do what when you've got poultry, idea. It, 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 made, it made a lot of sense because one of the things you can do when you have poultry yeah. houses, because so many chickens die every day, um, yeah. you have to do something with them. People either burn them, they incinerate them, they bury them, which is really easy to do, but the environmental agencies really don't like that. Or you could feed them to gators. You could just get yourself a, a bunch of gators and they could eat like huge amounts of chicken every day. And so there was a point when the I think the environmental people were were restricting the way that you could bury them. And Dad was like, maybe we'll just, you know, so and so's got alligators. He's got like thirty alligators, and they just eat all the dead chickens. This, can- this actually <sighs> seems like a practical good idea. I was ready to make fun of it, but this, no, that, that totally makes sense. <laughs> you like, can't put holes in that. <laughs> yeah, and the alligators are going to be well behaved because they're reptiles. If they know I just hang out in this pond and they throw chickens at me, it's not going to go looking for shit or attack. You don't people. rock that boat. Yeah. Yep. Is there any way to keep the alligator population in check? Like, do you need giant pythons or spider no. monkeys? What what eats alligators? You, you uh, guns. Yeah, yeah. You just shoot the ones that got too big, or you uh, sell that to another. To an, well, actually, you probably mm. just I eat the eggs. That solves the whole problem. Mm-hmm. See, yes. see, that's the thing about alligators. I use every part. Okay. <laughs> um, I feed them chicken so that true. I'm that I'm getting for free <laughs> because they're dead, and I eat their eggs. So it, it all comes full circle. Mm-hmm. Incredible high protein in gator eggs. <laughs> Guy's got like 250,000 chickens and he's eating the alligator eggs. <laughs> it's just 10 just grams eating. of protein per egg. <laughs> just boiling, Precious. just leathery eggs. <laughs> oh. Yeah, they're not hard. No, they're not that's... hard. They're not good. <laughs> you just slice them open and scramble them up. That's it. Have you Have ever you had, had any other egg? kind of egg? I haven't. I was going to add. I've seen the videos online of the ostrich egg, and that entices me. It sure. turns me off, and I don't know why. Like, like, we've been taught that, yeah, cheese is fine. They just take milk and, like, like separate the fat from the whey or whatever. They make fucking, okay, that's not gross then. Yeah, it's fine. Right. It comes out of that dirty monster over there's titties, and then we process it. Yeah, it's cheese. It's okay. Delicious. But then, like, the idea of eating, <laughs> like, some other dry. kind of an egg, or even different kinds of milk. But, well, like You're crazy. I'll drink raccoon milk. I don't care. You drink raccoon milk. If it had good macros. <laughs> Can you milk a raccoon? If it made me, <laughs> if it made me a, a bandit of the night. Like, Taylor, <laughs> can, Taylor, can you milk a raccoon? If it'll, if it'll let you, probably. You absolutely can. It's a mammal. So you're saying that anything with nipples you can milk? In yes. the meat, the fuckers. As long sense. as it's female. Yeah. Don't you don't I, throw me for the... <laughs> I, and, saw and yeah. I, I know what's going on. It's great. <laughs> good movie. It's a good movie. That's a good movie. Can you milk me? I have nipples. <laughs> I have nipples, Greg. Could you milk me? <laughs> I mean, I, yeah, no, I'm I trying to think. Kind of... I mean, goat milk is reasonably prevalent. Uh, yeah, like certainly made it. Yeah, of course. Uh, mm-hmm. So, But, you know, you never have... 
the goat oh, cheese God. is blue cheese. Goat cheese is not, you know, well kept cheese. It's it's growing stuff in it. So yeah, it, which is the a best little bit goat, alarming. I don't think my favorite cheese is uh, great. cow cheese is better. It's got that like sort of tart, soury taste. Um, I had an appetizer acrid? once at a nice restaurant that was deep fried goat cheese balls with some sort of sauce you did them in. They were fantastic. Oh, yes. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Like Deep I, fried I, cheese, great track record. Like, I mean, it's hard to go wrong with that, yeah. I suppose. But, mm. but yeah, like, like, I don't want any other kind of milk. Like, like I, I think Woody and I have transitioned away from mammal milks anyway. I, like, I used to think of oat milk and cashew milk and all that shit is like frou frou, like nonsense. But, yeah. dude, it's like no calories and it's 80. It tastes so good. Mine's vanilla flavored. Doesn't it's not as <laughs> substance. Like, I don't drink milk very often, but when I do have milk, like whole milk or whatever i'm always like damn i forgot how like this is like drinking a meal almost like you have yes. a glass of this and it's 230 yeah. calories and it's protein and fat and I, I like during it. a cut like instead of a meal i'll have like a half a glass of milk and it, it's more filling like it is. i don't know a watermelon jello those things don't cure hunger yet somehow milk does yeah well because milk gets in your stomach and then congeals into a solid yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's filling you up a little bit but what i actually it. drink is i think it's cashew milk if not it's almond but it's one of those yeah a cashew milk is my favorite uh it is the lowest in calories as well it's a wealthy man's beverage cashew milk that's the rich it's, uh, it's, the it's cream three dollars and 50 cents for half a gallon as i said so seven dollars a gallon uh and uh i use it a lot because like i it's it's it replaces all the milk and everything that i i, I eat a lot of cereal too i love cereal so it, like cereal is surprisingly like low in calories so um did your mom get you cereal as a kid and is that why you kind of like it <sighs> my mom we would eat cereal for breakfast a lot um um but it was never the really tasty cereals that i wanted so now as an adult i'll often get like the date almond like pecan nut cheery nut like cereal that's like full of grains and stuff and then it, it looks more like granola than anything else because that's what i always wanted i like banana nut uh bread cereal you had that banana it's like banana nut bread but it's cereal with like it's those like freeze-dried banana slices in it yeah and it's got like little bits of nougat or not nougat but uh granola or some shit in there <laughs> i do so like that freeze-dried good. banana it's like uh it's like remember when in class when you had uh space food space ice cream oh, yeah and it was like freeze-dried yeah and that class, was like not the last year day of fourth grade you guys you, you didn't have that where, last like, year i had some every time i go to somewhere where they sell it i get some it's actually fucking tasty the, what are we talking about the, i'm lost freeze-dried Neo- astronaut food yeah <laughs> the the neapolitan blocks of freeze-dried ice cream that you get at like i always give them <laughs> at the aquarium or at like uh the science museum if i go one of, to one of those places they in the gift shop they sell them there for kids and i'm like i'll take three <laughs> yeah, I'll take three for my kids in the parking lot. Nice to have an adult budget for stupid things. That's it. See, that is so that shit rocks. Where like I'll be like, I want to buy something beyond retarded, like a hundred dollar Lord of the Rings board game, and I'm like that. I'm doing it. Oh like, that's so I stupid. Can. Like I can do that. I'm a grown up, and I can make bad decisions all goddamn day. Like oh, with, yeah. with stupid not Kyle. Please put that out, man. <laughs> Wait, I'm telling, dude. When you shined it on the on the wall behind you earlier, a small yeah. blue dot. You can see in the replay of this show. Oh, you can wow. see it. You can wow. see it. It was here on your face. It was. Right <laughs> that, means, like, yeah. that means it's bouncing off of paint, <laughs> off, then off of my uh, monitor, and then onto me. Yeah, it's it's yeah. wildly. It powerful. also means I, that's going to fry your monitor. I, I know this. It gives me headaches when I look at it. Um, I sent these guys a video the other day. There was a wasp that flew into my room, and I just went, "Fuck you!" <laughs> and he just drops after a second and a half, two seconds of like holding it on him from distance, and he dropped out of the fucking off mm-hmm. the wall. If you told me as a it's child that crazy. when I turned fifty, I'd get a lifesaver, I would really look forward to that moment. Now I have oh, one. Yeah. Now you kind of. I wish that we were getting paid for them. I, I feel like this. It, whenever we go on about our lasers, it feels a little <laughs> bit like a like one of those like like product integrations where they're trying yeah. not to act like they're paid for. We're not. We really need an Amazon link, like a referral. You link do or need something. a referral link. <laughs> lasers. That's I want to step yeah. up to a better laser. Like this thing is the coolest laser you can get for sixty dollars. That's a, really a, a gateway let's, laser. Though. So let's we sell ways to get high. Dick pills and dangerous lasers. <laughs> I'm getting goggles before I go any more powerful. Like, I really feel like I need eyewear. I, I have a little bit of. 
of a, like a contact headache, like just from what I oh, just did. Oh, for there. sure. So By the time I've killed a few enemies, <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> would I know if I, you know how everyone has a blind spot, right? And your doctor always finds it. And they're like, oh, here's your blind spot. It's like, wow, I existed through life not knowing I had a blind spot. Mm -hmm. Yet there it is. I can't see. Do I have two or three more and just haven't noticed? Is that a thing? Everyone has one? Bring your, right, right? bring your hand laterally back behind your face, facing forward. And before your periphery gives out, there will be a place where you can't see your hand anymore. And that's on, your blind spot. On both sides? On on both sides, you should. They tested. Okay. I, I'm an eye doctor expert. I get made fun of when I go in there. I can see they say, right. wow, get a load of this. Yeah. They trip me. They, 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 <laughs> they trip me and they bully me. <laughs> Taylor goes in. There's Can immediately a receptionist that? on all fours and they push him over. Her. Right this way, Taylor. They like stick their foot out and hit me on the back of the head. <laughs> so I fall over their foot. As soon as he walks in, they wow, take watch, his watch you step there, dumbass. <laughs> and then he has to deal with it. All right, what vision. we need you to do now oh. is sit very still and we're going to blow a bunch of air in your eye randomly. Thanks for that. Yeah. Thanks. Oh, I. Yeah, I did sensation. a thing where they blow the the air in your eye. Um, mm -hmm. What does that do Welcome. again? Well, this tests Welcome how easily it. you're agitated. <laughs> 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 Nothing. I just like doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get revenge on my eye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fuck you, dude. Yeah. We haven't found a use for it yet, but somebody bet me a hundred dollars, then we just kept it as part of the routine because it seemed so serious. I think I did that a test like that whenever they. Um, the, one of the one of the fun times is when they went to take the stitches out of my eyelid, and uh, she's like fishing around in there trying to get them all out. She's got my head locked in that goddamn vice, and I'm being very polite about the whole thing. Oh man, every step of that was just like something out of fucking Hellraiser. Oh, <laughs> I hope I hope my eyelid cancer doesn't come back. Eyelid cancer? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what they say about cancer: one and done. I had um, I had like this <laughs> this tiny little growth like on the tip of my eyelid where the eyelashes are, oh and like it looked like a tiny mole and it kept getting bigger and bigger and I and uh, they I had to go get it cut off and they're like don't worry I've, this is not cancer and it was very painful to get it cut <laughs> off um, was because because what they um, yeah, it, it hurt a lot what? and uh, it, they have to they have to anesthetize your eyelid so they just stab you in the eyelid with a the syringe and it, it it hurts so much anyway it turned out it was cancer so they're like oh so now we've got to go in and take like a pizza pie slice out of your eyelid and then sew that back together once all the cancer's mm -hmm. gone but to do that we've got to like cut you here to get the slack so they made like a they they remade the corner of my eye um so they like cut me yeah. from here all the way back to over here and like pulled everything together and i'm conscious for all of this watching them do it with my good eye while my eyelid is either is in various states of being rolled up inside out or or like pincered or just being cut in half it's uh it was a real goddamn ordeal with a local anesthetic and a Were couple you, Valium, I'd hope. Goodness gracious. One Valium, and I don't even, I, dude. I, I smoke a lot. Like I, I don't. Valium is like, did I did I take it or didn't I? It's like an antihistamine. Does Valium <gasps> not not affect you if you smoke weed? Dude, I didn't. I didn't even notice that. That I was like this. This little tiny. It, it's also a, a small pill. Oh, okay. I There's no I way a pill that small can. I've never had I, that. I don't. This is, mine wasn't Valium. They called it something else. It was a very small pill in form factor, and they told me that Xanax. it would that it would work, and. Uh, <laughs> It did. Like I, I do this thing with every anesthesiologist. I try to convince them that it's not doing anything, so I can get more. This, this is my drug, drug seeking, seeking behavior. Thing, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, it, are you feeling it? No. I, are you sure you? It wasn't it like a Motrin or something that feeling seems to be what? doing nothing. I could not fake it or convince anybody. <laughs> like, is it working? No. <laughs> then, oh that's what i was gonna work. say earlier about, is what um, we're eating <laughs> yeah pretty much <laughs> about, like driving with one eye because i had an eye patch for a little mm -hmm. while a few days but it's on the left eye so when you're driving i walked out of that place and they're like you're not driving home are you i'm like nope got i'm meeting the uber out there i want to go smoke by the car though and they're like okay well we mm -hmm. need to wheel you out i'm like you do you so they wheel me to the door and like i get wheel up you? <laughs> yeah yeah i i was just like 
anesthetized and uh, oh they did give me something i remember being loopy what do they give yeah. me hopefully a red pill. i don't know a tiny <laughs> pill that really works no they give me something all right now I, do, I remember being loopy now and coming out of it anyway i walked out of there and they like watch me walk to my car and i'm like kind of waving at them and as soon as they turn around i get in the car and i'm fucking gone yeah <laughs> my fucking <laughs> eye patch oh no dude that I've was got cool that eye looking patch. you have i wish you, i wish though. you would have kept yeah. that look the eye patch yeah there's something yeah, about it back. that says respect. At least on Tuesdays, man. I mean, you it know. says mistakes mm-hmm. have consequences. Actions <laughs> have consequences. That's what that's what eye patches say. <laughs> Except <laughs> in your in your stance, it actually doesn't. You just randomly yeah, it, got an eye it, thing. Yeah, and it you know I wore sunglasses like my whole life, so it wasn't from sun exposure. I wore sunscreen my whole life, so it's not that. It's just randomly got fucking cancer Sometimes on my eye. Sometimes genetics just fucks you over. I want to tell you about the police activity video I saw because yes, it's like. It's a little confusing about about exactly what's happening, but there's a cop in a field and they've got a woman on the ground. She's in trouble. Um, She's under arrest, kind of. And there's two EMS guys, EMTs or whatever you call them. They're there as well. And they've got hands on the woman kind of helping the cop because he's getting he's losing control of the situation. He's got his gun out. And there's a a trailer, like a house trailer, a Wings of Redemption style domicile right back behind them. And out of nowhere, while the cop is like talking to the lady who's on the ground, he starts shooting. Bang, 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 bang at the trailer. Get, get me your hands, show me your hands, come out, come out. He's screaming orders and the EMTs are, are, are trying to get low because he's shooting right over them. The lady is freaked out and he's crazed. He's shooting at people we can't see. What had happened was someone back at the trailer moved or something. He lost his shit and starts unloading back there. So... A few seconds go by of him like being crazy in the fucking field and like wildly pointing the gun everywhere one handed. And he starts going, "Ah, ah, 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 ah," and he has a full on meltdown. He has a he starts crying and wailing. He starts "Ah, ah, ah, ah," and he's still got the gun. He's like, "Ah," and the EMT is like terrified. (laughs) He's like, the EMT is give me your gun. Give me the gun. And he's like pulling the gun out of the cop's hand and the cop won't let it go. Give me the gun. Give me the gun. And he takes the cop's gun away and the cop continues to wail. And <laughs> he sounds like the fucking principal that was nailing Forrest Gump's mom. He's just- <laughs> <laughs> what a fantastic <laughs> reference. <laughs> he's lost. As he's but, sitting but, on the porch just distra- listening. But, like that, but just loves education. Like having a full she on weird, uh, weird panic attack. <laughs> And uh, and finally, he's like, I'm good now. Can I, give me my gun. Give me my gun. Because he's embarrassed because they've taken his gun. And like new cops show up and everybody is so confused about this guy having a goddamn meltdown. And the EMT's like, it's OK, man. It, uh, it's a real stressful situation out here. It's a, don't even worry about it. There's no one it's else like, reacted like that. Don't even worry I about was, it. I'm going to hold on to this, though. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I, When they gave him the gun back, I was I, first of all, I'd never seen a cop give up his gun. That's got to be like day one training. Did Don't he look, look like a noob cop? Like a, like a it's young from kid? his point of view. You know, oh, he's got okay. the body you cam on. Tell. But but he had a full on goddamn meltdown over nothing. He he started shooting at like mystery people who were just watching an arrest happen. You know what I mean? It's like somebody's getting arrested and people are like, oh, what's going on over there? So he's, he's blasted at them and then had a panic attack where they had to disarm him. And there's no, I bet he's still a cop. We should probably have higher standards for these people. Well, then that's juxtaposed with that that hero cop in Tennessee that looks like fucking Schwarzenegger or that square-headed white dude who, like, stormed through the elementary school and killed that uh, that shooter with an you AR. Do, Every, get guys talking that about guy. that guy, and, and he deserves the praise that he, he got there, right? He was yeah. fearless. But I can't get over the fact that he passed, like, five or six other cops on the way to the active shooter. The other cops were like, he's down there, he's down there. What's slowing you down? How long right. have you been here? What are you, you Valde cops? Like, I you, didn't understand. Like, were there like regular cops who were going in and like holding positions? And then, like, the was he like an elite cop or was that just a regular cop who had a better gun than everybody else? And better gun, he had a better attitude. Like, it, yeah. it, well, but he, he had the better gun. Like, well, yeah, but he found the guy looking out the window and shot him in the back. I, I could have used a fucking knife in that situation you don't want to miss i'm I'm exaggerating but yeah like shotgun would have been fine ar-15 would have been fine a pistol would have been fine it just took a guy with a a long gun for my school shooting defense (laughs) me Mm -hmm. too me too but but 
I really, not. what distinguished Cross him from the other police, out of style. That what distinguished him from the other policemen was that he approached the shooter. Everyone yeah, else was waiting was, around uh, the corner. I'll yeah, tell he you, was aggressive so, uh, and he was pushing it. I did a lot of uh, charity work with a charity called the Cannonball Memorial Run, and it's uh, uh, put together by some cops out of San Bernardino County in California. And we would do a road trip across the country, and we'd stop at precincts that had lost officers in the line of duty in the last year, mm-hmm. take the patches from their uniforms to D.C. And it was an a amazing trip because you hear these crazy stories. But the, the craziest part is when you'd stop at some of these you know, very small towns, they might only have four or five cops that work there and like they don't have ammunition to practice. And so there are a lot of parts of our country that are not remotely adequately protected by police. Mm -hmm. And particularly when you consider the nature of Americans that live in these areas, Uh, the, the civilians are considerably better armed than the officers are. And in many cases, far better trained and Mm -hmm. experienced. And so these are, these are young guys with low qualification jobs at times. And so, you know, I can imagine it might have taken somebody that came from far, a little further away that had, that wasn't wildly overwhelmed by a circumstance like that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I see, but that's like a table. nice, measured, nuanced point, which is not what I'm looking for. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> that makes yeah. a ton of sense. And uh, no, we need to put a hundred people in a room. Only yeah. one of them's going to be a cop. The rest have to yeah. be dealt with. Yeah, no, I, get I want. Yeah, I want Judge Dredd, uh, like like police officers, who just dispense justice on the streets. Although that is kind of what they did, you know, when they when they they just walked in there and executed that person, and I, cop number two shows up and is like. Stop! He goes bang, bang, bang with the pistol, like shoots the person three more times, and then he goes, "Stop moving!" <laughs> Dude, I believe that the body was moving as a result of being <laughs> shot, and so in the moment he was probably like, "Stop moving exactly where I fucking just shot you!" Yeah, yeah. Like, stop bouncing up and down all little, dead, right like. by that bullet hole. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Taylor and I were talking about it. It was like the scene in RoboCop where the fucking. <laughs> A fucking giant like mech suit like guns the guy down with double cannons in the boardroom <laughs> like like the guy's just fucking trembling with fucking bullet shots. Yeah, that was, was that was terrible. That guy's a hero cop. He should get a raise and a newer, nicer gun. That's the way we should reward cops. The ones who use their guns the best, they get better this guns. Is just like Call of Duty. Like like he's going to earn a like kill streak. If he yep. kills three more school shooters, he'll get like a, a, a fucking Predator missile. Well, let's not he's- set it ridiculous. You kill one school shooter, you get a crazy big raise. Boom. Now this problem of, of cops not running in, not an issue. When they see Officer fucking Hero driving around in his new Lambo, because now mm. he's making three hundred grand a year because he killed a school shooter. That would be fun if you kill a school shooter, you get like hundred and fifty thousand bonus. They'll all be rushing to the shooter. Yeah, oh, yeah. Or at least I'd like a having, supermarket sweep. You know, like, all right, that one was a my, teacher, but what's he worth? I'd be having like, my what? kids bully people all day, every day. Like, like, no, you got to push him, son. You got to push him. <laughs> just trying to create lunatics out there. You let him know. Money. There's no other way, son. You let him know. <laughs> If you put that on any know, local ballot, get better. you said yeah, <laughs> half a percent of sales tax, and it's the bounty for school shooters. Nobody votes that down. That that Ooh, passes. Well. It's a genius <laughs> idea. I, it it's a good idea. They would do that in Texas because that, that's their <laughs> answer for so many things. Now nah, Texas is an embarrassing state. Them. They're not even up with Missouri. Now, when Dude, they kill a high-value target in the military, isn't it like a thing that everybody in the unit shoots them afterward? Like if they like when they got Bin Laden, didn't everybody put a bullet in them that was there? Like I don't think so. I choose to believe it's true. I don't know. I mean, as we all know, Bin Laden is living happily in Argentina. But I heard that I heard the guy that shot Bin Laden on a podcast, and he and he he did he must have if they did that he skipped over that. But he told like the story like beat for beat about how he killed Osama Bin Laden. So that was pretty neat. Um, I would be I wouldn't want to be the publicly that guy. That seems like a dangerous thing. But you know they scooped him up and buried him at sea. Right. Right. But yeah. I didn't know if that was a school shooter thing too. Like if I was, a, you know, second or third into the room, I'd probably make sure, you know. Yeah. Just to I think it's a school, double check. I think it's I think Triple it's a police tap. shooting thing. Um I I it seems like sometimes everybody will just light the guy up and so it's almost like you have Fire to charge range style. You have to charge like 13 officers if this was a bad shoot. And it's like are you going to fire two whole police departments and four um sheriff's mm-hmm. deputies? 
and you're going to go after that federal guy or who was here and the state guy who just happened to like there's so much law enforcement at like anything if there's a call and there's a thing to do they all just show up it's like that that meme about them eating donuts is kind of bullshit but if there's a call it just seems like they just keep coming it's like flies to shit and there'll be eight cops for nothing hey what's yeah. going on like y'all couldn't y'all have radios y'all couldn't have squared this yeah. out like over the over the you wire can't beat the cops infinite respawns <laughs> like vanguard deploy yeah vanguard yeah. deploy <laughs> so yeah. keep going. nothing you can nothing you can do they just keep showing up i saw that thing the other day where the the kids were trying to run into their own house and the atf officer Ooh. uh like like saw him going in or whatever and was like yeah have your children come back outside i want a word with them she's Jesus. like why he's like it's a traffic violation a traffic violation yes jaywalking in this neighborhood well they look like they might have weapons i need to talk to your children i'm atf and ATF. The of, he should be murdering innocent people at a compound. Aren't shouldn't you be shooting a dog somewhere? And so <laughs> there's like the ends up being like five. He should be manufacturing dogs. claims of child abuse to firebomb a, a compound. That's what he should be doing. Is has the ATF ever done something like nice, like good? I have nothing bad to say about them. <laughs> I take it you just watched the annual Blink Waco documentary trouble. series, Taylor. No, no, I haven't no. seen it yet. But no, is I, it good? It's the same as all of them. The same as all. Do you think yeah, Waco was actually like those people were doing nothing wrong? They were cool. I think that like uh, they were weirdos, but there was no excuse to like murder Wendigo all of them. Said, Wendigoon said he looked into the conspiracy about there being child molestation and found no evidence of that, no real evidence of it. Yeah. And that's a common critique of it is that it was manufactured to back our friend Wendigoon it. does like conspiracy theories and like um, deep dives on things. Um, so and he researched it pretty thoroughly. And I, trust I remember him entirely. I do. I remember as a kid with my life, I remember as a kid, I saw this little pamphlet that they s said was supposedly in the compound and it sort of like normalized adult and child sexual relationships. But apparently that's been debunked since. I think that was just some government shit that they printed out to excuse themselves for burning all those children alive. Yeah. Yeah. It was, I think uh, there were some people government. that survived it that were, you know, married to him underage. Uh, I believe well, that's still I, legal. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and they had, <laughs> a, uh, that's well, they, and, and they definitely had some illegal firearms. Oh, well, I, I'm, uh, yeah, they definitely I'm glad had we illegal killed them firearms. All, <laughs> like, <laughs> they needed them. Clearly, but they were just kind of being weird, doing their own. They, they were just praying to Zulu or whatever the fuck. Oh, you know, no, he was just it. claiming to be Jesus. Just he claiming was. to be Jesus. Who has Wrong. it? Who among us has it stolen valor from Christ himself? Prove he wasn't uh, Christ. guilty as charged. Yeah, prove he wasn't Jesus. One but... of the wildest things that I've seen <laughs> that it looks like something out of a movie is when that FBI agent is up on like the roof of the house and then bullets start machine gun fire starts coming through the wall um, of the second floor room and it's top, 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 top. You see the bullet holes coming through the wall and he rolls off the whole fucking roof, falls a floor to the ground. I think he had an MP5. Crazy, crazy machine gun fight. But yeah, they needed some fucking illegal weapons because when the ATF showed up, they had a tank. <laughs> mm. <laughs> and they a wrecked tank. them. They killed yeah, them and they, they burned them to death. And then you can see the photos still of the ATF agents like standing there like proudly with their guns with like the burned to death remains of like a 14 year old behind them. Like despicable. A win's a win. <laughs> the ATF. What have they done? What are the nice things they do? Have they saved us from from danger? I think they were key. They nearly Boston caught bombing. that jaywalker, and you look unappreciative. Yeah. I think the ATF was pretty key in like like fixing that Boston bombing thing. Them and Reddit, they they coupled <laughs> together and they found the Boston bombers and they dispensed justice on the streets. That was one of the wildest things right. um, ever. Like like they just locked that city down. Martial law in Boston. Get the fuck back in your house. We're out here doing shit. I was like, okay, yes, sir, Mister Mister Policeman Officer Army. Are you army? Shit. <laughs> <laughs> that was crazy. They hunted that Zarnaev Zarni guy yeah. down. Didn't they? Is he the guy that was hiding in the boat that they saw with infrared? Yeah. Yep. They fucked him up. No, no. He's They caught him. They, yeah. and they wounded him, caught him. He ran, He actually killed his own brother. Yeah, That's his brother died. That part. He ran him over after the brother was wounded in the street in an SUV. And like, like, like that, that was the killing blow to his brother. Um, he was the one that they were like, he's too cute to kill he had like this huge following of girls i remember that it was thought it was dreamy 
the guy who made pressure cooker bombs and crippled all those people. Yeah, at it's like America. this guy. This guy's cute. The guy who blew off innocent people's legs who were trying to like run for charity or some shit. I need to see yeah. this guy. Cute. Actually, wait. The, the Boston Marathon is the real I mean, one, right? Where, where it matters. What? Pardon? I, They're all I, the I same. Like, no, no, no. I mean, like, no. I'm pretty sure the Boston Marathon's like the. It's longer. No, no, no. I mean, like, the, like twenty-six point three like, miles. A, a big one. Maybe I'm yeah, it is an important like it's a well attended one. This guy is well undeniably one. cute. And you're oh, really? Here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Dreamboat. Is up. he dead? Did we did was he killed yet? Oh, the it happened time. in uh, Boston. So Massachusetts probably not. He's probably in jail. Yeah, probably. I don't remember. I, I thought they He's probably uh, the playing Xbox. In... Uh I don't remember. Not that, really. I remember that 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 time though, how crazy that was, because like I was super obsessed with it. Me and Chiz, I think, were because we were listening to the police scanners, uh, like online, you could tune into them, and like listening to the cops coordinate and like fence them in. That it was crazy. You didn't know what they were up to. Like you couldn't tell. It turned out it was just knuckleheads being pieces of shit. But it wasn't that long after nine eleven. It was still nine eleven. Still kind of fresh in our memory a decade. Cute, like, That's right? not him. That's not him. Hey, it's what I can see him. <laughs> Get out of here. I mean, this is eyes. obviously a Photoshop. <laughs> I he oh, didn't yeah. make the no, Taylor. no Taylor. That's that's his prison body. <laughs> He's looking good. His head's not quite proportional, but looking good. Yeah. Oh, uh, you're gonna throw stones there, Taylor? Yeah. He's got one of those what we call a Photoshop head, where it just kind of <laughs> looks uh, dis- disjointed from the neck. It gets a little fluffy around here. Mm. Chicks dig it though. <laughs> they love it. They said he was it. cute. Man. Yeah, I, I want to. I, I just want to say I still don't think the wings fight is going to happen. Like, like I don't want to dwell on that whole thing and like, like do a whole do it as a topic. But I just think I don't think it's going to happen. That's my current position, is that it, it won't happen. We, Woody and I were like talking about it a little bit today, and I was like, wait a minute, nah, there's no way he's flying to fucking London. Yeah. You know? Catch Ed up. So he knows the sorry, wings fan. fight. Yeah, yeah my my, my apologies. There's there's an associate of ours named Wings of Redemption. He's a big fat obese man who's so notorious on the internet. We've known him for a decade or so, and uh, you know how they do these YouTube boxing promotions. Um, well, the idea was that he was going to fight another big old obese YouTuber. They're and, both uh, around four hundred. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And so you know these, and and so a lot of us are kind of fired up about it because it's somebody. It's two guys we kind of know. Um, who would be fighting in a pay per view? That'd be neat, and they're mm-hmm. obese because it's a so it's a freak fight. It's silly, um, but I just don't think it's ever going to happen. I just don't. I can't see it actually happening. Them flying to London, them getting in the ring shirtless. Like, there's no way that we could. We're this lucky. We don't live in a reality that's that cool. <laughs> that's Wings, the guy on the left about. is uh, <laughs> he's a bit of a, a recluse. <laughs> like he, he doesn't go outside very much. He doesn't. He feels uncomfortable when he leaves his hometown. But he's always around. The fuck is this photo, dude? <laughs> the <laughs> idea what that, is this? <laughs> the idea that it's he so <laughs> gets into a plane, flies to Europe, takes his shirt off, and engages in a fist fight is pretty outside his comfort zone. So we'll see. What type of content does he make on YouTube? He plays video games on okay. YouTube, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Well, he was he's bullied off of YouTube. It's kind I of like anger him. content. Wait, is he on... He blew it off of Twitch. Am I wrong? Is he? I haven't seen him make a YouTube video in like years. Where does he stream? Years. No, no, he streams um, on YouTube. He doesn't make videos, right? Yeah, he streams over there because because you know he got bullied off of Twitch. Yeah, I thought he got banned off of Twitch. Now, well, what's the difference? Well, no, because when he got banned that first time, it was because a bunch of people made shit up about him, right? And then lied about the report button, and it was. They if I recall, he shouldn't have gotten him. banned from Twitch. Like it was people false flagging him, right? That's how I remember it too, and I'm not sure. I might be wrong. Maybe I'm giving him uh, more more credit. He's also just said so many tremendously silly things. Dude, it's funny. Like every time he comes up, my instinct because I feel so bad for him and his life is to be like, "It's okay." Like maybe this happened, and then like a clip will come up of him talking about me, and I'll be like, "Fuck Marka, fuck that dumbass (laughs) douchebag." It's like same, same, bro. Like every time I hear wings, I want to defend him. I want to help him. I want to whatever. He's done shit to me. You know, he's done yeah. some- Mitty <laughs> has a soundboard of him saying mean things about me that he plays. Whenever <laughs> I start, he'll, he'll be like, I don't give a fuck if Kyle's got cancer. <laughs> <laughs> he'll be like, Kyle's a fucking felon. Don't believe him. <laughs> <laughs> That's a Do good you know, soundboard. You know funny? I, had, I, had someone, I had someone send me a, a link to a, a clip, I guess, from maybe a month or so. I don't know. But it was of Blade, and someone only used me Blade. Uh, 
profoundly alcoholic man who, who drinks more than most people we uh, a oh. lot and i got linked to a clip and like i have nothing i have no relationship with him at all okay. at all you and like there was a clip about like yeah met him and said hello like that was we, we really didn't chat that much it was most I, I was a i was a nothing in 2011 in boston when we showed up i was this fucking you know young kid and like you guys were the real ones like chatting and all that kind of stuff but like they sent someone sent me a link and they were like hey someone asked about pka talking about wing or uh blade and he responded to it and of course he's fucking wasted his shit and he's like pka yeah woody and kyle they're always saying nice things about me but taylor that guy's a weirdo and i was like (laughs) We don't even know each other. Like <laughs> I'm a weirdo. Like uh, I, I don't think that's fair, friend. He's like he he smoked weed in 2011 and walked into a closet. And it's like, yeah, I was fucked up, and I walked into a room <laughs> thinking I thought it was the bathroom, and it wasn't. And then I went, oh man, I'm fucked up, and I left, and then then found the bathroom. It's like I don't think that makes me a strange weirdo. No, no, there are other things that a, make you a strange weirdo. There's a lot of things why. that make me a strange weirdo. I was hoping you wouldn't uh, <laughs> <laughs> on that. But no, I, I, I'm, I'm so hurt by that. I'm unbelievably hurt. Hmm. I, it, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm just really pleased guy. he's never heard any of the bad things we've said about him. Because I always preface when I talk about he him. He has. He doesn't like, remember. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Yeah. I always, I start by saying, I like the guy that the only use me blade used to be, and then I finish by saying the guy he is now is a real wreck. Yeah, um, because that's kind of the deal. He's 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 real in real rough shape medically. He looks like he's gonna die yeah. soon. He just, Not to mention ethically. You remember that time that he molested that girl borderline in the back of that uh, RV van when he went back there and grabbed her all up. Remember in that? fairness, she barely remembers. Remember that. that? No, she claimed she claimed it, and we all saw it on video. <laughs> remember that? Do y'all remember that? Do you remember I, when he uh, when he when he broke that was girl unclear. laying in the bed? Man, I think that's kind of weird behavior, don't you? I think that's a little but weird. I, don't, I would say I, it's almost legally troubling. <laughs> I don't think we this need to be like... why he doesn't like you. <laughs> <laughs> Get fucked. <laughs> you know, Call the ATF on him. Yeah, mm. I don't... Thank God those guys don't have weapons on that fucking RV that they all seem to live on. Um, no, I, I still like some of the content. It's a little sad, but I, you'll Ooh, see... Yeah. Dude, they spray painted his face to look like that that Pepe the Frog, and he and he <laughs> thought it was like I don't know art paint, but it was like just fucking Krylon. <laughs> like, like, <Yeah. laughs> but they paint bombed him one time. They like took a paint can and like you know how you like pop a beer and like shock on it. Yeah, like they did that to a can of spray paint and stuck it in his face and just <laughs> like instantly <laughs> painted it because he's a he's passed out drunk. So he's like. You know, easy to do that sort of thing too. It's, yeah, it's a pretty, it's a pretty depressing life. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, that's a good picture, Zach. That's, it's kind he of, didn't know that they were doing that to him. Yeah, he was. You know, like, you know what's funny is that's the best picture of him in the past twelve years. <laughs> it, <laughs> that's the most flattering photo. <laughs> this he should be the stand. And if Wings or Boogie don't show up for the fight, you're put some so gloves right. on that man. Yeah, he should be, dude. He died on the fight way, promotion yeah, like business. He, All right, let me ask he's you. Too this. Sick. What would it take for us to legally put on a boxing match or a little gumption, a little stick to itiveness? Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't make character do that, traits, Mark. you cunt. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I gotta pull myself up by my own bootstraps. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a guy. It, it sounds like something kind of you can do on a quiet we afternoon. We'll get Ed involved. He'll give us credibility. <laughs> All right, we'll let Ed well, talk you, to the well, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Accountability Ooh. and the liability. <laughs> it's time. Yeah, and Kyle, you can be that guy. I can be the 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 announcer guy. Yeah, I think you like, do a good job. Don't oh, you? I would. Oh, I would absolutely do a good job. Ed would be. Too. You, you probably know, need some more legitimate sponsors than your uh, normal crop. Uh, more than cum pills wow wow drugs you order online <laughs> wow that's not up to snuff for old ed <laughs> my man sponsored by fucking toyota and shit yeah. you don't have do, do you guys not... wear bong makers <laughs> yeah but you don't you're not sponsored by the bong that you put in the fucking freezer <laughs> and it does work. i love freezer bong it's great it's a good I bong got them right here. <laughs> it's a freeze pipe 
It's a here's the button. here's the little one, which uh, by the way, not a sex toy in spite of no free promotion. Also, don't Anything buy this until they sponsor enough. us again. <laughs> yeah, don't buy I want to I want to see your, I want to see your deck. I want to see how this happens. Like what what solicitation <laughs> re- results in the, <laughs> the tiled images on the top of this screen? You might like, overestimate. I, do, how hard do you know how the death by the death by gummy ones worked? Is they reached out to me and were like, "We're getting a lot of success with this product," and your guys' market is exactly our market. And I was like, okay, I'm not saying shit about yes or no until you send me Kyle and Woody samples so we make sure we're not like promoting weak like lies about... Because uh, if it's if they claim 100 milligrams and it was actually like a 10 milligram hit, we don't want to promote that, obviously, because that's a fucking lie. And so then we got it shipped to us and we all took it and we all got blasted out of our minds. And Dude. then the next day I was like, all right, let's do it, bro. Let's do it. <laughs> oh, Please. this is sad. He looks uh, great. What do you no, mean? He, Look how happy no, saying, he is. No, Wait, I'm, saying this, he, he look, I'm saying he looks good there. Like it's sad seeing yeah. where he's gone from a healthy, well, not healthy, a fat, normal, a normal fat to to where he is. Great painted we, face. B- yeah. Based on the previous conversation, my first instinct when seeing him was like, does only use me blade feel pain? <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> is he like a fish or, or, or a reptile? Does he have happiness? I mean, I uh, it's sad to say, but he definitely doesn't have happiness the way he's living right now. The, no no one who he drinks like that is happiness. happy. Taylor, you're a guy with two jobs. You don't have happiness. You wake up and there's something you have to do all the time. Only use me. Blade wakes up. There's something he chooses to do, and that is Jaeger. <laughs> yeah, but it's like... <laughs> So sad. <laughs> like I just like a, now you're just you, being you judgmental. See somebody, if I woke up every day and got blasted every day, would you treat me like this? I hope not. Yes, I'd I'd be so worried <laughs> about my friend. I'd be like, <laughs> Woody, why are you drunk all the time? <laughs> oh, t- Taylor, this is my new lifestyle. I like to wake up and get drunk and play with lasers. Yeah, you know, Woody, I've noticed your 9 a.m. <laughs> Jaeger shots have gotten out of control. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we need to get this. Yeah, fine, it's, fine. I'll sleep in. I mean, he has a hundred percent undoubtedly become a total degenerate piece of shit of a person 100 percent. what else did he but, say about you but you Jesus sound like Christ. the type of person no who no put down Hunter i'm saying Biden. he's a degenerate loser piece of shit but it's still sad like watching his life collapse he's like you cool hope the best be presidential one. child i'm liking how kyle's responding <laughs> <laughs> i feel bad why because you don't feel the- bad for wings i no. You don't feel bad for Boogie? No. No. What's the difference? <laughs> no. I don't know of well, anything. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know. Like, like Blade, see, you know. I, Blade's I, more I, charming. I, he's more charming. I enjoyed his content he, that he used to make he, when he made Call of Duty content back in the day. It was very chill. Um, um, you know, and, and when we when I met him those, those two or three times, I always had a good time with him. I enjoyed drinking with him. I enjoyed partying with him. He like smoked me out a couple times. And he, I just had good experiences with Blade. I have he never raped me in the back of an RV. You know, he didn't do that to me, Taylor. I can okay. tell you, Kyle forgives you for that. Anyway. I, look, look, if 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 I couldn't be friends <laughs> with every Tom, Dick, and Harry who got a little handsy in the back of an RV, none of us, none of you would be allowed here tonight. All right. Especially Ed. Real. Yeah. Well, I'm not I, I'm not a I'm not I'm not accusing Ed of getting handsy no, in an RV. I'm just no. saying that we allow guests that get handsy in RVs. I'm glad oh, you're in arm. such a gust company. Yeah. <laughs> well, but you know, look, we're all <laughs> <laughs> you know, Bam Margera got arrested for yelling in a restaurant yesterday. I mean, is there an eventuality of notoriety based on goofiness that, you know, it it just gets there? Yeah, they could. I mean, Bam Margera is another interesting one because that guy, if you recall, leading up to uh, Jackass 4, whatever the newest Jackass was, like yeah. he was losing his fucking mind on social media. Like, like basically like spouting theories about like Johnny Knoxville is out to get me. He's making sure I can't work on this film. Johnny Knoxville is not who he seems. And it's like, okay, I don't know Johnny, but I know this isn't the case. Like I, I like you're clearly it Johnny like you feel sorry for Bam, yeah. but not for Blade. No, no, I'm not saying I feel I I feel bad that similar to Blade, ah, Bam is in a horrible place. I gotcha. Like I I feel bad that Blade's I in gotcha. that place. But with Bam, like 
he wasn't looking at it accurately. It was not, Johnny Knoxville wasn't trying to keep him out of a project. Johnny Knoxville was saying, unless you can be anything but an active detriment to this project, you're not going to be involved. Like that, Let me ask you this, Taylor. What are you going to do when only Easy Blake comes calling? He wants to do battle in the ring. He wants to do three rounds, three minutes each for, the, for, for, for your seat on the show. That would be so funny. <laughs> that, would, that would be hilarious because i'm not a i'm not a fighter i'm not a brawler or anything but <laughs> but i would i would handily win that you know because i'm not yeah, actively dying think. he's a bigger man i'll tell you this he's taller than you he's, he's heavier big. than you i yeah. stood next to him yeah heavy I mean, in his arms dude yeah huge. you call that standing uh, you cowered next to that man <laughs> <laughs> he's a titan on the internet and he looked like a titan standing next to your frail boyish figure back in those days your smooth boyish face and my pictures. smooth boyish yeah you never seen blade as much i'm live i'm fuckable you. only use me blade has the muscle definition and density of a man twice his age he said that <laughs> 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 Only use me blades That's like good. yeah, it's I know like, that twink Taylor. He's like 38. <laughs> yeah. Dude, if he beats me, he can fuck me. Well, you heard it Ooh. here. Only use me blade. You're being called out three rounds, three minutes per round for Taylor's seat on the show. A hefty, a hefty sum of money. And a dude, I'm not position. fighting that dude. I'm gonna get fucking hepatitis. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You heard it here, folks. He's disgusting. I'm not touching. They called him Runaway Taylor, <laughs> <laughs> coward of the county. <laughs> <laughs> Runaway Tay. <laughs> I, I antagonize and then I flee the <laughs> like that a no be honor a bitch. That just <laughs> snipe and then run away. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor, uh, you could have made eight hundred and seventy-five dollars <laughs> and had a free ticket to Milwaukee. Yeah, you just ruined it. <laughs> free, free antibiotic booster. Like, like that was going to be your cut there. of the pay-per-view. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and the French did Taylor do that? Uh, no, what no, is that? It was. Uh, I'll take him on. I'll rent my own RV and I'll take him on Mad Max style on the highway in his RV. I'll have my own people <laughs> driving next to him. That uh, we could that, set up. That, yeah. we set, that we can set up. We'll get we'll get Ed on the on the line. I'll learn how to drive a stick first. We'll get it going. <laughs> Don't well, you I, find a stick RV these days? I'm fascinated with the with the idea of like like people. Who, I don't know people. This online boxing thing that people mm. like it or that it somehow makes money. Um, I'm always hesitant to believe things when people tell me this makes that much money or or whatever because I think it's like one of those rich people art scams or it's like a mattress store. It's like a laundering thing. It's like oh, you did how many pay per views? really okay okay I, I, don't, I don't know i'm always hesitant to believe that you can make any amount of money pay, selling pay-per-views to a fight because i just know that like like i i buy ufcs occasionally i i've bought a bunch of them i've probably spent a thousand dollars buying ufcs events um but i usually just stream them now and everyone i know streams them steals them you could say uh, i saw khabib Nurmagomedov, former lightweight champion maybe the top three or four biggest name ever in the UFC, and he's like, "I have a link for you. I have stream. Never buy, never buy." Like, <laughs> like, like you, you kind of feel like a dummy buying, and that's as big as it gets in combat sports for me. I, like, like maybe for other people, like Canelo versus so and so, or or some big heavyweight contest is the biggest in combat sports pay per view to them. But for me, I don't know. A Conor McGregor fight is as big as it gets, and mm -hmm. uh, and most people don't won't give you money for that. So the awesome. idea that you're going to give your money to watch Wings of Redemption fight Boogie and that there's going to be enough people who put that money in that even when we split it like three or four ways, each of us has been paid so well that it was worth traveling to another continent and doing combat. That's just a make-believe type scenario to me. You, you would need the audience to be 10 times bigger than it is. Well, no, the point of it is that if they're paying, it can be 100 times smaller. <clears throat> so it's you know you know we're in the mm -hmm. eyeball selling business right so the more people that we can get to watch something the more that we can command from your entirely legitimate realm of, <laughs> of sponsors <And> so, <laughs> they're real uh, people yeah so it's their products well, it's, <laughs> no, no, that's it. if you yeah. buy it they'll ship it, it really you. shows up at your door i trust that <laughs> not not enough to test it i'll be honest but i'm sure oh, that we'll get you fucked the cup bills work i have video <laughs> evidence all these things work. The company does work, and He's then that future will you. get your dick so hard, be like your best day. Oh, wow. I'm smoking the drugs now. 
<laughs> so, I mean, I, I like, I, I've never done a pay-per-view thing. The only real example of that in the automotive world is uh, Cletus McFarlane does a thing called the Freedom 500, which they, uh, you know, it's a Crown Vic race at a racetrack that he's bought. But mm-hmm. I think that there's a, there's a wonderful attitude in it of, you know, as you get an audience, you try to step up the game somehow, right? Like what is the next craziest thing that we could do? Sure. And if it's boxing a real boxer when you're Logan or Jake Paul or whatever, maybe, maybe it is a path to making a $5 million or $10 million, or whatever think, they you know what When you're that big, me? it absolutely is. Kyle like, always reminds me, and he's right, when it's boxing, not not MMA, but boxing, nine times out of ten, maybe more, it's boring. It doesn't live up to the hype. I'm and right somehow, by the time the next hype train rolls around, I forget that. <laughs> Wings versus Boogie is going to, like, these men aren't built to inflict damage. So if you're going there hoping for a knockout, yeah. that's not what it's going to be. Unless they're it's fighting their own down. arteries. It's going to be a yeah. fall down. One mm-hmm. guy's going to, I, 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 if it happens, Boogie will fall and get hurt, and it will be over within the first three minutes. That's mm-hmm. what will happen. What might happen? And then is, they will evacuate. We the were talking about our biggest fears. Threat. I think it might have been in the in the fifty dollar hangout. But my big thing was, I don't want to look cowardly on camera. Like I can right. lose. I don't care if I lose. Sure. Mm. Uh, I think I can. I can. I'm close enough to looking good with my shirt off that I'll accomplish that on game day. For sure. Uh, so I'll look good for my age, and I'll go in there and I'll fight. But God, my biggest fear is that they walk away being like woody was scared or like woody quit right oh my god sure. i wouldn't want to quit i would it, 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 what if i find myself like it's not my day this guy's just getting the best of me mm. this isn't going to get hurt. better right this is only going to go worse for me what's my decision because it better fucking be but i'm going to give it my all if it's yeah. not then i'm embarrassed for the rest of my life that's my fear that would be mine too i don't like i don't want to fight someone like that sounds shitty. That sounds all like I don't want to be hurt, and I also don't want to hurt someone else. I told oh, you I had I'm a reoccurring too- nightmare. I had a reoccurring nightmare where Kitty had agreed to have me fight someone and mm-hmm. signed everything, and and it was all, <laughs> I and, love this. And and, 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 <laughs> and I was only being notified like As late notice. It's like, hey, yeah. just so you know, you got like thirty two days to prepare for to to battle a man in the ring you know <laughs> and it's like oh there's so many things i need to do <laughs> <laughs> like, it, it, it was a yeah it was a nightmare that i would have um i that and uh the mo- the most recurring nightmare i had though was when i was on pro- probation and uh or parole or whatever the, yeah probation like like dreaming that i would accidentally do drugs <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i would i would have nightmares where i accidentally did drugs and i was like oh no i'm gonna fill my drug now. i'm going back to jail <laughs> and i would wake up and i'd be like you didn't do drugs in your dreams right <clears throat> fuck i don't know did i I had a dream that a guy like ran up to me and like smeared some like Vaseline like substance like on my neck right here. And I was like, what the fuck? What the fuck did you just do? What the fuck is this shit? He's like, it's drugs. Like like literally like twiddling his mustache. And I'm like, hey, what did he give me? And they're like, I don't know. It's some kind of weird Vaseline acid. You're going to be fucked up. And I'm like, oh, no, no. <laughs> it was just all about not wanting to go back to fucking prison. <laughs> valid concern worth yeah, yeah. worth yeah. making uh, some what, what makes you test change? positive for drugs like, i know poppy seeds can do it that's is there right. more? if you eat a lot of them that's uh i yeah. think it's a lot it's an awkward yeah. amount like two muffins a day every day and you're gonna pop mm. i know someone, i had that fear i got tested for a job once mm. never had poppy seed muffins nor do i know why like that would be someone's go-to muffin that's like the, they like, the can bottom. be on an everything bagel <laughs> ah and God, you'd have to eat so many. Everything bagels are great. Yeah, I don't. I don't think you could get it from an everything bagel because there's, you know, that's everything. You'd on. have to there's be a real a little pop. It's seat. diluted by all the other things. <laughs> yeah, all the other things. <laughs> that's how it well, works. Not being much- diluted <laughs> by the the garlic salt. And the, <laughs> and the it's not diluted. It's just replaced by it. Like like you just can't get enough toppings on there. It's not like they put the normal amount of poppy seeds on there, then the normal amount of everything else, and then made a that'd be like big sandwich or something. You're talking no, crazy. No, it's not now. that measured. They're taking a big handful and buy everything. So, everything in the and everything in the mix. I thought well, they pushed it against it. I don't know how these things are made. As I, like, I, I think they lick them it. 
and then okay. they like they like twist them down into a pile of each ingredient, and then they repeat that process to each. That makes sense. I have yeah. a question for Ed. Well, yeah, yes. Ed. It seems like racetracks go out of business all the time. Yet these oh, are for cruddy sure. things with like decaying asphalt, and they're not that sophisticated. Why can't racetracks make money? They charge a lot of money for the people who use them, and like, how do they lose money? They're not that expensive to rent. So even like, mm-hmm. how much do you think it costs to rent a NASCAR track? Oh, shucks. A NASCAR track for yep. how long? 12 hours. Whoa. $16,000. $16,000. Oh. Oh. oh, that's closer. Uh, you know, on an off peak time or weekday, you know, 10 grand. And so, you know, when you think about racetracks were built in the middle of nowhere and Mm -hmm. sometimes civilization came and when civilization knocks at your door, first of all, they hate the noise. Mm. Second of all, they offer you a tremendous amount of money to to buy very flat property. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times they go out of business because the opportunity cost of the land use case is radically different. Um, okay. They also do get a lot of sanctions, and so it doesn't take that many people to vote against a single property owner to shut them down on Sundays or to you know make sure they can't have their lights on at certain hours. They have to meet decibel limits and things like that. So there are some political issues that make it hard. But in reality, it's just not a great revenue per acre premise when you think yeah. about yeah the risk and everything involved. I, I haven't... I, I don't live near there anymore, but I, I used to live recently. I lived near the uh, the racetrack here in Atlanta, and uh, what are they building there? Was that a casino? Like wh- wh- they, they were building like a ton of shit around the uh, the Atlanta Motor Speedway out there. That's an a- area that's like nothing is there except for the racetrack. Correct. Yeah. Well, Atlanta, nothing developed south of I twenty, and so you know th- things are mm-hmm. catching up to Atlanta Motorsports Park in Dawsonville and Road Atlanta and Brazelton. Certainly, but those are established up at this point. The other problem is that the lifespan of roads is reasonably short. And so when they have a lot of times they can never generate enough revenue to rebuild it when it gets destroyed. So you have uh-huh. a lot of racetracks that are in terrible disrepair and they need absolute millions in rehabilitation. And that's just a, a bridge too far. Uh, so, you know, there are there's a lot of tracks where that happens. And then sometimes, you know, YouTubers will come in and buy them. I mean, that's that's happened many times, especially with drag strips and stuff like that, that they're not gigantic tracks of land. Um, so it can come in and, and sort of be the saving grace. But you're right that it is uh, it's when it's not an international motorsport level track. I mean, nobody's going to go buy Paul Ricard. But it's it, it certainly, you know, Atlanta Motor Speedway or Road Atlanta. You know, a few bad years could could go really, really badly, and they 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 sell all the time. So, Road Atlanta just sold to Michelin. Hmm. Yeah, I uh, I don't know that place. Last time I drove past, I think they were, I don't know what they were building, but I thought it was a casino. I think someone told me that you could gamble there, which I, I'm always surprised when you tell me there's a place you can gamble that's just in a normal state, not Atlantic City or, or Vegas. There's so many like excuses and reasons that we find to allow gambling. The riverboat gambling thing is so absurd. <laughs> like, <laughs> Those oh, boats yeah. don't float. I no. think, I don't know. No. no, they are, they are totally attached in every way to, <laughs> to, are they touching the, the ground? They, they don't I, float, right? They've got to put pilings under them. I mean, imagine the, yeah, I have no idea, but I don't know what makes it legal. I'm, that I'm processing it now, but the water level goes up and down, right? So, well, we've seen just a, the, What's the TV show rivers, that we like? Rivers are not tidal, but rain would have a massive impact depending on. I was thinking of, uh, for example, the what the fuck is the giant river in the middle of the country that Taylor lives in? There, the Mississippi. The Mississippi. Thank you. Yeah, people yeah. don't know that one. Uh, <laughs> the Mississippi just dropped by like twenty feet last year. It's probably higher now. Yeah, so, so it'd be it'd be right. real suspicious if that happens and your boat sticking <laughs> yeah. out on its poles. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Taylor, is that fixed? The Mississippi River? Do we have water in it now? We had all that rain. I uh, Believe it or not, I, it's not one of my daily hangouts. <laughs> I, don't, I don't go to the You're Mississippi. You're like 15 miles from it. It's I, not too far. But uh, no, we've got a shit ton of rain in the last month. So I would imagine it's back to normal. Yeah. Probably. 
I'm so sick of tired. I did not hear about a casino next to the any of the. I mean, George was had some experimentation with different types of video poker and stuff like that, but nothing really stuck. Their arcade things are popping up all over Florida now that are Mm -hmm. like you know strip malls have a thing arcade and it's just old people in wheelchairs you know feeding. They have to convert to points or something like that. Are they playing pinball or video uh, poker? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's it's all ski ball. It's hundred mm-hmm. percent on the oh, on the Mississippi because of some law, like there are like uh, like gambling boats, mm-hmm. like uh, casino boats that like have those big paddles on the back of them, and they like never leave from where they are. They just like sit down there in the Mississippi, and apparently being there allows them to do like additional gambling. I don't know how that works, but There's it is no funny rules to on see the river. that. There's I no rules there, on the river. All right, you know, all right, we talked about this before. It's it's like those people who claim to be, who claim to be like boat captains navigating the road of life or whatever. Yeah. They're close enough to actually being a water vessel that they can make that claim. I think mean, they're they're just they're just skirting the law yeah. there. It's got to get married on like, a river boat sitting on pilings. Like what's you know, uh, what's a, what's the show we law. like? What's the show we like with Marty Actually, Bird? you see one in Ozark. Yeah, yeah you see Ozark. the river Ozark. boat casino on the Mississippi in But they or, bought that, a was in the Ozark, but... that boat doesn't run. The boat got towed into its spot and became exactly. the casino there. Yeah. Um uh, yeah. So but they let the last part that like big paddle. Sometimes they don't like attach that up so it slowly turns. Looks like a real boat. what are the what are the drug laws like on indian casinos because it can't they just like go hog wild anything you want that's pretty sweet wait in the casinos you can do any no 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 no, no. like like on indian reservations i should say i think but that's what they are that's that's what yes it's same there's no difference in the laws but i don't think federal drug laws Mm -hmm. are enforceable on indian reservations are they boogie's medicine man i don't know what you're supposed uh, to call reservation native lands i didn't want to ask but there are i don't look i don't know of any reservations and i think he's in like arkansas or some shit like down yeah, there no. in that area of states that you forget about at least one of them if you tried to name all four <laughs> like he'd leave one there's out four? Like, four. what are the four like, like, like those, between those me and texas states. there's a whole slew of worthless states <laughs> <laughs> no those are good ones right the same right. thing just states that occupy arkansas is here education. too <laughs> yeah, you know they, they, do they not finish 45th 47th and 49th in education in america yeah i've driven through there multiple times and i i, I still always forget about one of those worthless Taylor, what, what's up with your state they just defunded all the libraries i don't fucking know but we got all the guns <laughs> and all the weed and so missouri rocks <laughs> missouri oh okay. yeah missouri go. rules top tier state we got all the freedom colorado's looking at us going you have all the same weed as us and, and you have all the guns we don't have any guns and we're going, that sucks, Colorado losers. Don't move here. Don't move here. We're full. If anybody's out there looking, other than Kyle, <laughs> <laughs> Kyle's no, welcome because no he's my friend. No one else. There's no you other room to... at the end. We don't want to become one of those states where a bunch of people move here. Taylor's well, an would... anchor baby for Missourians. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm legitimately considering Missouri as a, Missouri as a place to move uh, because, because it does have those awesome weed laws and, uh, and gun laws as well. Um, not snow. those necess- you like snow. snow. I love snow. Like, like, like you got man, a hell of a like, lot more gro- snow than you get there. Growing up here in Georgia, snow is like you don't think of it as that like inconvenience or that thing that like ruins your morning or whatever. You don't think of dirty piss snow either. You don't think of that muddy snow that's days after it that doesn't stick disgusting. around. Mm-hmm. You just picture that white fluffy shit that you never get to enjoy that's in all of the Christmas movies. And you're like, you're like, white Christmas. I mean, it's cold in the morning sometimes. It gets a little frosty <laughs> it's out. Cold in the morning like, sometimes. You know, like, like I'm you, familiar with frost in the grass Christmas. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. exactly. Yeah. That's um, how I like, like Christmas morning. You look Christmas. outside, it's just like a gray, <laughs> nasty, I'm wet day. Of a, of a chilly Christmas. <laughs> One which involves my fall coat. Yeah. It, it, yeah. Georgia yeah, Christmas. A light sweater in the morning. <laughs> a Georgia Christmas is usually like an overcast, chilly day, and it's probably rainy. It's 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 not a good time. So I so the idea of living somewhere where like you might get inches, not like two or three, but like eight or ten inches of fucking snow. Like if you we got a foot earlier this year. It's like you'll need a special shovel for it. Oh my god! Like like, I love that. The idea of making a snow fort was so cool to me. You should if you saw my snowmen growing up. 
Oh, <laughs> they have poverty <laughs> snowmen that we rolled Snowballs together. Snowballs stacked that, on top of They would each have other. That, <laughs> that red Georgia clay would inevitably get oh. like mixed in, and he'd be all like rusty brown, <laughs> <laughs> some <laughs> shitty, ruddy looking <laughs> twigs oh, sticking out of everywhere. Yeah, oh, you have to use mud and twigs. It's, it's, it's half pine straw. Integrity. Two yeah. pieces of charcoal and an old carrot, and yeah. <laughs> there's, there's, there's Kyle's snowman. That is 100% it. Yeah, that, that, yeah you... that looks like an aborted snow feeder. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I've was... never built a snowman large enough that one person couldn't relocate it. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Really? Oh, absolutely. Really? I have yeah. done that. I grew up yeah. in New Jersey. We would build human-sized snowmen. Yeah, yeah. No, you would build huge ones, and then as time passes and all the other <clears throat> snowmelts, you have this reprehensible, ugly-looking, <laughs> used to be a snowman in your front yard that your dad gets mad what at you for. All oh, memories. <laughs> if you roll a snowball along the ground, it doesn't really pack. So you have to kind of like smush it into the ground mm. to add some weight to it, and then you reach a critical mass where the snowball itself has enough weight to gather more snow. It is easy to overdo it. <laughs> you, you build you build a base that's ginormous. The second one needs to be slightly smaller, but also ginormous. <laughs> and now you need like four children to lift it onto the pedestal that yeah. is the first one. And it, it's fun, though. All right, guys, we're doing a two orb snowman. We'd miss. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no experience with that. My snowmen were lame. That, when we went to Killington, uh, I think that was the first time I'd seen real deal snow. Real really? deal snow like like that. Now I had seen I I'd been to Colorado and I'd been to Chicago. So I had seen some snow, but it was like nothing crazier than what I'd already seen in like the craziest nights in Georgia. Mm -hmm. There's been like two times in my 35, 37 years or whatever where it snowed. And it was like real. It was like, oh, look at that. That's like four inches. Wow. <laughs> and the whole state <laughs> like, shuts down. Like, you can make a snowball. Oh, yeah. oh, four a week. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. When I first moved to North Carolina, this is like 24 years ago, um, we got this like once in a century snow. It was 24 inches. Damn. I had the only snow shovel on my block having just moved from New Jersey. Everyone's using like gardening shovels with the pointed tips, not even square. <laughs> <laughs> so they all borrowed my shovel and stuff where you could like, they're like, oh, look at this. A good snow shovel. You can like sort of plow with it and push. Yeah, and you don't have goes. to. So I had like a proper snow shovel. That was fun. But the snow removal around here, they were completely unprepared. I had yeah. never seen yeah. incompetent snow removal before. In New Jersey, they would have like three trucks driving side by side staggered. So they just like one pushes the snow into the next and mm. then the next and then it's off to the side of the road. And they can just do this so it never really accumulates. In North Carolina, they have like yellow caterpillar earth movers <laughs> where they like pick up a, a thing of snow and then take it, to the <laughs> and it, it there, you. and then they get the next two feet. <laughs> go to the the ass. <laughs> That's how they remove snow. It takes months. We had that yeah. ice apocalypse, which was barely two or three inches of snow. Yeah, <laughs> well, uh, that the, there was a legendary Saturday Night Live, live sketch about it with Buford T. Calloway or whatever his name was, talking about getting his white Escalade and going out in the, you know. Uh, <laughs> Uh, whatever it was amazing but it's it, it was, was exactly like that it was one of the more shameful things that had happened to atlanta since sherman came yes. it, it was uh it was pretty rough um it, it snowed like an inch and a half and they compared it to that photo from walking dead and it was like <laughs> it was real close to like an it was what this happened my guys favorite. no one have four does do people know how to exactly drive please show this no this they is do like not know how to drive. four miles from my house where i'm sitting right you just now. go slow this is a careful. famous picture you all have seen it before this is what happens when we get a dusting of snow in raleigh yeah <laughs> is it that video where the car goes <laughs> it's not a video this is oh, it. Yeah. <laughs> how deep that snow is you can see yeah. the pavement dude there's you grass the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can see grass near the 45 mile an hour side. We're just wrecked <laughs> look how wide look, look how wide they are <laughs> dude, honestly th there's no excuse for this there are many four-wheel drive cars in this oh, <laughs> oh yeah for sure when when it happened in atlanta it was probably 2012 2013 yeah. we uh, so the commute, my commute from, I was working at Lamborghini Atlanta, it probably took me 15, 20 minutes to get home. It took 12 hours because at every hill and every intersection, there was a gigantic pileup of cars and the traffic was so bad that you couldn't go. Everybody was running out of gas. The next day there were so many crashed cars that you could not have parallel parked on the highway. 
It was litter. It was unbelievable. We had to go back. My wife was an elementary school teacher and we had a, a Range Rover on summer tires and we were taking the last kids home that had spent the night at the school. <laughs> <laughs> it looked yeah. exactly like that. Everywhere yes, with the at at <laughs> Without yeah. the fire. Yes. That is an at at or an You didn't at-at. call it an at at Oh, I don't know. There's don't know, so. there's differences of opinion on that one. What is okay. what is Kyle? You can say this because you're from Georgia. What is the instinct of someone who has never driven on snow when they do for the first time that causes this? Like, is it <laughs> I just need to hit the gas harder to go more? First of all, I thought you were gonna say the N word um, for some reason, like like with that whole thing. I thought this wine, but well, that's what that wind up was. But no, as someone no. from Georgia. <laughs> My first instinct. Um, I I think I'm a good snow driver. I've had good um, experiences. I, I I drove through a fucking blizzard one time in Colorado, and uh, but you're a good um, driver. You've experienced driving with people, I'm sure, who haven't. My experience, like like if you're asking like my instincts on how to like handle it, it would be to go slow and like, you know, just what's go going slow. on down because, there? Because you know you it's start a- spinning and you start sliding and you're gone. Because I've yeah. driven in mud and I've driven in fields with. Every now and then you got to take a two wheel drive truck off into a wet, muddy field. And you got to learn how it like maintains its friction by not accelerating or decelerating rapidly. Like the, the mud won't hold you. You'll start s- sliding. So you have to mm. accelerate and decelerate very carefully. You kind of learn those things driving off road the mm. same. So it applies to snow. Uh, really? I don't know. Off road is a little bit more of maintaining momentum, which snow is not about. Well, that's true. And I think that's yeah. probably a bit of our problem. Is you don't want to maintain the, a bunch of momentum. <laughs> yeah. No, like, no. I got that's what's going to carry me through this, and also into every other person on the road. And oh, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, you've you, like all of us have been in that situation driving in the snow, where like you crest a hill, a slight hill, and then it's like a minor decline, and there's someone like 400 yards ahead of you, and you're like, all right. I hope the guy behind me also knows to go one mile an hour (laughs) as you try an inch and you start to fishtail a little bit over. We we had to drive from Denver to Killington and like there was a we were in a four wheel drive, like big SUV. The guy at the thing recognized me and and uh, and I convinced him to upgrade us to the fucking big SUV. (laughs) And thank fucking God, because it had like it was an Explorer. So it had like some, I don't know, it was like blizzard mode. I was like, yeah, I do need blizzard mode. <laughs> <laughs> but there was a guy in a two wheel drive SUV like on the interstate with us. And we were side by side going about 40. And the, and he was basically plowing snow with the front of his car. It was like spraying in front of him. And the guy is outside the passenger window. He's crawled out of the vehicle and he's looking at the front tire because the front tire is just kind of locked. <laughs> and, I, and i roll my window down we're going maybe 40 and it and i'm just like good luck and he just like knowingly went thank you like i need that <laughs> yeah. we're not headed in a good direction here uh uh-uh. no snow's not that hard to drive in. you get some traction in it whether it be for stopping or accelerating or maintaining where you're going but a sheet of ice is really hard to drive in and i think yeah. that sometimes People who are from places that have real snow, like Buffalo or Missouri or whatever, are like, How, "What? That was nothing. That why is that person suffering?" Mm. Now, you don't understand. They're in the South, right? Everything melted that day, and it refroze that night. And it's not they don't have the traction that you have in snow. That's very right? true. Yeah, yeah. Like it's, it's harder to drive on black ice than it is in deep snow, like by far. Right. Yeah. So, and it, it looks it like sense. nothing, and they look incompetent, but it's. I guess we can't make fun of this sound of this. <laughs> we'll, we'll uh, nah, we can. We there can. you go. <laughs> We're not really fact based. South is always taking strays. You're right. Let's give them. Let's give them credit for things. They're good That's at football. Good. They like football. They're good at that. They're good at. Aren't most are like good really good baseball players from the south yeah, and from like the Dominican Republic and stuff. Well, yeah, yeah, okay. but they're you know five years older than they say they are. So. That is cheatery. Yeah, you see a dude who's like, I'm Dwayne one, and it's like, no, you're not. Like, no. you have a tattoo, like, in remembrance of someone who died at an That's age you Vietnam couldn't have tattoo. got the tattoo about. <laughs> yeah. You're a POW for real? Yeah, 101st Airborne. Like, what the fuck are you doing? Add time? Yes, yes. Thank you for reminding me. Oh, this is the highlight of the show. This episode of PKA is brought to you by Blue Chew. Blue Chew, folks. 
Let's talk about sex. Guys, shouldn't you always be at your best? 2023 is the year to maximize your performance in the bedroom. Listen up, BlueChew.com. BlueChew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra, but in chewable tablets and at a fraction of the cost. You can take them anytime, day or night, so you can plan ahead or be ready whenever an opportunity arises. The process is simple. Sign up at BlueChew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. The best part? It's all done online. So no visit to the doctor's office, no awkward conversation, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy. BlueChew's tablets are made in the USA and prepared and shipped direct to your door in a discreet package. BlueChew wants to help you have better sex. Discover your options at BlueChew.com, chew it and do it. We've also got a special deal for our listeners. Try BlueChew for free. That's free, folks. When you use our promo code PKA at checkout, just pay the five bucks in shipping. That's five bucks. BlueChew.com, promo code PKA to receive your first month free. Visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information. Thank you, BlueChew, for sponsoring the podcast. Again, BlueChew.com, promo code PKA. Just pay the five bucks in shipping. See if you enjoy it. And per Kyle's recommendation, uh, Tadalafil is uh, the formulation, I guess you would call it, that Kyle recommends, which is the Mm -hmm. Cialis uh, uh, name, the, the formulation of it. So, to Dalafil, that's the one Kyle recommends, and he led Kyle or Woody and I rather in the right direction. So I would listen to him as well. This episode of PKA also brought to you by RealDBG.com, the high quality, super real product that Ed Bullion himself said, "My God, I can't believe it. I love it. I love the idea of it." <laughs> <laughs> RealDBG.com. Ed didn't Careful. say that. I'm not putting words in his mouth. <laughs> I made that up. Oh, boy. Hold on to your dicks, folks. We're going to need some parental advisory warnings for this one. RealDBG.com has got the goods, and I'm not talking about candy. We're talking about 100 milligrams of Delta-8 infused gummies, 50 milligrams of HHC infused gummies, 1 gram HHC and Delta-8 cartridges, and a 650 milligram bottle of Delta-9 syrup that will knock your socks off faster than... I'm not going to read that. And forget about (laughs) spring has finally come. RealDBG.com has all seasons covered from the dead of winter to the heat of late August and everything in between. These gummies will have you melting like the polar ice caps. The cult, the cartridges are like a supercar, the way they outclass the competition. Very true. And the syrup will have you as happy as Jackie after a sexcation. So come on. Down. That's my <laughs> That's wife. a good one. They're in the mix. <laughs> They're watching the show. They're watching the show. So come on down to realdbg.com and get as stoned as the statue in your local park. Just remember to start slow, and before you know it, you'll be soaring higher than Woody and his paramotor. The euphoria will have you feeling like you've conquered the skies. Get ready to have a night you won't forget, or maybe you will, depending on how hard you hit that syrup. Use code PKA23 for 23% off your whole order. That's right, people. 23% off your whole order. You can indulge in our premium THC products without burning a hole in your pocket. Remember, consume responsibly. And again, like from us, not just the read, consume responsibly. This stuff is very strong. If you don't have a high tolerance, we recommend you start slow. Mm -hmm. Uh, Don't get yourself too fucked up. You see it as a way to increase value. You're buying one of these containers. You don't want to get absolutely blasted on the first gummy. You want to enjoy it in a way that that extends your experience. So check it out. Code PK23 for 23% off. Uh, The gummies are unbelievably strong. The carts are a better choice if you're someone who's newer to it and doesn't have a high tolerance. And as Kyle and I were saying earlier, this syrup is is fucking real deal, guys. Like, don't don't fuck with the syrup. Like, take it. Take it. The. You'll know Scissor. the second the second that syrup hits your mouth, you're gonna go. That tastes like mm, weed. That scissor tastes <laughs> it just like tastes weed. overwhelmingly of weed because there's so much in it. And so take it slow. <laughs> Start with a spoonful or however it is uh, directed. Don't go crazy. Does just the a weed little... hit you faster than the gummy? I can imagine it might. Yeah, uh, I take it right. Intra like smoking <laughs> into. Yeah, I think smoking into your lungs is the fastest way into your system. Maybe Kyle knows better because like edibles take longer. Smoking's instant, pretty much, right? Like so you syrup is an edible, though, right? Like, but it's a liquid, and so I feel like this shit hits me faster than the other stuff. It's digesting more quickly for sure. Um, it's, like uh, twenty minutes after I take that, I feel it. it it's nice and strong. It's, it's nice like strong. forty to sixty on a gummy, I think. Yeah, yeah. So, so take it slow. Don't go. Don't be a hero. This shit is very strong. And if yeah. you if you do be a hero, don't tweet me and say you. I took too much. I told you not to. 
Don't do that. So don't, yeah, don't. I my favorite thing is I, I give death by gummies to my friends sometimes. And uh these are the people who are high level smokers. You know, you you have that one friend. I I don't know that you can beat my friends. My friends <laughs> are at the top of the food chain and they're like, I got too high, man. Like that was too much from one gummy. Yeah. It's so we're not good. memeing to try and get you to buy it. We're trying to make sure you have a good time. Yes. Woody had a question a couple weeks ago that I think Ed can answer. We were talking about like cars mm-hmm. that could get you laid and whether cars can just get you straight up get you laid. Ooh. I guess the idea would be like, can you pull up in a car and just like a girl's going to show enough interest and you're just going to be like, yeah, it's a uh, fucking this and that and the other. I got eight of them. Hop in. It's a Ferrari testosterone. Do you want to <laughs> suck my dick and see if yeah. they say yes? You know, the cars that I have certainly do not have that effect on women. So, you know, 10 to 15 year old Italian supercars are not the answer. Uh, If you want to have a lot of conversations with, you know, 10 to 15 year old boys at at gas stations, that's the certainly 10 to 15. Tell me more about it. (laughs) That's it. Yeah. So that's the uh, but I would say that there are absolutely. Yeah, Yeah. Hey, the, Not what I was looking but, for, but is that a some... Tony Hawk skateboard? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. The right vintage car for sure can work. So, you know, a, a great vintage Mercedes or Aston Martin or Bentley, you know, that could certainly have the effect of making you look cultured and wealthy for sure. Because that people we just want a whore there. to get in. We're, we're not uh, looking for, for all that. Oh, you don't want to find Mrs. Wright. You just want to <laughs> have a have a short term uh, Mrs. Wright uh, now. Uh, there you go. Those, uh, it, it's just going to be latest, greatest, brightest color. Uh, I will say, really, the, the I, green. I would have guessed not that. I, I would have thought girls can't tell a fifteen-year-old supercar from a one-year-old supercar. That's probably true, but the uh, the the ones that have seen them on social media. The production of more modern cars is so vastly outnumbering the cars of, of even ten years ago that they're a lot less familiar, and they they do recognize that they're older uh, just because they have mm. you know not quite as sharp lines or not as many vents or wings or whatever. So uh, that's super women though a very very low class woman who, who will just yeah. be, she's she's kind of lower. impressed that you have a car right right yeah. <laughs> Any, <laughs> Any car was going to do the job, but that fast-looking <laughs> car uh-huh. makes me more excited. That started on the second try. That's not bad. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So yeah, broken salvage title exotic cars not necessarily the answer, <laughs> but uh, oh. that's my specialty. No, I would, I would, I would think you could, you could get the job done with, you know, a sixty, seventy thousand dollar car. I don't, I don't think you got need a supercar, but I would think a supercar you could. And, and I think you'd have to shoot your shot a lot. You'd have, just have to drive up and down like a certain block in a certain like area. You go to Clemson or uh, or Athens maybe, and just start making circles. I, I bet you get a lady in there in like three circles, no problem. What's the University of Georgia in Athens? It yeah. is, yeah, yeah. I'll There's also you, like I, three other I, women's schools there. It's it's a real target rich environment. It's true, yes. But I'll tell you, I've had a I don't know a few dozen exotic cars for almost 20 years and you know i have i started dating my wife the week after i bought a lamborghini and but she didn't know or i started a company that became the rental car company but i so i've never ever had a girl approach me expressing interest that would be attributed to the car for really much reason at all. It's just, and I've probably driven 200 to 250,000 miles in exotic cars. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You'd be the guy who'd know. It's not a thing <laughs> that happens. Um, oh. Unless there is something else about my persona that d- diffuses the natural. Uh, I don't think so. You're a tall, handsome guy. You, you know, you, uh, you, well, you think he'd be so. making it work. Um, so it hasn't I, been on the agenda, but it's it's definitely not like a. Are you just not noticing? Are they just fawning left and right before <laughs> I, you? And you just I'm think, going so fast through, they're just falling into the streets. That, yeah, that, that that could be a, a theory. Yeah, that's what it is. Uh, but you know, our audience from an automotive perspective is like 98 and a half percent male. So yeah. I it's the opposite I, here. It's so all significantly it's all more women. female than our audience. <laughs> what is your is your similar it's i don't know ladies. the metrics but it's almost all 
hot hot young women <laughs> <laughs> based on oh, my sample size that's yeah. what Ky- that's what kyle tells him i i, I tell him all yeah. hot i women. get all my feedback about the show from kyle directly <laughs> i don't read the comments i don't I keep look at the forums i just i just uh, yeah, the ladies kyle. love them I, yeah okay. no there are no women listening to our show like like uh, if, if you were to correct to a percentage 100 percent of our listeners are men <laughs> i've been making car content for six years now and about Two months ago, for the first time, I had a girl approach me in public and ask for a picture. Not saying I'm going to send this to my boyfriend or my dad or something like that. Uh, that was the first time that that wow. ever happened. Yeah. That, I has have that happened numbers. to you guys? Have you, like, Kyle, Woody, have you guys been approached by a female fan for like the purposes of like, I'm just such a fan of your videos. I need Dude, this photo. Do you know how awkward it is when a girl comes and hangs out in your hotel room in bed with you for 40 minutes? Just like chilling, wanting to be friends. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like it has potential for fun. There was a, there was a point when I was like, it was Suck like, my um, dick, bitch. Like you, did that, you know that scene where Dennis is like, how did you not know that the reason I invited you was because I wanted to have sex with you? <laughs> <laughs> like, like he has that moment where it's like Boyfriend. how did you not know that's why I'm talking <laughs> yeah. I had that moment where I was like how did you not know that the reason I invited you to my hotel room and told you to bring alcohol at this late hour was <laughs> that I wanted to have sex with you <laughs> no she thought you wanted to talk about guns and oh that was awkward that was that was awkward. I've never had a it. female fan just really enjoy my content I have had female YouTubers try to use me for clout and like you know get subs off me Okay. But not anyone who just like me. <laughs> no, no one with sincere Aww. enjoyment. But I have yeah. been, I have been wary of of, of I've only been one used a little. <laughs> but but no one's liked me. That's Woody, you a... and Jackie were gonna uh, start taking the bikes out on the road. That did that happen yet, or is that on twice? The road? Yeah. All right. So um, to catch everyone up. Woody's been motorcycling forever. He's been super into the hobby over the last year. And he has wrangled his wife on into the hobby as well, getting her a motorcycle, training her up on it. They've mostly stayed inside the nest in their in their in their little community, but now she's taken to the open road, despite the fact that we had a little bit of a rough start in, in getting her license. And she she did she break her collarbone? No, the bone didn't break, but the tendons around it did, and there was some deformation and surgical repair. Yeah, yeah a little so. surgical repair, just getting the license. So now we're on the open road together. How's that going? Uh, you know, a little bit of good, a little bit of bad. So on the upside, she's doing great. She's like, if you just watch her drive, aside from the fact that she's going ten miles an hour under the speed limit, uh, she. Looks competent. She's making her turns. There's never been a close call. Um, what's not going well is she feels super nervous, incredibly nervous. She's gripping the handlebars. I, we have comms. So I'm like, you know, don't forget to loosen up. Stay loose. Don't stress. Everything's fine. This is a straight country road. There's nothing to worry about. Just relax. And uh, she's not relaxing. She even was like, at what point do I start liking this? Oh. And <laughs> that's a good That's a good wife right there. <laughs> oh no yeah so i'm trying to find this balance of like not pushing <laughs> her outside yeah. of her comfort zone but not like straight out laying the red carpet to quitsville either yeah um so uh you know when the weather's just right which has happened twice in the last week i'm like let's go out and i take her on a drive i, I plan it in advance places where for example you, you can all imagine a country road with trees on either side and turns and i don't want to make a left onto that where it has to go well right you know mm-hmm. if she for example stalls it or drops it that it, a bad thing could happen no 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 all the turns need to happen at red lights where you know it's protected like there are people just zipping through going after her and such so i, I plan out routes like that so everything's a little low pressure and uh, it's been going great she just isn't liking it well oh, that's very important I'm sh- <laughs> I'm no, sure by no, I don't stress I'm, that. <laughs> no, 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 it's important fun. is that I like it. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? You think we're you think we're this is type three fun, baby. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a nice trust to me, have you're gonna, not a need. You're gonna to look have. back yeah. on this later, even though you hate it now, and you're gonna you're gonna be glad you did this for me. <laughs> yeah. It, <laughs> hey, if she if she got back on after an early injury, she's she's in. I she's mean, that's afraid of him. Back on. <laughs> 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 That's crazy. Uh, we when I was at the car dealership, 
every time we would hire a new guy, they would immediately buy a motorcycle because you didn't make enough money to immediately buy a supercar. But, you know, mm-hmm. you go out and buy a, you know, five or $10,000 way too fast for beginner motorcycle. And we had one guy, Nick, that, that second week gets his, gets a check. I'm getting me a motorcycle. And he had never ridden a motorcycle, had no motorcycle license. But the way that the order of operations works in Georgia and in a lot of states is like you don't have to have a motorcycle license to buy a motorcycle because you need a motorcycle to get your motorcycle's license to take the test. And so if you don't borrow one, you're it's a difficult thing. Mm -hmm. You don't have to take you don't have to have a motorcycle's license to get a loan for a motorcycle. And you don't have to have insurance on a motorcycle to get a loan for a motorcycle without a motorcycle's license. So you can imagine that this could mm-hmm. very quickly become problematic. And so Nick took Thank delivery you. at the with you know no money down on some brand new motorcycle that he didn't even know how to do. And they brought it to the dealership for him. And so I hear him outside like idling this thing around the end of the day. So they're just gonna pull it in the shop, you know, because he can't, he doesn't know how to drive it home. And <laughs> they uh Screech, bang, pow. And all of a sudden, you know, they say don't ever sit on a running motorcycle without a helmet. This is why, you know, because in a car, if you let go of everything, the car will slowly roll into whatever's in front of it. If it's automatic transmission or it'll stall if it's a manual. In a motorcycle, if you let go of everything, it will launch you into whatever is in front of you. And that happened to be a Porsche Panamera. And it mm. uh, he broke the rear bulbous station wagon glass with his face. And oh, no. I walked out. I was on the phone trying to do a deal, and I, I said, I'm going to have to call you back. And I walked out back, and, and the blood, he was looking down, and the blood was just dripping from his face. And so everybody's freaking out. The guy, mm. the only guy who knew how to ride a motorcycle in the circumstance was mad at himself for letting him sit on his own motorcycle. And I took him to the emergency room. And it's one of those times where you get seen immediately in the emergency room, which is fun. And there's all these little kids with broken arms, and we are well in there. And two emergency room doctors came in, saw him, and said, nope, I am not stitching that up. And so the third guy, who's like the stitch superstar, Mm -hmm. he stitched on Nick for two or three hours. It was 80, 90 facial stitches. And they're pulling pieces of glass out. They pull out some of his forehead and an ant walks out. I'm like, dude, you had a good story (laughs) today. But that ant had a great story. Yeah. (laughs) All right. Minding my own business. That's insane. So what did you do with the bike after that? Did you ever take it to the open road? Well, since he didn't have insurance, it couldn't really get totaled, but it was proper mangled. And so (laughs) he ended up like, Having he never got his motorcycle license because he was at that point terrified from Probably it. For the I mean, best, yeah. I bet. And I bet. so it was it was such a nightmare. So he ends up selling I think he ends up selling it to our body shop guy who fixed it for a lot less than it should have taken. And uh and he owned it. But no, and of course he's just started working here and we didn't have like health insurance or benefits or anything like that. So we're he's you know racked up quite a bill in an emergent situation. And uh, so we have to go to the financial counselor's office before we leave. Cause he's, he's told, told him he doesn't have insurance. So we had to self pay and they gave us an $8,000 bill for Nick's face. And, and I'm like, what if we paid it now? And they're like, Oh, like they were not expecting that as a, and they came down like to $2,000. And I'm like, I don't know, man, 2000 is a lot. I feel like we could do 500. And they're like, oh, no, we can't do 500 They did $800. They took <laughs> 90% off of his bill if we paid right there. And so we went yeah. to the Waffle House next door and celebrated, and he was all stitched up and bandaged up. And uh, But, no, he never got back on a motorcycle again. Yeah, I bet not. That's scary. Yeah, yeah one strike. Pictures of Jackie. So there it is. She's. Oh, that's my go. Is that a Grom? In the foreground. Yeah, it's a Honda Grom. That's uh, there you go. She also she has three motorcycles. There's a girl who does barely rides, and uh, oh. uh, she has a no pressure, no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> she has a Himalayan, which was her second bike. She also has a little 125 Honda dirt bike that she loves. She likes the little ones more than the full sized one. Oh, for sure. Yeah, it's just easier to start with. And the other bike is the other picture is a bit of a close up. Yeah. So she is ready for a facial blow. Look at that. She'd be fine. Exactly. Yeah, she could hit any scary. portion. It's so less scary on a uh, shorter bike. I yeah. got my license on a bike that's probably, I don't know, uh, maybe not that low because that looks 
very low. It's called but... three fifth size. Okay. Um, I was on like a 300 cc Honda, but it was like a classic style, like a like that old Harley street bike style. Maybe um, a Rebel. But when I first got on my thing, it was like much higher and much scarier. And of course, I like fell <laughs> immediately. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Your bike is a real deal. Go fast bike. Like it's. That's not how I use it though. So <laughs> you just like so to tool around fine. town a little bit. Just I want to look like I go yourself. fast. He's not wearing out the outer edge of the tire. You do. I love those tassels oh, you have on your shoulders. No. I love them. <laughs> I, I put tassels on the handlebars so that you know I'm more visible that way. Okay. I do like you know, that idea. It's, it's safety. <laughs> I'm good. not impressed by like the panther tattoo. Like that's yeah, or the not... I don't know. To me, that like is symbolic of the look how tough I am. Sort I don't of know what guy. that is, buddy. Pa- panther a tattoo. Panther? What does that look like? Oh, like, like, a, like the cat, a like a, like a connection. Panther? You, you said uh, tough motorcycle guys have panther tattoos, is where, yeah. We're that's, going? I guess, okay. I'm going okay. for the look at me, the affliction what? t shirt, the panther tattoo, the the I don't know, mohawk or something. The, the, if I am cosplaying as a tough guy, that doesn't strike me as that tough. There you go, that guy's he's got a panther, panther tattoo, tattoo with tattoos so... on it, that's <laughs> right, that is... like. Girl, look how tat- I think that's actually panther. a girl, so it's a different vibe. But uh, yeah, when a guy gets that cats. tattoo on his fucking forearm, he's like, "Look how tough you I tattoo am." A cat. Probably you good at hitting anything. things. I don't like that. I, I, I'm more about the fuck. If you've got tassels on your handlebars, that shows a certain confidence that I'm concerned about. Uh, I, I, I was just joking around. I wouldn't put tassels. I really on. dislike red in a tattoo like that. Huh. I don't. Okay. I don't like that. I it don't like, like the scratchy scratch. parts, yeah. but I kind of mm. like the red in his face. What, what is your new on. tattoo? <laughs> it's an avocado. I got matching tattoos with my wife. I think I can find it. Okay, it's I a like very it. it's cute not... and sweet one. Very. Yeah, there's nothing tough about it. It's not trying to be tough. But I have. We have like his and her avocado tattoos. I have the pit, which I guess is the male side. Yes, she yes. has the female side where the the pit was removed. And then you'll see. I don't know. I think that makes you the pregnant side. Yeah, that's a possibility. I, uh. <laughs> it's a dirty mirror at the at the tattoo place. It's <laughs> a dirty mirror at the tattoo place. You know, that thank is you a for dirty saying mirror. that. <laughs> yeah. it's, I, but it's at the tattoo place. We're not responsible for that mirror. Yeah. <laughs> or it could possibly be her shirt is styled like that because I don't see it. It everywhere, definitely but... isn't. No, it's filthy mirror. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's a dirty but yeah, that's what my tattoo. I'm so tough. Oh yeah, and they're Do you both have any tor- tattoos. Ed? I don't. I, you know, I'm a pretty obsessive guy. So I, if if I did, you'd know from my neck, and mm. so it, it would just it would get out of hand. And so I've been kind of aware of that, despite the temptation, you know, always to go out and do it. But if you I'm had to not... pull the trigger, though, if you had to get one, you yeah. probably if have I, one in mind, right? You know, if I did one, it'd be a proper sleeve of you know some interesting, I don't know, heaven to hell kind of thing. Uh, but it's, damn, uh, you go straight to a heaven hell themed sleeve. It is for the best. You don't do this. Yeah, I think <laughs> <it's> probably, <laughs> that's, that's, that. that's a big commitment. That's it. But yeah, so no, but uh, I'll, the avocado was very cute, and I'm, I'm glad you got the pit. That's it. That was right <laughs> very sweet. And now what he's getting addicted to it. He wants all sorts of fruits and veg all over him. Yeah, oh, <laughs> <laughs> the carrot tattoo is unseemly. Yeah. Watermelons, I have all the seeds. We'll just follow through. <laughs> <laughs> I know it, it would be funny so briefly for a bit, Kyle, if we got the same tattoos. <laughs> so, so Everybody's got the pit. I don't, would, so, I don't give a fuck. He can have the pit. Like, <laughs> I don't care either. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, care either. I don't give a shit. But that um, would be the, the, the most permanent for a little minor laugh. <laughs> Taylor, just a little titter and a well, permanent been, body I, fucking, I fucking dare you you get it i'll get it i fucking dare you i fucking dare you, you won't get it together <laughs> you're you right won't. i won't you can't even eat a goddamn onion you won't do it <laughs> well you still haven't eaten the onion has it been six weeks <laughs> i don't know why do i have to eat the onion i don't even remember you've been reminded you agree to eat the onion the reason you have you to eat the onion taylor thing. is because you were 
off by a slight amount on guessing what year Joan of Arc died or something. <laughs> and at the last minute, I made up a rule that the loser had to eat an onion. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I forgot that. I'll, I guess I'll buy an onion then. <laughs> so, yeah. I thought I, I totally forgot the onion. Though. I remember I won that guess, and I don't even know who she is. I thought she was a sailor. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no. I guessed everybody. You just haven't gotten. Or is it? I mean, are we talking apple style or like a raw onion? Or yeah. you, got, you can hibachi this <laughs> you know, thing into the, some rice. No, it has good. to be raw. And in oh, Kyle's okay. words, he said he was going to ship me. I quote the most acrid onion you could find <laughs> the most white acrid evil onion i found a, I asked a if sharp I nice japanese onion. onion and he said no they grow, they grow in bitter soil <laughs> <laughs> very sandy bitter in the swamp lands of fukushima they grow these japanese onions <laughs> i mean clearly this shit isn't going away until i eat a fucking onion so i guess I'll, 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 sounds I'll, important but it, yeah. it, i also recall it was not a whole onion it was a a hearty slice of an onion you know like I, a big I, chunk I only onion. said it because i hate onions so much they i feel like they ruin every food item i just i despise that blows my mind dude if i dice them up and melt them into a sauce like they're amazing like if i want to make pasta sauce but the onions melt after i'm done like cooking them fried down. onions on a cheesesteak not your thing fuck no none of that like okay. like i don't want onions okay. like, like onion, onion rings i'd be a, down with well, onions on a burger add that sharpness you know, i, I do I actually do that on hot dogs. That's the only place where I do That's that. I guess I, so I guess I'm not. I guess I do have issues yeah. sometimes where I do eat raw onions. Yeah, like like <clears throat> all I put on a hot dog is uh, is onions and mustard. Hmm. Onions is eat. such a weird thing to dislike. I feel like like it's in everything. I know it's a problem, and I'm always asking them to take them off. One of the things about that, though, if you if you always want at least one thing taken off your your food, you always make sure you get fresh food. That or they take one that's prepared open it and pull the onions out i've seen that done i only worked at mcdonald's for a week when i was 15 but i watched that happen and i was like bro just make a new one <laughs> like they could, just, they're gonna see the indentions in the cheese oh my god <laughs> so gross like 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 i like to believe that nothing bad's ever happened to my food and i do appreciate that it when does. you order doordash they like tape everything up in sort of a tamper proof kind of manner but I've, somebody's definitely done something bad to my food. I think oh, yeah. that's way more likely than I've ever eaten a spider in my sleep. That's horse shit. There's yeah. no way I've ever once eaten a spider in my sleep, but somebody's I, definitely spit That's make-believe. Okay, well, I know that that myth was started online probably or old or way back in the day, but someone like made a comment many years ago that I saw that like just convinced me the other direction because I just believed like, yeah, you eat spiders sometimes at night. And someone commented and was like, yeah, Spiders survived billions of years by crawling into warm predator mouths, you retard. And I was like, damn, oh. that's salient. Like, I, like, <laughs> like, yeah, you know how you sleep with your mouth open and then like mice and rats crawl in and drown? No, like cause that's not how animals work, retard. Like, and so I guess. And so I was made quite the fool that day when I read that. But it was one of those. Do you ever do this where you like have an opinion on something? And then you read something else just like this and you pivot instantly from obviously you eat spiders in your sleep, dumbass, to yeah. how foolish could you be to believe you eat spiders? Yeah, <laughs> like and you, it's, you, you immediately I feel like I, I need to make up for like the ignorance that I want spread sure. in the world, having that having the wrong idea about yeah. something. Telling people about All spiders. the third graders that you told this was happening in their, you know, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you know, all, all those all those ladies I misinformed or, or or whatever about how sexually transmitted diseases work because of my in ignorance. You know that's not my fault. But right. but now that I know the truth, mm -hmm. I try to spread, you know, knowledge and and justice in the American way. Yeah. I'm a bit like Superman in that way. Mm, I'm not familiar with Superman. I don't think he sp spreads the American way though, right? Remember he when was... he stole all the nuclear weapons and like put them in a net and flew them into space? I don't remember. I haven't. Like he got them all, like like every single oh. one. Okay. And he well, had. I mean, a, like that part's not unbelievable. And he I had him in like he's a, so powerful, he can't be stopped. Well, at the time there was like a hundred thousand nuclear weapons, and so so. But he put them in a big like fisherman's net in space, and he mm. did that like spinny thing and threw them into the sun, and uh, and 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 I hated that because like I wish that they'd shown like 30 more minutes of the movie when the Soviets invade Poland now because we don't have nukes. <laughs> if we threw that many nukes into the sun, 
Because the sun happen. is so big, would there even be a perceptible blip after, like, at the area we threw it in, or would it just nothing would even happen? I don't think anything would happen. It's already a giant yeah. fusion reaction. It's a big right. nuclear. Yeah, buck it's radioactive. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You do put it that that's way. That's why he got stupid, eyelash you know? cancer is because it's yeah. already radioactive. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't, I don't think it would be a solar flare noticeable for yeah. all of the. I mean. I don't think so. I'm retroactively making that question a joke. It was uh, I saw a YouTube no. channel that uh, that like calculated. They were like, "How many elephants you'd have to throw into the sun for it to be a problem, or something like oh that." Oh my god, dude! Probably, <laughs> probably, probably like, or maybe I bet, lions. I bet, it's, I bet it's trillions. It was like, how many lions to would it take to beat the sun, or something to like beat that? The sun. <laughs> to beat the sun? No, but no amount could win. Like they couldn't yeah, but, eat the core or whatever. Some amount. <laughs> some amount could win, hey, right? Eventually you know, enough lions bite the sun that they would. A quadrillion trillion lions, your guess, Zach says. Uh, about that? Uh, this is one of those things that doesn't it doesn't make sense to me, but No, they can't eat bits of the sun. <laughs> no, 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 no. A little at a time. <laughs> Well, maybe they very small bites. Yeah, the they heat of the sun it. can only burn so many lines. <laughs> they attacked in the lines when they attacked at night. Uh, Every once in a while, four chan is very fucking funny. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the internet is undefeated. Oh man, no, that now is. This, a good uh, y'all were talking about the camping week or survival week or yeah. whatever. Was that yeah. done as a PKA project? Yeah. So, how did the content I'm, do? Good. Um, like, 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 um, at the time, so we've done two, we've done two years ago and they were both failures. Okay. Um, but the first one, the first one, it was when it was myself, Woody and wings, that obese man who is supposedly going to do battle, um, in in London and wings backed out at the last minute, the day of, um, after having built it up for months. And then I, drank river water while trying to retrieve a turtle I shot in a river and got severely poisoned by it on day one. So um, I was vomiting all night and we were about to get sort of stuck on an island of land by a storm that was going to make a river rise. So we made the decision to just quit, um, which was my fault. I was just ill, couldn't do it. And then the second time, me, Woody, and our friend Chiz went with a cameraman to uh, the mountain, uh, Mount Curahy, to that like wilderness area back there mm-hmm. and basically tried to survive with essentially nothing. I mean, we had like hammocks and guns and uh, it was, it, 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 we just starved for a week in the hot Georgia. I, I try to tell these guys, but I let them talk me out of it. I was like, we should do it in like November when it's chilly. And because we can like build a fire and we can like, you know, we warm up, but there's no getting rid of that Georgia swampy wet mm-hmm. heat. Uh, and they're like, no, October is brisk. And I'm, I forgot that I was talking to a guy from Missouri and a guy from New Jersey. And I, or no, it wasn't you. Um, Chiz is from fucking California. He's got no idea. Yeah. So, like, it just kind of, there were so many things being like planned that that just like, I, I didn't think about it anymore. And so we just sweated our balls off for a week and, you know, bathing in a creek. Um, yeah. Woody bathed in the, there was a beaver dam. And like right after, it's where, the beaver, it's where the beavers like shit and like play in their pool, and 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 I'm like I'm gonna go take a bath, you know. And I'm in this quick running water upstream, this, it, but it's only this deep, so I have to do sort of like a prayer. I get on my knees in it and like throw it over myself, like anointing yep. myself to get wet. And Woody's like, "Why don't you just get in that little pond?" Down there? <laughs> <laughs> <This little> shit. <laughs> and I look, and because he's been trudging around in it, it's on, it's about waist deep. It's just like thick with brown <laughs> silt. And I'm like, that is feces. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is shit that you are waiting in. That I'm no feces. scientist, but yeah. <laughs> and he's like, that's what the soap's for. <laughs> you forget not everybody grows 99. up in the woods. Nine percent of bacteria, Kyle. Um, <laughs> and uh, it was just an atrocious experience. I would do something like that again. I, I, At the time, we were so hyped on survival shows. That was like the thing on sure, cable sure. TV. There were so many different <laughs> ones and everybody was like oh i'd be good because i'd have this skill and that skill and i think we all hyped ourselves up like that a couple times and uh and and i mean i grew up hunting and stuff like i was shocked that there were no no wildlife it was like it was like god was like run away yeah it'll suck for them it'll be funny it's not like your the, week yeah i i we camped next to that beaver shit pile 
Um, but like that was part of a creek system that I had scouted out and I had looked at it and I had seen a big catfish in this creek, like like this big. And I was thinking, like, oh my God, if he lives in this creek, there's an ecosystem that he's part of that's full of medium, small, and large things. Like that, that's food. That mm -hmm. says lots of food here. Never saw a fish. Never saw a fish. Woody got those two crawfish, and he was like, Should we split them into like <laughs> thirds? And <laughs> we're just like how about you eat yeah. two crawfish and we'll watch? How about and, you uh, enjoy your crawdad bounty and, <laughs> and we'll sit here jealous? Like, do, does everyone know? Because I know we have a bunch of European listeners. Like, do you know what a crawdad is? Do they know what a crawdad is? It is the teeniest <laughs> little crustacean you can imagine. <laughs> that is a what, clip from the trip. That What is that uh, duck doing? That's a chicken oh, that's, that's still living. It's It's about to be tortured to death. So okay. my father, my father owns a, a poultry farm. And so okay. I thought as part of this thing, as a backup plan, in case we did not find any wild game, I'd bring Henrietta along and she would be like something we could eat at some point. However, she quickly became like a mascot. <laughs> like friend. We, yeah. fa we found that she was a domesticated animal, essentially. So she would stay with the group very close. She would never like leave us, leave our campsite. Oh. And she would clear it of pests. She was eating all the bugs that, 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 that were around. She was just always around, pecking up, at, chasing mosquitoes. And it was, you could pet the chicken. And we were all friendly with it. But Woody was set on killing that chicken. And, and <laughs> we all just sort of like allowed it to happen. And uh, he said he was afraid he was going to hit my hand with the machete when he was delivering the killing blows. And that's why they were so, so inaccurate and choppy. But, uh, but I just, <laughs> but I just you know felt how bad you have to the fuck up to hit a chicken in the shoulder blade <laughs> <laughs> when you're trying to be at it. And it was a funny thing to explain. Cause like Kyle knows this, like a chicken's neck is kind of like, nothing right. like yeah. you can you can take like that blade he had you don't have to do a chop he could have put it down almost like you were rolling through a like a, a carrot or something if you yeah. wanted or just you a could, little you could pick it up by the head and kill it like yeah there's no need for a swing when you're decapitating a chicken you can literally just if he hit that there chicken five times he hit it 15 he beat, <laughs> that chicken. he beat that chicken like it owed him money God damn it. He beat that chicken like a, like a, like an angry white police officer on a Saturday night. He went in to town. You had blood all over your face like you were and just my, in a battle. Splattering on me. And then we boiled her and she was horrific to eat. And we, didn't, we just threw her out. And I felt so awful. Now, just grant, you know, that chicken was always going <laughs> to die. They live short, unhappy lives that, you know, it, it had a week or two of. of yeah. Of the but dude, those few days in the woods, Henrietta was living the dream, eating mosquitoes, well, hanging out. I felt pretty bad about that. I, I don't. You know, but, but, but what are you gonna did do? you what let you... her go to waste did you guys even eat every bit we did, we barely it was so awful to eat <laughs> you barely here's, touched her <laughs> here's what we did here's what we did like i remember this distinctly i had seen a video where someone had done this they had butchered a chicken i watched lots of videos in case we killed a number of things because like what do you do when you've got a dead deer there if you don't know what you're doing my name is henrietta and i've been told to support <laughs> oh, jesus christ um i i you're supposed to like douse them and dunk them in boiling water or almost boiling water and that makes all the feathers very easy to pluck out we went overboard with that and just boiled the whole chicken oh and uh and you didn't and you, got it then you couldn't get the skin off well that was just a whole mess taylor you know like like, like you i don't boiled remember. the chicken <clears throat> without gutting it i think we gutted it i'm, I'm almost positive we gutted it but you That's kept the feathers so on? important well the the boiling water was about getting the feathers out. <laughs> so you just threw it in there and then let it sit in there with its liver and kidneys and fucking I stomach. I think we took that out first. And oh, then, God. you know, to pluck it, though, like more easily. You, I Did think you do it? Because like, I don't know if, if I, I, mean, I know Chiz wouldn't know how to clean a chicken. I'm, I'm going to be like, honest with you. I was so distraught at that point about the death <laughs> of Henrietta. That, that like I had no plans of eating her because I felt like it was I, I, she was my friend. And I was just gonna—I was kind of letting Woody do his thing, and, and but but I remembered that she needed to be boiled a little to get those feathers out, and then like a little turned into way too much, and and there was just feathers everywhere, and the, it turned into this gross soup of, of dead chicken and feather, and uh, I don't think we ate that chicken at all. I know I didn't. I know I refused. It was—it looked real nasty. Poor Henrietta. Poor Did you Henrietta. come away from the experience 
uh, really appreciating the work that goes into cable television. Oh my god, I hated every <laughs> bit of that. Like, I, I, it was so awful. I hated that shit. It was so silly. It was so fucking silly. It was just the weather was awful. The whole thing. It was just boring. There was nothing to do. There's nothing yeah. to do. We thought there were things to do. No, they give those people things to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They you need activities and ch- yes. yeah, you need challenges. <laughs> we didn't plan any activities. We just thought it'd be cool to watch us be out there, but it's not. As it turns out, it's not. I mean, now, I'll tell you, the so, fun part was we did like every night we would each step away from the campfire to our cameraman and talk about how things were going. And there was some drama as far as who was pulling their weight. Um, mm. like around the because there's carrying of gear and there's lots of setting up of shit and and uh, there was a lot of that was the fun part I, I think that's okay. where we, we we did a really good job Th- those are funny those are funny us talking shit on each other Chiz just fucking smoking down cigarettes like, like, yeah. <laughs> but it but it allows you to appreciate that in reality television those interviews are what carry the content model it's not actually what's happening it's what they you know encourage them to talk about each other behind the scenes uh, yeah it's just the setting the setting's interesting but it's the interpersonal relationships that are they're driving everything it's the soap opera nature of it all yeah if we had activities on our on our survival trip if we had like competitions um i think it could have been uh uh real fun that, that's yeah, what we're building or whatever fire would have worked Remember, we were yeah. playing, we, we play those stupid games where, like, I say alligator, <sighs> you say there are no Baboon. animals. With C. There you go. And then Cat. there are no animals with C. Dog. Dog. <laughs> Eagle. All right, all right, I didn't really win this Falcon. game. Falcon. If, if we streamed Giraffe. these silly games by the campfire, Hawk. if anyone would have been interested, why are there so many birds? <laughs> uh, <laughs> if, 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 fuck, 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 I, I, if, iguana. Iguana. God nice. damn it! Nicely. Thank you, Ed. The iguana you. man, of course. Fuck it. Tackle. So yeah, that can be. That can be we're not gonna. That was fun. We played. Oh, that oh, I start doing changes. well. The game's <laughs> over. I see. All right, we don't want Woody pulling ahead or anything. Let's see it now. <laughs> Tally up the score. I think we. I think the clear winner emerged there in those five seconds where I rattled off three. <laughs> A clear winner emerged yeah, we play, of that's, the animal that's naming game. <laughs> 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 well, we yeah. changed the genre, right? You know, you, you changed it like uh, the all, all sorts of things. Yeah, that's what we gotcha. were doing. At the goddamn campfire. Um, it was a, it I was a see real how that would really get short. Five days, five days of that. You know, and and you and you're like Woody. I know every animal that you know now. Yeah, yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> By night animals. five, it's like a uh, cat, elephant. Wait, now I you're memorizing all the you hard know, ones for yeah, later. Yeah. <laughs> right. We all know the J one. You yeah, know what I, I can imagine being there is like nothing but time. And I try to teach everyone to play Magic the Gathering <laughs> and everyone's mad at me oh, about it. Oh, a deck it. of cards would have been a <laughs> fucking spot, dude. We but I wouldn't have brought shit. regular cards. I would have been like, you can play the green aggro deck and I'll play the, the, this other deck. Dude, we didn't bring shit. Like, like you know how much like, a, chess, <laughs> a chess board would have made, Or some poker cards? Or anything. Yeah. But we're just sitting yeah. there. Sm- I smoked Ball so many. Of the cup. Chiz, Chiz brought like a carton of cigarettes for a five-day trip. Ten he packs. Really? Good, like and, he was, and, and I was just like, "Give me a pack, give me a fuck." Is it fair to say he smoked more than two packs a day that on that trip? No, uh, all right. So I That's don't 40. think he smoked that much. Okay, but if he did, like, as a former like heavy duty smoker, there are some activities or like times when you'll just be burning them one after another. Like when I'm playing poker, I'm gonna smoke a pack tonight. I'm gonna smoke a pack of cigarettes tonight while I'm playing poker in this How eight ten hour that? session. That's twenty, right? I don't know, but they used, to, they used oh. to be five fifty. Now they're getting closer to like seven or eight dollars, I think, something like that. Okay. Yeah, um, like a huge investment. All those awful now, states, not in Missouri. I'm gonna spend cap seven dollars tonight. Yeah, it's not, but it's just not healthy. No, it's Missouri. We have healthy. the cheapest cigs in the nation. We have the cheapest but, tobacco products in the country. Yeah. But yeah, if I were gonna do another trip like that, That's why they had to defund um, the libraries? We rock. Yeah. A, <laughs> a, it, there would be activities planned. B. Um, like we, 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 we'd want to be able to live, like, like do some of it and see, you'd want to do it on fucking Lake Hartwell. Right. So that like Woody has access to his flying contraptions and the lake and his, and, and that boat that, that, that we could all use. I'm sure he wouldn't mind. And, and all of his friends who are partial owners, they won't mind. They're cool with us. They know us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we're love it, Taylor. Actually. We're essentially part owners of that boat too. That's how I see myself. That's how I see myself. <laughs> I, I wouldn't say I'm the captain per se. I would. But, 
That boat that we trust our life to, <laughs> that is the life-saving device in case something goes wrong, is so shitty. We spend 15 minutes trying to get it to run on all the cylinders at the start there of every go. weekend. Uh, boat. It, what you, <laughs> co- fix it. Do what now? Fix it. It's not so, near me. Says the third I know, but mate. there's like... Yeah, this well, is the third mate. Look, look, if I was the, I'm gonna tell you this. If I was second, that was mate, the brig would, operator. Be, yeah. Um. So for the, if I'm correct, this is the boat that y'all tow each other out over the lake with your parachutes on and like do tricks and shit over the lake. So if you fall, you fall in the water. But that's good and bad because you fell in the water. Good, it didn't hurt. But now you might be drowning. Now you in the need water. a boat to save you. Yeah. Yeah, and so this is the rescue boat as yes. much as it is as it is the like tugboat to have the fun perfect i mean there's like 10 of y'all in on this boat right like a new motor could cost dozens of dollars each <laughs> yeah i know i'm the only one who's like happy to i'm every year i'm like let's get new line let's get new this let's get the boat fixed and everyone else is like nah i think we can get another year out of it can i tell you what you should do Are you gonna tell me to pay for it all there should be fees to be part of this boat club y'all are in yeah, and they should be dues. very it's tiny tiny dues Every every six there months, are. every that should cover the motor, then, right? It it should, yeah. But like, some guys aren't contributing. Maybe they'll be like, if if the fee's a hundred dollars, I'm in. If it's two hundred and fifty, just remove me from the club. And we're like, no, we're really starving for people, and that's the situation. <laughs> Call them on their bluff and say, what, what, you're what are banned you, from the sea. What are you doing, falling into bodies of water? So. I fly a paraglider, which is kind of like a parachute, but it flies better. And we're into acrobatic. Like we do stunts on it. We do like somersaults and get upside down and do helicopters and all sorts of weird shit. So when you learn new things, when you push your limits, it's best to do that over water instead of land. Uh, If a lot of times you'll be in this situation where you just kind of spin, 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 spin. And your descent rate's not that bad. If you hit water, you'll be okay. If you hit ground, you probably won't. Or if you land under a parachute, you would think that with a parachute, you're fine, that your troubles are over. You're really just swapping problems. It's usually an upgrade, right? You know, you threw your chute because you were in a really bad spot, but now you're just in a different, not very good spot. You're in an uncontrolled parachute landing somewhere. And that could be into a power line, into a tree, which usually works out well, but it's not cool. Mm. Or water with a rescue boat. That's your best choice. So when we push our limits, we do it over the lake. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's a great, it's a cool thing. I I, I, I love your whole plan there, but man, I, it sucks though, right? Like, like on one hand, you don't want the club to be smaller because it's not like you've got, you're, you've got a giant group. But on the other, it's right. like, hey, the whole point of the club is that we keep this boat like up to, I'm not asking for like a P. Diddy style shrimping <laughs> yacht. Like, like I just want the rescue boat to like fire up and run all six, you know, like, come on. Uh, I, that would, that would be a problem for me. I think I'd worry about my safety. Dude, people we're counting on you, Woody. We need you here. <laughs> we need you. And Jackie, I mean, to a lesser extent, to a lesser extent, <laughs> <laughs> Jack, you can show that with no volume. while We talk about it. Uh, this is a camera on my thigh while I, do flips. I forget that people who don't look at this kind of footage oh, all the found time. Found a new use for the thigh cam, huh? <laughs> people don't look at this footage all the time can get like their perspectives a little messed up. But what you'll see is I'm gradually <laughs> working this into like bigger and bigger somersaults until eventually yeah. I go straight up over the. Dude, top what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> what the look fuck are you doing? Look, this, you Taylor, have children. Is- you got you got a family. This is absurd. Taylor, they're grown. Taylor, they're grown. And yeah, look, look, he's, he's going head over heels. He- he's loopy. De- I call these the loop the loops. <laughs> I call and, these the loop. Yeah, I'm going straight over the middle on those for like. <laughs> yeah, it's five badass. Rotations. It took him a while to work up to that, huh? It was yeah, yeah. There were me and like five other guys racing to master this move, and uh, I was the first to it. And dude, if you pull it was that out, really big to me. It was super big. Like I thought yeah. that any kind. I thought victory was Goddamn. over, right? Who has a victory at 48 years old? Like, there aren't too many things that you can win at. Foreman. Foreman? George Foreman came back. Oh, George Foreman. Okay, <laughs> sure, sure, sure. <laughs> um, but it was like, shit, I got one more win. That was nice. That's really cool. Like, yeah, it was cool. I mean, it's no heavyweight title, but. Right. Yeah. <laughs> George well, Foreman are, can't do that. You are risking your life. Hey, like, we now have YouTuber boxing to look forward to. So as you, a, you, you, 
Yeah. I've always said you need to incorporate gunplay into your your, your aerial <laughs> a- acrobatics, and I mean it. I mean it. I, I, I like like maybe to me adding a FAA. to me adding a gun makes everything better. Like like name a thing that adding a gun to it wouldn't make it better, Taylor. Are you still allowed mm, to have guns? Is that I mean, thing? if the oh no 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 yeah right. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was well, talking to people about you recently, and they're like, you know, in Texas they let felons have it. We could like do some video shoots and stuff. And I'm like, if it's adjacent to illegal, Kyle's not about it. He doesn't want. He's, it chooses. Yeah, I'm the kind of fellow that special circumstances are made for. They're like, yeah, in Texas, <laughs> they they allow folks to do this. Yeah, I'm not folks. Yeah, and, and we're not gonna do it in the in your backyard. We're gonna record it, edit it together, make it cool, and show a million people, right? No, I don't think I'm allowed to do that. Yeah, right. that's a, yeah. I'm You're gonna, not, but special circumstances. Will Dmitry be Potapov <laughs> <laughs> might be. I don't even sound I, like that guy, Your Honor. <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm clearly a different man. <laughs> and that Russian character has a, would be a very different fellow the, in, in this current political climate, huh? Like, like, do what no, I lean? Would no. you? Would I lean into? You have to. Du- you'd have to into if, if your character was a Russian, you'd have to double down. You'd have to play Ooh. the heel a bit. One hundred percent. Amplify. That'd be Absolutely. Spicy stuff. Mm-hmm. You could shoot Ukrainians. Stuff. It would be super spicy, and you'd get a bunch of views. You know what I do? Dude, you know what I do? On the mannequins. You would immediately I'd get be, demonetized while I was doing my videos. I'd be under constant Ukrainian drone attack. <laughs> like, like every video, there'd be like mortars landing around. Me. <laughs> maybe, maybe, uh, you know, simpler drones. Uh, yeah. not, not, the, not the good ones, but. You know. I don't think they have good prop they're drones. Just, they're flying like AR drones with little, uh, you know, 3D printed latches on them mm. carrying hand grenades. Golly, what a mess. It, it is impossible to get accurate news about Ukraine. I watch it all the time. At, at this point, I'm watching Russian and Ukrainian propaganda trying to sort of splice it, like figure out what's yeah. accurate. Just look in the middle, like, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, there's this Somewhere Russian here. channel talking about how Bakhmut is going to fall. He's been saying for like five months now that it's, they're just about to take over and they're encroaching, getting ground. I think they might have half of it. So it's not crazy, crazy, but dude, oh. you're five months off your prediction. That's a lot. Right. Is that, yeah, I don't think that any- was the city you were you pulled up the graphic of last time, right? Yeah, yeah. it just seemed Bakhmut. Bakhmut. I think it seems like they gain another <laughs> hundred meters every day, which sounds like nothing, but that's a, you know the Russians. You're ten days about. go by, mm-hmm. yeah, and they've got the a Russian. kilometer. Maybe this time next year they'll be somewhere. <laughs> yeah, it looks like it's going poorly for them. I, I I enjoy it as a spectator sport. If I'm going to be completely honest, like I don't, I, I, you know, this, this looks fucking exactly the same as I remember it. Yeah. Maybe yeah. there's a tiny bit more red where that AK is on the top, right. but I don't even know. Follow it for three months, though, and, and they'll, like, close that gap and take how long be- that right part. How, how long before there's movies about this? I bet someone's making one now. Yeah, I bet some cool, I, like, like all jokes aside, I bet there's like some, like, crazy uh, stories happening there on the ground. Oh, for like, sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's a war. It's yeah. A insane, horrible, interesting things going on. Yeah. Yeah, Ukrainians would... are about to do this huge counterattack, and it's interesting to me because, for starters, Why everybody know? Operation knows. Top Secret. Why do we everybody know? knows? Everybody knows. Every fucking Uber driver is like, "You, what do you think the Ukrainian counterattack is going to be? I think it's going to be north of Bakhmut, where they encircle and pinch your movement. Or I think it's going to be in the south, where they cut across and try to divide Crimea away from its supply lines. It's one of those two. And everybody, everybody, everybody knows. Everybody knows it's going to come in like the first two weeks of April. Everybody knows where it's going to be. And part of me is like, doesn't that mean it's going to fail? If everyone knows, if, if Russia knows it's coming, won't they stop it? No, but I don't know. No, it doesn't, also, because... there are no secrets in modern war. There are the, the way the surveillance mm-hmm. works, the way the drone works, the way the satellites, you can't hide mm-hmm. 132 tanks. Like everyone knows it's coming. You can't do what we did in 1940 with with inflatable tanks pretending it doesn't work. Right now, though. They I'm said sorry. they were doing that. They said they were building like those fake vehicles and stuff and sending them in. Um, I don't know. I, again, I see it as a spectator sport. I don't know anything about wars. Uh, the closest as close as I come to it is playing uh, against Taylor. And in that <laughs> situation, I <laughs> if he's bringing enough tanks, he can tell me all day um, hmm. that he's coming with those tanks, and he's just gonna run my shit if I don't have like yeah. a way to stop him. If he's got, Kyle knows I'm bringing the corn. He knows what I'm bringing. He can't stop me though. I know. Russian tanks visually have been the same (laughs) for seventy years. 
There's very little difference in the last 70 years. So I see these things rolling in on trains and they're like, look at this. This tank is from 1941. Like this is, look how horrible a situation they're in. And I'm like, I don't know. Cause their 1980s tanks look like that too. Let me help yeah. you though. What they, 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 they did a size comparison. They put them next to each other. They, the, I think they showed the, uh, the British challenger tank, which they're sending, I don't know, a few dozen over next to the the T-52 or something like that. Wait, that's power armor. Is that a Russian one? It was like a 1950s uh, uh, tank that they had been seen like rolling out recently. And it looks like a Volkswagen next to a school bus. Like, like it's such a shocking difference. Like, 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 more like with, a the, with the Volkswagen, Volkswagen being the good one, right? No, no. The new yeah. Challenger is a big oh, ass tank. Yeah, didn't the, uh, I thought the, remember when we had the Israeli tank guy in the hangout? He was talking yeah. about how, like, actually the smaller, uh, I guess, silhouette or whatever the term would be, tanks are better now because they're they're faster and more agile. Um, you know, I think he which would make more, sense. Like, if you can pack just, the same firepower into a smaller package that's more agile, like he not, said, you can get around the Tiananmen he, Square he, protesters. He was, he was talking probably specifically mm. about the Israeli tanks. Because he was mentioning shit like, yeah, they're much faster than the tanks that we go up against and, and more agile, things like that. Yeah, he was saying, like, those Palestinians, like, they're... Well, they don't have any tanks. Their, They've got, like, well, slingshots. Well, no, but he was saying they're quick on their feet, and if you want to run one down, you've got to really be yeah. a hell of a tank. Thank God the, the brave IDF is there with tanks to take down those yeah. those, those terrorists. The swift-footed Palestinian children. Yeah, those... <laughs> those, those Ah, those rascals. You mm. can't <laughs> cross a fucking tank. <laughs> <laughs> no, you cannot. No. Not effectively. No. Those were always the scariest scenes in war movies is when someone would fall in front of a tank and then be crushed. Ooh, I always disliked that. It, it doesn't look like that big a mismatch. No, I two different I, tanks than I was describing. Right. <laughs> I, he was just doing his best, though. But, like, which, which one's the suburban? <laughs> That's two different tanks than, than I was describing. Yeah, I like, like Steel Odo. Justice. Yeah. That's cool. I, yes. That's the name of that tank. Dude, My question I, is, can the Abrams take a shot from the other one? Yeah, If, mm. if they're both one-shot kills then anyone has a puncher's chance, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, right. See, that was my thought. Is like if they can both one shot the other, the one that's smaller. I think it's the, the one that shoots that's from, a little benefit, right? It's the one that shoots from further range more accurately, right? Like like Well I think that sounds tanks, more like a realistic our, concern. I'm thinking about like video game style. Oh well. Silly head. Yeah. The, you know the Empire has a steam tank, right? They do. And I am glad you haven't brought it against me on the field of battle because it's an absolute nightmare to deal with. I know how to micro the gun. Like, I don't just let it auto fire. I, can, I actually manually control the gun. You yeah. do? No. Yeah. Even without the Firefly Dwarves or whatever get delivered tomorrow? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh. Hey, it's a cool game for cool people, man. It's, yeah. the, it's, the, it's called the Chaos Dwarves, and they're cool. <laughs> do you ever get really into something, and like, even as you're getting into it, you're like, God damn, this is gonna be- <laughs> Everything I get into, bro. Everything. I like don't even have shit. Like, I don't. Do I have any cool hobbies other than like weightlifting? Uh, like, archery? Because it's I magic. Like, I, I, I think archery. The archery is not cool. Archery dude. throw axes? Man, your whole life is tell me you don't have kids without telling me you don't have kids. <laughs> <laughs> archery, Magic the Gathering, RTS games, weightlift. Weightlifting is the only cool one. Oh, yeah. 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 That's a cool one because that means like, oh, you're staying fit. But what they don't know is I have no control of my diet. Taylor, do you have a baby on the way? Hell yet? no. No. No? No, not, not. I'll keep the updates on the way, but nothing yet. Nothing okay, yet. There you go. Okay. Hey, that might change things if that's a, if that's part of the life plan. It could. I'll have to teach Those them poor how children to. children are going to be. It, it's like a child raised in a really religious home. They're going to learn magic from a, like <laughs> with their first words. <laughs> Dude, I will. I, cause I'm all in, I love magic. I love, I love strategy card games. I love strategy board. I just love strategy games, sure, video games, board sure. games, anything. And so I would absolutely force my kids to play games like that with me. Yeah. I, see, that's when it look. What I had a good childhood. Suck? Then I oh, oh then he, then he wins. Dude, that would be yeah. disappointing if like In my repetition. kid doesn't have a mind. Well, okay, you kids are obviously going to suck at five years old. The question <laughs> is, will you let them win or do you want to make them earn their wins? They will never I win. I will cheat it to in. beat them so that they always know I am the alpha. So I don't. I I, w- I would cheat against the kid every fucking turn. And they would never know that I was doing it. That, um, that no, is, I, now you, that is based in red pill. That they need to know <laughs> that I am the alpha and the omega. I am the pedophilias. 
Do you know what happens when you beat a child in such a fashion in a game? Yeah, you go to jail. They aspire to be as great as me. That's the Michael Jordan story. They never play that game with you again. Yep. (laughs) It's the same way you teach regular, like when I teach a regular adult to play Magic the Gathering with me, do you think I'm like blowing Mm. them out of the water? No, I make sure that it's competitive and they win. And the only time I won't, like that I will keep myself or that I will allow myself to win is if it's so obvious that I'm winning that it would be insulting not to to do stuff. But other than that, like sure. make people feel like they're learning. Oh, you're understanding the phases now. Hey, instead of me telling you what to do right now as you're learning the game, let me ask you a question. Do you have any of this type of card that you think might ruin this plan I have in play? Oh, now they're thinking for themselves. Like that. That's kind of what you want to do when you teach someone a strategy game. You don't I, just want to uh, no, fucking you pub want to stomp absolutely people. smash them so that they think you're great and then stop playing with them. It to really ties that. into my show your penis to your children philosophy. The whole yeah. like <laughs> you want your boy to see your adult sized massive dong when he's like eight, you know, old yeah. enough to remember it, but young enough not to compare. Never forget, boy. <laughs> right. And then Never as he forget. grows in, he'll be like, Well, it's adult size, but it sure doesn't match dad's. In the same way they think yeah. that playground was big, and then they come back to it, and it's not what they <laughs> thought it was. It's, they have this childhood memory of dad's enormous schlong. That's uh, do that with magic. They'll have this childhood memory of you being a master str- str- strategician, maybe, and uh, then uh, never let them know you're human. A str- it's called it's like a maestro, but it's a strategio. Strategio. Yeah, I like it. Strategician. Strategician. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I I just don't fool like playing watch. anything you with children. Fool me again. I, <laughs> <laughs> I had a good childhood. I didn't There's want some, much, uh, strategic. But, but but we never played board games, and I always wanted to. Like we had Monopoly there, and I was always like, <laughs> play Monopoly, and I and everybody in my family is like, no, see, no, no one wants to play fucking Monopoly. No one wanted to ever play a goddamn board game. I would occasionally get to play checkers at the cold country store. I oh, played checkers stinks. with the old guys that were hanging out in there, and that was it. Nobody ever wanted Parcheesi to play a fucking board a game. Kid. I don't even know how to play that. Par- I've never Par- played Parcheesi. I, if you told me it was little wooden balls that you had to like roll up a ramp, I would believe you. I have no idea what that is. Did I tell you, dude, I, I, I played, uh, like I've always been into strategy games. When I was like 14, 13, maybe even like 12, 13, I got into Lord of the Rings cards. I know I've mentioned that to you, like Lord of the Rings, the strategy card game. And like, I really, my mom would like humor me sometimes and be like, oh, I'll play this with you. And she was actually very engaged and would be interested. Like my mom was always incredibly supportive of like the things I was enjoyed. And uh, my dad, like, I remember trying to get him once when I was like 11 or 12 to play this strategy game with me because like, I really wanted him to be involved in this thing I enjoyed. And so like, I asked him and he finally after so fucking long was like yeah i'll play with you for a bit and i was like oh, my dad's gonna play with me i can't believe it and i like went down and i like set up the cards and i was like so excited to play with my dad this game and he comes down into the basement and where we were playing on a little card table and i like dealed him his deck and his his cards and everything and i'm i'm a kid like i'm excited to play this game with my dad and he like sits down clearly not stoked and then like picks up the cards which have like it's lord of the rings trading cards there's like pictures of fucking gimli and shit on mm-hmm. it and so he picks that up and looks at it and i i, I will remember this till the day i die oh, no. i remember him going like i can't do this and like just like, <laughs> oh, no. just, like just like getting up and then he oh, left no. and went golfing by himself and i remember oh. like your dad should have pulled the Woody move. Here's what he should have done. <laughs> and, and I think this is parenting he, he advice, not, he did Taylor. Not, <laughs> Get high, right? And then once you're nice and high and your kid's like, Dad, will you spend some time with me? I'm like, yeah, sure. Tell me all about your ninth favorite <laughs> Walking Dead death. <laughs> I'm here for it. Then my dad just Jesus. needed to be stoned to play it with me. Because yeah, yeah. He would have had a little bit of like, oh, Gimli. I, I it was this little guy. <laughs> just put it yeah. Down. I uh yeah, dad would not play. I I would try to get him to play video games with me sometimes. He was not into that. Um, just my just dad would do not want to play. He would do that. I learned early on that if I wanted to like be my dad's like buddy and play with him and do things with him, I needed to get on board with his hobbies because he had some. He'd already gotten into his hobbies for the for the last thirty five years. Yeah. So he like he was into those things. Like he was my age when like I was a little kid, and so like I'm thinking like yeah, I'm into fuck. No, I'm not gonna play that stupid fucking game. Play my real cool games. You're gonna have to like come on, get over here. So, but my dad's real cool games was like hunting 
and gambling and uh, um, I don't know, building cars and painting cars and shooting. Like, like, yeah, like like remodeling stuff, like like man stuff, like mostly. That so no, cool I, I never got to rings. play playing cards debatable <laughs> i would have loved to have played lord of the rings playing cards with dad but instead it was like we'll go kill a deer instead or we'll you know i don't know work hard dig a hole in the ground i don't know something like that <laughs> dude lots of us yeah. as kids had fun just digging holes i went through hole digging phases where that's all i did did you I do that ed playing. did you have times where you like got home from school and you and a sibling or a friend just dug a hole no, I, I grew up on a cattle farm. So if you were digging a hole, it was to bury something big. And, yeah. Uh, so no, I did not. Fair recreate. I actually, and to be honest, because of that, like if we go to the beach or something, the, my, I have a three-year-old and eight-year-old and they want to dig holes like crazy. And I actually can enjoy that because the novelty of that childlike wonder what's under this sand, I yeah. bet it's more sand. <laughs> is, uh, is, is really uh, a thing. I'm with you that's hilarious when does yeah. the sand stop who knows it, it turns into water somehow how does no, that work knows. why didn't we sink already yeah there's a, there's a lot yeah. going there's on. rock Very under there somewhere what tractors did you have at home yeah. oh we had a farm all we had an old ford no lamborghini mm-hmm. tractors at the time uh, no, no not they, like they, jeremy they clarkson didn't, they, yeah. they didn't have market penetration into <laughs> georgia the cattle farms, but uh, yeah, to be quite honest, we weren't that active on it. It was uh, something my grandfather and uncle did, and my, but it was a uh, a thing, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's uh, kids. What do you have kids, right? Two, two, how old are they? 19 yeah. and 23, I think. There you go, <laughs> well adjusted I think. members of society. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think they're both about to have birthdays, but they're still 19 and 23 for now. <laughs> I think they're both about to. Have oh, birthdays. you judge me! I'll, I'll circle back to you in 25 years, see if you if you know how old your children are. I <laughs> love like, it. I love just, just what he just. What he has. Was what he, what wants, he, ha- he wants. I knew how them. many there were. I was, yeah, <laughs> I was yeah okay. I know there's two, two for two, dumbass. <laughs> yeah, and they will get a present at some indeterminate date. You know? <laughs> I would say so, Jackie's probably got that dialed in. Yeah. Guaranteed. Women know that now, stuff very well. All right. Proper question. Your children are past the age of your, you know, chaperoning them through social media. I am on the other end of that process. As someone who made a living on the internet, how did you manage parenting towards the internet? It was tough. Like, so our fan base is aggressive and unkind oftentimes, Mm. and they would seek her (laughs) out and she would have the most innocent, like Instagram page, right? Where like, she's an 11 year old. She was into music, right? She did choir at school and and more and, and she'd sing and, you know, they're just like tearing that apart. You know, there's an 11 year old Mm. little girl singing, um, in basically like, I don't know. She kind of stayed off the internet, made everything private, except she showed her friends. And we always made it clear, like, you're not the same as everybody else. People will seek you out. You're a person of interest because, you know, you're Mm. around the show and you just can't have the same kind of social media, Facebook page. Just know everything is public. Mm -hmm. And it was a reminder, too, because random people would like write her and try to like lead her down some bad path to either like say things about me or say things mm-hmm. about herself. Like they befriend her online and try to it's like, fucked up. fuck with her. And, uh, but she developed a sort of force field <laughs> about that, you know, being suspicious of strangers on the internet. Mm-hmm. So yeah. well, it's you in her ear that whole yeah. time. Like it's no joke though. Her. Like, yeah, you need to teach your kids, especially if they're girls, like you're not a normal person. Like, I guess at all, I'll just say no nudes ever, ever. Your nudes are way more interesting than anyone else. You're Ed Boland's kid. Oh man. That, yeah. I mean, you know, trying to convince someone that the internet is a fundamentally evil place when that's where all the things in their life came from is a hard sell, right? I hadn't even gotten to the point of them creating their own social media content and my 
car loving people coming in to let them know that what they thought Whew, that would be a a tough day. I'm sure there were a lot of tough days. Ed's kid yeah. like Chevy's. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, but, oh. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Can you imagine oh. how much more kind spirited his trolls are than That's ours? How we <laughs> go. That's how we go. I just did it. And Ed would be like, God damn it, son. <laughs> Chevrolet is a piece of shit. All right, all General <laughs> Motor product products in general. And they, they had a Nazi founder just like Ford. Okay, come over here. Let me is, show you is, a real uh, car. This is actually a, 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 a good car question. Is GMC the same company as Chevy? General Motors is a parent company that owns Chevy, Buick, GMC. Okay, because uh, I was at a gas station today and I saw a GMC truck in front of me at the other pump. And on the back, it had a bumper sticker that said, this is a Chevy family. If we're quiet, we can hear a Ford rusting. And then, <laughs> it, was a, and then it was a GMC, and the entire wheel well was rusted out. <laughs> the entire yeah. wheel well was rusted out. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, what, what, is, what is wrong? <laughs> yeah, the, the, Why would you fan. have this such this strong of a stance? Like, <laughs> this thing specifically. Your car is shit, bro. Like, <laughs> GMC's I fancy know. Chevrolet. Like I never knew anyone GMC's who had a GMC fancy. truck because, like, everybody I knew had work trucks. Like, like it just it, it, it's the fancy Chevrolet. But that's the GMC's yeah. the fancy ass Chevrolet. Yeah, my I, my grandma only drives Yukons. Uh -huh. Is that a GMC Yukon? And mm -hmm. she decided like six years ago. My grandma's from Southern Missouri, and she she decided she was she used to drive those new uh, GMCs, and she loved those Yukons. And then she found out that you can black out that red GMC so it ain't red no more. It's black. And so now she drives a borderline murdered out Yukon <laughs> because she thinks that it looks cool. And she likes the way it is. She's like, she's like, all of her GMCs now get the blacked out thing on the front because she's like, oh, I shit. just like the way it looks more than the red. I don't like that red. <laughs> Damn. That grandma's got choice. a nice car. Okay. My grandma's, cool. my That's grandma's it. Awesome. Yeah. She rocks. Wait till, wait till she finds out there's a Denali version. She's going to go nuts. Is that the bigger one? Nope. Same thing. The, the, oh, no. That uh, is the one she has. It says Denali on the back. There yeah. you go. Yeah. That's, that's the super up trim. That's got oh, the fancy right. stuff. I thought that yeah. was just another Yukon. Well, there you it go. It is. It's just a trim level. But yeah, oh. people. Grandma's people riding dirty. Jesus. She loves it. But, she gets those like so, extra low. Like, I should have known, by the way. So she you can got, step up. Whenever Taylor describes like dinner at his grandma's house, there's like extra. <sighs> There's like 18 filet mignons extra and like That's two true. and they like roasted two ducks or something for everyone to take home. She's like cooked eight hundred dollars worth of extra food. That's a grandma yeah. car right there. Yeah, That's a yeah. Grandma car? That thing's bad. <laughs> no, a, exactly. Player's car. It's eight you know what's thousand dollars for the black kit. The one yep. she had before that, it was blacked out in all those like rim areas, but the it was bright white. Like a brilliant oh, white pearlescent one. That's it's hilarious because it's spec. my yep. it's my eighty year old grandma driving around. Oh, that's, that's in this, in this nice I well, this yeah. So my Not grandmother always drives GM products because they had like credit cards that accumulated obscene points that correlate to discounts, and so uh, she has. Yeah, that's always been the thing. <laughs> but what do you just to make me sleep better at night? Your children became well adjusted members of society that have a healthy attitude towards the internet. Yeah, well, so the younger one, the 19-year-old boy, is special needs, so he's okay. uh, it's a different situation. Uh, and the girl, she's 23. She's like a normal, healthy person in a healthy relationship. She's a school teacher and a functioning member of society. Perfect. Well, congratulations to you. Yeah. I always feel like I should be way older than your kids. <laughs> like way, way older, because I've known you for so long. But I'm like, his daughter's 23 and I'm 31. Like, that's... It's not that wildly different, but yeah, it's interesting. Like those, yeah, those like, patterns you pick up How online. scandalous would that be if I'm 50 and you're 31? You're 18 years older than me. Okay. Yeah. I'm 91. You're what? 73, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Okay. And then Kyle's 86. 18. That's not that. That's not even that scandalous. I could be your dad. That wouldn't. You could totally be my dad. You can call me daddy if you want. I'm just, I'm, Please not, don't. I'm not demanding it, but you can. I wasn't uh, planning on it until Kyle said, camping. "Please don't." <laughs> let's, let's start calling Willie. No, let's start calling Woody Pops. I don't like that. You're making like, fun like, of like Daddy right now. He's been Woody for a long time. He's been Woody since he was like 13. I think when he turns 50, eight. He's, oh, when you turn 60, you got to become Pops. So that's the deal. 
Pops isn't really like there's no six year old Woody's. friendly nickname. Yeah, you like lose him. the nickname. You lose the hey, nickname. As, but you also gain that discount at Denny's. Mm. You get discounts okay. fucking everywhere when you get old. Oh yeah, everywhere taxes probably. You know what I do? Old do you have I have to be 55, 65, 55, 55, 55, 55, 55 at IHOP. 55. Ooh, I always you know lie what? when I order food I, from there. I <laughs> I might start getting carded again. That would be very like I do. flattering <laughs> if they're like fifty five. I don't know. You know, it'd be funny, Woody, because you just hate drinking. You're like, I'll have a Bud Light, and they're like, here you go, and you're like, never mind. <laughs> like, like you're just <laughs> you're just looking to be carded. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take a water. I'm feeling a little. Yeah, you get crazy cheap movie tickets too. Down. <laughs> yeah. When do they start? I, th- I don't know. I, I always used to press that. And I would, if they ever caught me, I'd say, oh, I thought I'd press Spanish. And I tell them I, was, a I got a guy ticket. <laughs> hmm. I tell them I'm a student. Just, just get in with that with that discount. Yeah, you can still pull that off. Well, say no, but the ready. girl that's with me has her card. So she can- that's it. No, <laughs> everyone kidding. knows that if you want to pretend to be something to get the most utility out of it, it's veteran. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Steal that valor, right? One hundred percent. And the the thing is, Absolutely. this is like a little known fact. It's not a crime. <laughs> Stealing valor is a crime. This no, is a federal that's a like common uh, misconception, dude. Really? I think yeah. if they want to press the issue, like like I'll say this: if, if uh, yeah, I guess listeners right. go steal go ahead. valor and post the videos, <laughs> 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 link them to Kyle to show yeah. how it's totally legal. It's only funny if you claim to be something absurd. But if you're yeah. if you're just like, yeah, I'm, I was private for first class Taylor. I, I, my buddies died. Man, I personally killed Osama bin Laden. I yeah, looked it I, up just now. Stealing valor became a crime in 2013. Barack Obama did it. I don't like him anymore. Thanks, I Obama. I fucking hate that Thanks, dude. Thanks, Obama. Jesus Christ. Yeah, just when you were about to go it. don your fake Space Force uniform and walk down getting your free yeah. Slurpees. Yeah. yeah. Slurpees At least the Space free. Force is real. I, <laughs> it is real. <laughs> it is uh, a strangely real thing. I think you're in Colorado, <laughs> right? In Colorado, I mean, yeah, they've got very. There's several locations. It's not just like the center. So there are one dozens off. of I, space I like forces. A, yeah, yeah. I think Their camo like a, would look so cool if it was Colorado. all black with like little stars on it. Yes, it would. That would look cool. If yeah, you see you laughing, Star Trek picture it. it. Straight up Star it, Trek uniforms. I don't think you want it. camouflage in space. Well, for space combat. I mean, yeah. even then, I like, like I, I, I want to be. I want you to be able to recover me. Like, oh, we're I'm making a, a military uh, uh, space force, and there's not. I'm wearing my Russian orange vest or a China space force. Well, you're the first one I'm shooting. I mean, with my at laser, least they'll, they'll recover me. I have to wounded. hold it on you for sixty seconds to burn. Oh a my hole. god, dude, dude, <laughs> this is what you do battle with <laughs> oh. in fucking space. There is some shit. Okay, like, yeah. what happens if you point that at the moon? Don't don't try What if you point that at the moon? Um, well, the atmosphere would like disperse it so much. Yeah, it would, you couldn't it would, get to the moon. They have it lasers would, you can shoot the moon with, right? They 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 have lasers that you can shoot the moon with because I know NASA did that thing where they like uh, they, they bounced it off the. They've got a they got they got they got receiving posts on the moon that they left there during the the Apollo right, missions. Right. But um, I don't. I think um, the laser, the space laser. Yeah, I lost my train of thought. Combat yeah, I don't want to do, lasers. I'm definitely wearing my orange though because one of my. In sci-fi movies, one of the things that seems like awful, like a terrible death, is just when they're tumbling through space in their spacesuit with no hope of recovery, and like they, that just seems like an awful way to die. I always have slowly. the wrong mindset. Like once death is inevitable, enjoy the ride, bro. Like if if I'm falling off the Empire State Building, I'm not panicking the whole way down. I'm going to enjoy my final moments. And if I'm tumbling away in space, I'll be like, hey, I'm uh, I'm headed this way. If you can do something cool, if you can't. And enjoy the view. Here comes re-entry. It would be terrifying. It would be like sinking toward the bottom of the ocean, like as everything turned black. And you'd probably be spinning so fast that you'd That's be incredibly problem. uncomfortable. The speed of spinning. Yeah. You can't if, keep if your you eyes were open. floating gently. Like, like mm. maybe that's a, yeah. a pleasant way to, especially if you're like next to something cool to look at. But if you're in just like the emptiness of fucking space and everything is a tiny pinpoint of light, but but like way over there, seventy kilometers away, you can make out your friends because they're reflective, and you're just like whoa, 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 on the oh. radio. You're like, in deeper space than me. I, I always thought Earth was like gonna suck me in before long. No, I don't no. think it's gonna suck you in. I think you're gonna. Go round and round up there for a long, long time. Maybe you're right. It doesn't pull you in a little bit. Fortunately, you die of running out of air rather than all the other ways. Yeah. Well, yeah, you die of abject horror. 
<laughs> That's what you'd uh, actually die of is a complete panic of your body realizing we were never meant to venture this high. Yep. Mm. We told you with that yeah. gravity. The arrogance of man. That's, that's what that should be called. We were I, never meant to fly or, or move faster than 30 miles per hour for an extended period of time. What Wasn't that the, the train thing in the late 1800s where they're like, there's no way that humans are not meant to travel for 30 miles an hour or more at any period of time. And they it like might have been had women. to test. Yeah, women. <laughs> yeah, yeah like oh, they might have said so that the female... Better. Like the female body couldn't sustain speed, couldn't deal with sustained speeds of 40 miles per hour or something like yeah. that. Or it was nonsense. Literally, long... they can sleep on planes, girls. Yeah, early trains were thought to make women's uteruses fly out. That's <laughs> what it was. You show uh, me a healthy menstruating woman it. at 40 miles an hour. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen it before. And I'll show you a liar. <laughs> I've seen it before. I've seen it again. Uterus popped right out of her. Took a bite out of Jim. <laughs> ran around the corner. Attacked Smokey Joe. He was back there having his pipe. Smokey Joe. He fell off. Fell right off the train under the track. That, that's right. That cuda killed many a man that day. Yeah, the uterus would fly out. Like it would just like. Seems there was a travesty of, of the train crashing and a woman's uterus flying out. We've narrowed it down to a black man in a car. <laughs> <laughs> We believe he was causing mischief in the vinyl cabin. <laughs> Don't worry, folks. This train will be back to its white, pristine self in no time. That's, that's terrible. That's 1945. Uh, train guy. That's a character I've been working on. <laughs> 1917. Does he just guy. do the announcements or is he the conductor as well? Well, he does announcements and he uh, makes racisms. <laughs> oh. How about that? He's a master in trains and racism. <laughs> that's what you that's what you studied back in the day. Racisms? Mm hmm I don't think you need to study yeah. that. Dude, Al, yeah. Al 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 the the main man Einstein, <laughs> he was known for that. He was known he, for his racism. He, well, he was known for, for he was a he was hugely into phrenology. He actually made leaps there that weren't even, even close to what he, he didn't. Oh, I had a question yeah. like verging upon <laughs> phrenology. So they always say that women don't have smaller brains, but wouldn't they just because their heads are smaller? Well, that's Makes a fun sense. fact is they literally do because they are smaller than us. Yes. Yeah, like like, like I know like 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 your your head for example. Like I know it's full of brain. It's full of, of brain. It's full of brain. <laughs> and like there's no evidence of that. There's no like mm. void in there, and so looking looking at it, I, I must imagine your brain must be several pounds. Immense. But looking at like a young lady's head, I, I I'm her no brain. How can she possibly be as intelligent as Taylor with her what two thirds of a brain? Yeah, it's three science. fifths. They never are. <laughs> that's, never black, been <laughs> that's black people. <laughs> Thank you, Ed. Three <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get it. Yeah, well, no, that's that, the thing is that that, was, that, 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 that my male brain, you know, yeah. it's just bigger. And that is like a literal thing. Like it's obviously yeah. correlated to the size of your cranial capacity. And so women being smaller, they do have smaller brains. There's differences in, in, in brain chemistry. How do they do so? Women are are dumber. Like all dumber. jokes aside and like they can't drive, I'll admit, but <laughs> they, they're not dumber. They do better on SATs. They do better in school. They do. I think they, there's a vast conspiracy to to make us all believe that. But mm. but but I've got the raw data, Woody, and they they mm. literally don't have as if, much. If you're uh, if you're actually interested, because there's a ton of data on like IQ about this, is that um women are more clustered towards uh the middle, and so like the uh the curve of women's intelligence is more narrow and more stacked towards the average. Whereas men, you have, there are a lot more brilliant <laughs> men picture? out there. What is, I don't know what, what the what, fuck this what, is. Hang on, do not take it down. <laughs> what are we to glean from this, Zach? What are you trying to put across to us? Like, like, like I, that green, that, that men lines? have bigger jaws. Correct. And, yeah. yeah. And <laughs> honestly, those, I'm looking at this. The point. women need to brush their teeth more. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I am hard scoping this picture. Trying to convince myself I'd rather have the female suck my dick, and I'm not getting there. Her skull is bigger than uh, mine. 
right. look at Whoa. the teeth in the right. Look at the the smaller jaw, the trouble getting my unit in there, that the massive teeth what? sort of attacking. It, dude, you want the guy to suck you off? Yeah, that's, that's the, the Steve that's... Buscemi of ladies on the right. Huh? That's <laughs> right. Yeah, but the the guy yeah, does yeah. have the problem of that that cut through the whole skull. The female they didn't even bother to check. <laughs> that's cool, but the guy has a hinge. Let's make it more likely to. Yeah, right. Have a hinge. It's yeah. easy access. That's but anyway, that's uh, Woody. What you were saying with science. like so like. And this will probably make sense to you through personal experience. So, like, women IQ wise are more clustered around the the center, more towards the average, and so there are a lot more brilliant men than there are brilliant women because men's IQ curve is more out. But there's also way more retarded idiot men than there are retarded idiot women. And so, men cluster like there are more clusters of men at the very high IQ and very low IQ than there are women in that distribution. Interesting. I have my own theories about this, and it's not based on science. It's just my personal anecdotal information. And fun. It seems like women are a little more oriented or prone to be like obedient and rule following, which makes them thrive in an academic environment. Whereas right. guys, maybe you know, f- fuck off with all that shit. However, guys are a little more prone to just obsessively into something. So whether that be like video games or computer programming, some of those things make money and turn into great careers. Some of them are total wastes of time, Mm -hmm. but it's rare that you meet a girl who's just so invested in her hobby in the same way that I, like almost every guy I know, it, like, yeah. yeah, you know, at work I'm a warehouse manager, but my real identity is this other thing I love doing. Sure. Uh, NASCAR simulator. Yeah. I've got an eight thousand dollar rig <laughs> over here, and I'm one of the top drivers in the fucking country. Right? Yeah, stack boxes. There's never a girl there. doing that. Yeah, it, no, it doesn't well, have it, to it's be like, like issues of interest. There's all sorts of reasons. Like a lot like of the men are just more trans on that way are really dabble friendly like like all the sewing crocheting whatever you can pick it up you can do it a little bit it doesn't take like i don't know the kind of study kyle invests into civilizations to master it you just sort of pick it up hundreds of hours like like like, but the the, the thing you have to realize there with like a sewing circle is the hobby for those women isn't sewing it's gossiping and chatting and and, and 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 talking about the goings on in the in the community because women are way more clued into that stuff than we are. They pick up those things much more astutely than we do. Like if if all of us are hanging around with some autistic guy who's really into one thing, we have to talk to him about that one thing before we really fully pick up. Okay, this guy's on his lane. Women pick up on that stuff pretty intrinsically. Like they socially, that is their hobby. The other thing's almost just a uh, uh, a facilitator, a facilitator, of exactly. Yeah. And so, yeah, that's one area that women are much, much smarter than men is picking up on social things, being able to ascertain that sort of stuff. Hmm. And then, of course, Taylor, stuff men are much smarter at. Is the median or the average woman smarter than the average man? I believe, as far as median IQ goes, women are a slight bit lower, but it isn't a, a huge difference as far as. I'm aware. And I, I could be wrong. I'm remembering this from fucking doing this in like college 12, 13 years ago. If I recall, like the it might be a, the the mean female IQ might be a tidy bit lower. Might be wrong. But, but the, the middle quartiles are for sure stronger in the women. Yes. Yeah. The if you look at the, the overlap of the of, of the, the bell curve. Yeah. Is what mm. uh, makes sense. I would yeah. Totally like because there's like. How about that? Yeah, like and it makes sense. Like all women reproduce evolutionarily. You know, like they all tend to have at least a couple children. You're making men, a lot of assumptions here. Not really. Like evolutionarily, we know that if we have, no men get pregnant. We have far more like female ancestors than male ancestors in that way sure. because it was very common throughout all of human history for the high quality men to bang multiple women. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where men yeah. can't get pregnant, but get with the times, Taylor. You fucking bigot. <laughs> Yeah, you fucking Jesus big it, you, you dumb cunt. I won't. I won't be. Pl- I was gonna play Stratego with you. <laughs> <laughs> you won't play Stratego with me anymore. I, I won't be seen in the same fucking game lobby as you anymore. Oh, you goddamn yeah. bigot! Until every man can have a baby in this country <laughs> and then kill it in the streets, I will not. I will not stop fighting the power. And even then, Until I will not stop because I will always move the goal line further and further forward. I will never be happy. Thank Don't God, me Kyle what is an me ally happy. like me. Dude, That's I'm an it. ally. Mm-hmm. I'm an except I'm an ally like Italy. I'm shitty. 
I'm like, an ally. Like I'm the <laughs> shitty ally in World War II. When my allies start losing, I immediately pay on them. I go, oh, well. I don't know how <laughs> Ireland gets the pass. <laughs> how does that, what pass does Ireland get? Uh, they, they, didn't, they didn't join us in our battle against fascism and, and oh. Nazis. Northern mm-hmm. Ireland. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we should have bombed them on our on our way to uh... just on the way home. What have the Irish ever done to anyone? Hey, I got a few bombs left. It's not on the way. <laughs> We're heading over to Glasgow. You could have refueled few... in Ireland and then got a just couple dropped five hundred pounders <laughs> yeah. back there. Let's it's like an back. IRA. I haven't heard anything negative about those guys. I just I can't believe like... I've been on a podcast sponsored by Blue Chew and Lock and Load for mm-hmm. three hours, and we haven't talked about the fact that our president got indicted for paying a porn star. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, talking. he got indicted. Did he fuck her well? Yeah, I don't know about that. Claims he didn't. Yeah. Well, that's Literally. bullshit. Of course, she claims. Although that. she broke the law, she broke her agreement when she she even broke the NDA. Because yeah. the, the whole point of this was like she got paid to shut up, and now she yeah. won't shut up. And they're mad because well, he paid. That's unfair. And they're they and they're mad because he paid her from the wrong account. Not that right. she broke her NDA, which was the actual only shitty thing that happened there by my moral code. Because counterpoint, Trump, this woman makes a living opening her mouth. What did you expect? Yeah, I mean, honestly, oh! did you really <laughs> expect that this porn star like, was going to abide by? Like, of, of course, no one's watching her get laid anymore online. That she's got to try and. Ah, watch. Touche. I would, no. I, I would watch. <laughs> yeah. Don't be so sure. Uh, I, I would. I would watch a little. Um, but but I, I'm a little yeah, upset. I, I, that, I haven't jacked off. I feel like that's part of American history now. I should. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I really hope nothing happens to Trump because I have bets concerning this matter. Uh, long <laughs> stay. I have uh, I have a series of long standing bets so far. that that could collapse if he were to be arrested. Like all of them would. Um, oh you know, goodness! I have, I have various bets that he will achieve presidency or that he will achieve win the primary or that he will not go to jail. Um, I have a lot of different bets about Donald Trump, so I need him to beat this thing. I'm sure he's got he got some sway up there in New York. I think this will. I think his boys in the GOP will pull enough strings that this whole thing will go away. It'll be a fart in the wind, and then it'll leave a stink on all the other nonsense that they've got going on too. Um, because I, I, I just don't see, see them arresting that, him. I think it's a mistake to like try and prosecute Trump for the wrong stuff, right? Like. Right. If, they're trying to get it's him. A, on it's paywall. a loose case, and right now. yeah, and don't because it, it's not illegal to pay people to not talk. It's not a lovely thing to do. As a yeah, this is about him. This is about paying using the wrong campaign account. funds. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, and I not to mention the fact that by her violating that, she opens herself up to such civil damages that will undoubtedly bankrupt her at some point, and she has to know that. I and she's talking Trump right now, saying changes. he's got a little dick on Twitter, like like she's yes. just a pretty oh, repugnant it human being. It, it's pretty great. Someone said that Trump wouldn't touch her with a ten foot pole, and she's like, "Yeah, he used a three inch one." I was like, "All right." And it's I like, "Ho ho!" It. He paid you for sex, and you took it until he was done with you. And <laughs> like like, what am I? What am I to make of all this? Like like I I I, I sometimes I see Trump coming out looking a fool when 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 he sold those things those playing cards of himself po- shoddily made and i thought he looked a f- even though he probably made millions in an, in an instant i thought he looked mm-hmm. a fool but in this one i think he looks like cool guy trump when when you're telling me like hey what i heard trump's in big trouble yeah 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 you know he had sex with a beautiful desirable porn star like a real bimbo and then he paid her to shut up about it but she didn't. So now he's going to be and able I to do sue it her. again. Now he's going to be able to sue her. And they're all mad because he because a politician used campaign funds and not the other account, even though now he's made it right. Oh, Lordy, Lordy. That's such a I, scandal. What I wonder is what is Trump's vulnerability? Kyle once used the line. It wasn't with regards to Trump, but he said you can't hurt the Incredible Hawk with radiation. Right. That's not a, you don't get him. I've with never said rays. that. You have. <laughs> I've never said that. Don't you, you ever say I've said that. That's exactly that. how you beat the Hulk. <laughs> no, no. I, I, I can remember the context. I don't want to get into it. But yeah, yeah. You, you can't beat the Incredible Hulk with gamma rays, right? You, you, you don't get Trump <laughs> by exposing that he fucks women. Like, that's not not where he's vulnerable. Where is he vulnerable? Because it seems like almost everything he does, you can catch him in lies. You can catch him not saying what he means. You can He'll tell the people, like... If Trump were to say he hates his own base, I think they'd love it. That thing about I could shoot a guy on Fifth Avenue and they'd still vote for me is true. What does turn off a voter? If he was a Trump? gun owner, which 
You know, we I, I actually, if he shot a guy, I think just his be numbers flexing would go on up. you. His numbers would go up if he shot a guy. Yeah, they would. I just did there, it. Yeah, with any joke, Kyle. I feel like I was getting I mean, the only the only shit tonight someone. is somebody positively famous. So the rock beats him, right? Because he's he's both famous and in a positive way that is general but you can't beat him less famous. I don't you know. You can split them. You can split them ideologically with DeSantis or anything else. And I think that's what happens, unfortunately, is that the uh, that it just creates so much noise that the Republican primary is just a total mess, which is it, inevitably what's going to happen. It might yeah. be. It'll be entertaining. I, I love Trump I when he's DeSantis doing his thing. Hard since he's when Trump is debating hard. against politicians, that is when I love Trump. Hmm. All the other Trump is kind of just for shits and giggles, and it's funny here and there. But he shines when those fake ass politicians have to sit on a stage against Donald Trump, who is whatever he is. He's not what they are. He's, he's a different funny. thing. He's a different thing than they are. And, yeah. and he's not our thing, but he's not their thing either. And it's fun to see him up there. He's like, oh yeah, real tough guy, Ted. Yeah. You're a tough guy. You're a tough guy. He's emasculating this, this fucking guy. Ted, right you're a real hey. tough guy. That's real yeah, tough. I, tell, I, tell I, him what, as far as I remember, I, I, and correct me if I'm wrong, your father is the Zodiac killer. Isn't no, he's telling. Oh, it was Jeb. He was telling Jeb's trying to like, oh, we did. We did. He's trying to like buck Jeb, up. Jeb, you're a homo him. and I don't like you. And that's basically what he did to Jeb. Jeb came yeah. out there. I'm high energy. I'm not. I'm, I'm a good guy. And he yeah. fucking humiliated Jeb. Jeb. With his fucking exclamation point at the end. Like, that was... There was nothing <laughs> more satisfying. That. Like, watching Trump... In, like, 2015, yeah. watching Trump absolutely humiliate a oh, Bush. I, about that. I loved that so much. Just like Jeb Bush out there, fucking entitled piece of garbage, thinking that it's his turn. Oh, it's either my turn or Hillary's turn. That's why we're he both won. the fucking establishment people. And then That's Trump goes in and is like, you're gay and I don't like you and you're a loser. And he's like, well, I, can someone please cl clap? <laughs> like, that's a big part of why he won, because people knew that, oh, if he did that to Jeb and, and Ted and the, and Marco Rubio, we Little didn't Marco. knew that to Hillary. Are, is Hillary going to have to sit there and take his jabs? Is he going to insult her appearance? What is he going to say? You know, yeah. like, like you had to see it. I didn't care that, he, that it was over the, who gets the nukes. I, I wish that he would have went further and was like, I'm a guy. I mean, I'm a Hollywood guy. Everyone knows what that means. It means I've sucked a cock. I've sucked more cock <laughs> than Hillary. I know how to pleasure a man. Believe me, I know how to pleasure a man better than she does. My God. My God. Like, just that kind of thing would be hilarious. I just, don't recall Trump. Trump, are you saying you're gay? Yes. The same way that He's you wearing guys. a rainbow suit the whole time. I'm as gay Trump as the day there. is long. He was pretty boring, and he always seemed to get like second and third in those Republican debates. And I remember the moment where Jeb like stood up to him and you know tried and and Trump was like, "Oh, I like this. You're doing a little better. That is more energy. Good for you." Which was <laughs> like a pat on the back. You know, a little pat on the head would be a better description. Oh, yeah. of what he did, but. It wasn't this masterful Trump owned everyone on stage. Trump never owned everyone on stage. I watched Chappelle talk about what Trump said in the debates, and it was so much better than Trump's delivery on his own. Well, Trump the stand -up is guy, kind yeah. of shitty Trump on absolutely... stage in these debates. Trump lost every debate he was in every time. Not true, but like it that's is, what the well, media afterwards says. Like you can go true. on social media and see like Trump won that, and then you can go on CNN and go all of our uh, all the people we hired to say this said that this was what happened. Like that, like Trump absolutely humiliated people on stage many times. That's part of what endeared him to people, and part of the humiliation wasn't an astute refutation of their points politically. It was dragging them into this humiliating quagmire that he lives in. And so he, by dragging Rand Paul or whoever into that, is lessening them and mocking them and making it clear that, hey, this bullshit that you pretend to care a lot about, it's not really any more important than the bullshit I'm pretending to care about. you an instance where Trump ever did that? I remember when Chris Yeah, he did it to Jeb, Marco. he did it to Hillary, he did it to Marco, he did it to Chris Well, those, that was 2016 Trump, 2020 Trump. Yeah. Didn't 2020 win Trump fucking blows. He just does yeah. whatever he's told. Like I, I'm not talking but about we, that. But but he, but we get another primary again. Now he's got to go against some Republicans. He's not going to do shit. Come on. He's believe. already doing shit. Believe, look, he, he think of him like he's a your It's going to be a money thing. He, I, I I still think he's just fucking going Taylor. Through. Taylor, just believe Maybe in him I'm like not. you believe in a sports team. All right. Okay. Be I do believe that, in the Blues even now. Yeah, but he needs one more <laughs> champion. 
This guy, this is a guy going for coming out of retirement looking for one more championship. He's trying to build a dynasty, okay? And and what's worse, the fucking commissioners coming after him, trying to put some asterisks on his name. And if he doesn't win, I'm if like he that. doesn't take the commission's job away, that's gonna happen. He can't allow that to happen. No, he won that championship. He established that. He peed in the White House on the carpet. He didn't tell anybody, but he did it and he let it seep in. You don't get that out. You don't get him out either. Donald Trump's a winner. <laughs> he is a winner. Can't argue. I mean, he is the he was the president. He's Maverick at Mach 10. Refute uh, a word of that. I need, still need to watch that. I still need to watch the new fucking um, Tom Cruise, the the j- yeah, flying the jet and Top Gun it's movie. Not going on the 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 service is fast enough. I, I feel like they're milking uh, every dollar out of it, trying to get like CD rentals or something. It's like, free on Paramount. Where? Top Gun's free now. Well, it's it's been, it's, it's been it's, streaming uh, for months and months. Is it, on is it the highest grossing film of all time? No, no, it, not even close. No? Uh, it's, it's Tom Cruise's Marvel, right? highest grossing film of all time, though. Which is I mean, still is saying something Avatar? significant. What's the highest grossing movie of all time? Of all it's time? It's one of the um, Avengers things, I think. I think uh, it's not the first Avatar. I they think the, cor- the corrected one is uh, Gone with the Wind. When, well, but, but, but <laughs> oh, still. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I, I don't know. They re released Avatar 1, I think, to like take back um, the thing from. Um, it is Avatar 1. Yeah. Oh, and, they re released it, so it's two. kind of. So Avatar has one and three. Yeah, it's Titanic amazing... two because that's also James Cameron. Four Endgame is two. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I, for a while it was Endgame. The, uh... Oh, I didn't realize the new Star Wars is coming out. No one. Did. Another what, one? Uh, Am I there? wrong? Isn't like the Sith Awakens coming out in days? What order I... would that be? Is it number I... eleven or I don't? Heck if if I that's know. true, I have no knowledge of of a, a, a of that. I uh, I just saw it. On Reddit, I'm not a great source. I've lo- I'm losing interest in Mandalorian. I, it, it's it's looking kind of shitty um, this season, and and like I don't know the the review people that I I like don't like it either. This season of Star Trek is incredible though. That that Star Trek Picard thing, you got to get Jackie turned on to it. You'll like it. Like I know you're familiar with at least the characters' names and like what they do. Like you know who Worf is. It's so cool to see. I don't know, sixty year old Worf, seventy year old Worf. I don't know. It's uh, I, 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 I really enjoyed it. About this Star Wars. Sorry. Yeah, I, I don't. I will so. say I heard an amazing theory about the uh, Top Gun storyline for the new one, and it is that uh, Tom Cruise Maverick dies in the opening scene, and the rest is his dream. Oh no! Uh, which, as you watch it, Kyle, you'll have to uh, I'll, decide I'll, I'll if, try that's that. how, if that's how if that's if that pencils because it's it. It does it everybody else. So there is a movie where I believe that is the case, and that is um, the Arnold Schwarzenegger movie, Total Recall. Um, this, it, it, I, I believe that that movie is all happening in his brain as he dies in the scene very early in the movie. Because the idea is that Arnold's just a regular Joe living in a futuristic Earth where we have a colony on Mars, and he's, his life is boring, so he goes to this place called Total Recall where they just implant you with the memories of a good time. And it could mm. be like a fantastic vacation or like it, they specialized in like, do you want to like have the memories of being like a secret agent on Mars? And he's like, yeah, I'd love to have the memories of that. And like then he goes into like a seizure. So you and when he wakes up, his, his memory's fixed. Turns out he was a secret agent on Mars, and he's got to get to Mars now, and that's that's how the movie goes. Now he goes to Mars and like does all kinds of secret agent shit on Mars, gunfights and women, but it but all that was in his head because it's literally like being programmed into him at the very beginning of the movie. They just play it like he didn't die right there in that chair, and it's all not happening in his head. It's a dark way to view the movie, but it's a hundred percent what's happened. Sure, sure. Hmm. How about that? I need to see the new Top Gun. It's on Paramount. It's probably on Plex then. I think it's on Paramount. Yeah, it's probably on Plex. <laughs> I love this. You're like, you're like, yeah, how much does that cost a month? You're like, oh, well, I'll just steal then. <laughs> I am on so many. I watch things on Plex that I pay for it just because it's all in one place. You guys seriously haven't, you both haven't seen it? No. I honestly haven't. No. And I'm, I'm, I, I don't know how it's. I haven't it. seen the first one. I heard. I can't. It's I, all right, I can't. I, I can't help that. But but, yeah. but like, that's uh, pretty wild. I mean, some pretty dope like uh, 
homophobic was, content or like, I'm going to watch it very soon. Homoerotic, I should have said. It's it is it is a wonderful movie. It really I yeah, keep hearing yeah, it. I like it. Tom Cruise, so I'm sure I'll like it. Oh, he's so sexy. You've seen the volleyball scene. He's hot. Oh I yeah. I love that volleyball scene. Yeah. The hundreds of times. Dude, I, I was like in eighth grade when that movie came out, and the volleyball scene goes and it defines what cool looks like. And I am so many light years from that. In eighth grade, I was six years from puberty. Like it, it's fucking horrible, <laughs> <laughs> and you know these guys are all, like all jacked playing volleyball shirtless. And I was like, "Fuck, I'll never get a girlfriend." Yeah, Those eighth grade, he was at no risk of being Taylor's dad. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no clearly <laughs> that doesn't. But no, Woody no, was I, on the other side. He was Mister. Oh, I'm worried about not hitting. Or no, he wasn't voice cracking. He was. Like, I'm not hitting puberty, and I was yes. like. People are gonna notice that I'm all bearded and awkward. Like, <laughs> when could you grow that. that beard, Taylor? Like in eighth grade, what would your beard look like? Uh, definitely not like this. But I, I've said before, like this guy Phil, who was bullied ruthlessly in my eighth grade class, could grow a beard, and people made fun of him for being gross for having a beard in eighth grade. And I was the only other person I knew in the grade who grew a beard, and so I had my dad teach me to shave, and I shaved every single morning so I wouldn't grow a beard and people would make fun of me like they did phil and then i came back from summer in freshman year of high school and suddenly it was cool to grow a beard and i was like oh oh well, I, I can do that i was, I was there. i've been lying about this for a year so i wouldn't be bullied i'm so insecure so <laughs> nice so you were able to like turn it on when it was when it was fashionable that's nice most when people was have on, yeah yeah, I did get facial hair before most that. guys my age. My son's 19 and his beard is still like coming in. He's letting it grow out, but it's like bald here and here. There's like gaps, which is exactly oh, how yeah. mine grew mm -hmm. in. And mm -hmm. uh, and I know I keep talking about this, but so he's special needs and he's a hugger and he'll always be a hugger. But he's like, I, he might be 6'3 now. He's still growing. And it's so mad. He's like, do you need a daddy son hug? And I always say yes. And then he comes and hugs me. And I'm absolutely the girl. I, get, <laughs> I put my like forehead on his collarbone. <laughs> that's so sweet, dude. Like that that's very sweet. You do that with your son. I love that. Uh, it's oh. Tom Brady. oh man. Jason you know what you need? Is, right? You need a you need to get a little stepping stool that's like a foot tall and you call yes. it your hugging, your hug, your hug step. <laughs> so you get it back, stool. you get it back down here. <laughs> like, ah, that's where you belong. So. <laughs> yeah, he's fucking huge now. <laughs> he went to a, a birthday party for like a family. We have like two families that are friends and the kids. Are... Anyway, mm -hmm. so yeah, and they were all just like, oh my God, are you still growing? I was like, yeah, it's, is he ever going to stop? He's huge. Yeah. And Jackie's not towering. No, she's five seven. So I think she's like, I'm the weak link in this. That, I think that's five a good height seven for a woman. is a taller yeah, yeah. woman than six foot is for a guy. My mom let me down. Or fucking five four. That's how I lucked yeah. out. Is my dad's five ten, but my mom was five nine. Mm. That that's could have been a mountain of a man if he. I got, I got a to six. Woman. <laughs> <laughs> no, you wouldn't exist. A better breeding stock. Mm. of better stock what a horrible yeah. way to talk about people <laughs> the breathing stuff i heard that's like a tinder thing like d1 people are like let's make d1 babies that's like a line people use no it's a thing i, I think like in that, the in the in the black culture that i i think i think so yes ah that's yeah. right it, i've heard amazing. about that at your barber shop <laughs> Here, I'm talking, talking that I don't know if you guys played sports when you were children but like oh, yeah. i grew up in this area in metro atlanta and I knew Scotty Pippen had an illegitimate child near me. Other than that, I think I might have known one kid that had a professional athlete as a parent. In the leagues of like non-highly competitive sports that my eight-year-old plays in, a dozen. Damn. Uh, have at least have at least one professional athlete parent. Huh. Uh it, and it's you're in an elite area. <laughs> I don't it's think used so. Used by future divorcees. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a, it's a real thing. I mean, it like he was on. He was in one league. There were probably like six teams. Four of them were coached by former NFL players. Jesus. Oh yeah. I, I mean, sorry, I, I, son. I, you're not going to be starting this year. Yeah. Or? 
Jeez, him, any other year. Fuck. You, you are double <laughs> that well? for speed and coordination in this household. <laughs> you, might be, you might be tall, goofy, and gangly, but uh, it ain't going to get you anywhere fast. Oh, it might. Put that kid in the pool. I'm hearing some potential. <laughs> uh, well, that's yeah. So, so height is way more useful in swimming. Yeah, you than go it into is the big league, son. You're gonna actually Michael Phelps. Is, yeah, I guess he's he's the only one though. Like, like, like the you can't let Michael Phelps be the ceiling on for swimmers. You can't tell some young swimmer you could be just. No, you can't. No, he's, yeah. um, you don't know any other one. Ryan Swimsman, <laughs> Aquaman, Lochte, yeah. Jared yeah. Water, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Who was the guy before Phelps? Gilligan? Beyond Gilligan, I can't Mark think of any the skill. Go way back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, so I, in, in I played basketball growing up until I had bad enough knees that I couldn't anymore. And so I played like Dwight Howard and Josh Smith and mm-hmm. Randolph Morris and the guys my age. But like LeBron's cool. a year older than me, so we'd see him at tournaments and stuff. But he didn't grow until late. So What'd you do like, to your knee? I had a degenerative bone condition, so I had to have dead people's bone transplanted into my Neat. knees in high school. Yeah. Oh, my Dabbered God. Legs. Did you get to pick the dead person? I did not. But uh, you can imagine being like a high school level yeah. transplant list person. So like my grandmother would call and be like, I saw somebody died in the paper. Should I call and see if the <laughs> knees are spoken for? <laughs> yeah. That happened I, I saw I saw an athlete died. <laughs> yeah. Please. And in fact, it was actually a pretty narrow window of time where the preferred treatment was cadaver tissue transplants. And there was, they all came out of Florida because they don't actually harvest bone uh, Mm -hmm. in Georgia. And so uh, I was, I was filling out a credit app for this guy at Lamborghini Atlanta. He was buying a brand new Gallardo and he had a really short window of like pharmaceutical sales in Georgia. And he, so we had, we had to list his previous employer and he worked for CryoLife, which was the tissue bank that Mm -hmm. I got my knees from. Yeah. And I asked him, I was like, were you working there these years? He said, oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I said, did you do bones? And he said, yeah. And I told him when I got he's like, man, it was me and my partner. I, I worked a whole lot harder than him. There is like a 90% chance that I cut those knees out of the dead kid. Hmm. And I'm like, how about that when he bought the car? But nice. uh, yeah, <laughs> so I became a swimmer. The dead kid. <laughs> I became a and swimmer. And let me tell you, that. Mr. I did a sloppy job then. I did a sloppy <laughs> job now. <laughs> I can't you... believe you're still standing, kid. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Seems like you chopped up a good kid, though. You're, you're, you're going. I hurt my yeah. knee the other day, and That's I'm afraid it. to get. I'm, I'm going to ignore it. I'm going to ignore my knee injury and uh, and hope yes. that it stops. I call that the taxes approach. <laughs> <laughs> you just knee injuries are tax right. like people. You ignore them, they go away. I think it might mm-hmm. heal on its own. Um, mm-hmm. I fell. I I, I have fallen twice this that. year, and both of them I hit my knee. No, three times. I fallen three times this year. Um, <laughs> I think they were all dog related falls. I have like a oh, slew okay. of dogs, and uh, so like slipping outside on my knee, fell all the way. I fell down like eight steps. Um, they were carpeted, but you know I was holding coffee, so I couldn't break my fall. <laughs> um, <laughs> It really ate shit. And then I was like jogging through the house and like wearing socks. And I sort of made a corner too sharp and my feet just slid out from under me. And I just hit like hip, like knee, hip, elbow, like as hard and fast as a grown man can. And, uh, and just really ate shit all three times. And now it kind of makes a pop noise every now and then. <laughs> Both mm. my shoulders pop when I lift them over my head. Sometimes my right shoulder pops. If I, if John I do McCain overhead press is. just right, we're going to ignore that too. It's because I do overhead presses with perfect form. <laughs> that's what causes the popping. That's, that's right. Causes perfect the form. <laughs> perfect form. Yeah, that's, that's what Arnold taught us. I'll hear nothing to, uh, uh, <laughs> to, to, to sway me. That doesn't seem right. Now. It that. won't sway me. You know, Taylor, but, I, not to, I know the show's got to wrap and everything. Maybe if you go heavy with dumbbells, you'll just get the motion your body needs instead of a barbell. Just mm. t- throwing it out there. Maybe. Maybe I'll give it a go. You could buy my. Dumbbells. You could buy some of those uh, Swedish dumbbells, like I've got. Oh, they're fancy. Mm, those are those new bell. bells. Those the ones you very, shake. Very the one. The ones you shake. <laughs> no, <laughs> that one. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Kyle goes all natural with that. He just jacks guys off. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. Old. You never. You never yeah. see a fat guy. It takes longer. Behavior pattern. It's like hard no. mode. It's like hard mode because you have to get them. You have to keep them hard. Yes. Yeah, it's it's a fucking nightmare. And his old ass blood isn't ready for it. Anyway, yeah. that's oh. a show. You got and a on that bomb show. 
like dirty and on that bomb stories. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. Um, does you he know, sound like the viewers probably know that this podcast has been going on for like thirteen years? Do you think you do that without any jacking off? Come and on. on that absolute bombshell, PKA. See, what the fuck does that dude sound like? Fuck. Yeah. Who are we true. doing? He's doing Clarkson. Jeremy please. Clarkson. He, he has a weird yeah. cadence in his voice. Like a, he, he, he talks from the front of his mouth. Like it sounded like he was there. eating caramels there for a second. It sounded like he was eating. Just end the show. This is fucking awful.